technically only Natty is in the chat. Hi, Natty. Hi, Natty. <laughs> hi, everybody. Specifically, Natty. <laughs> Just hi. Natty. Um, hi. The stream was supposed to be populated last night, but then I fell asleep and forgot to do it. Um, because we got off a of stream last night at like two almost. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was on set from like one or my call time was one thirty, but we weren't used until like six and then I was in one scene. It's just Natty right now. Yeah. This is just this is like if you were Oh Jay's here too. It's Jay Yay. and Natty. I'm picturing like a movie theater, but just with Natty and then just Jay and then Jay walks in and is like, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Hi. Oh, or I remember hearing AMC's like increasing prices based on where you're sitting. So I'm just imagining them being like, Okay, where oh cool, we get the cheapest seats. Yes. Um, we have like four or five people in chat, but it's saying one. Oh, there we go. We jumped to seven. I was like, Yay. YouTube. <laughs> Why YouTube? Why? And you have to acknowledge everybody. Hey, Kellen. Uh, yeah. So Monoland streams are going to be, it's funny because it's noon, but it's like technically earlier because usually I stream like at night only. And people are <laughs> like, what's this? <laughs> a, 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 a daytime Avery has, has spawned. Like, what is, what is this? <laughs> the um, sun is still out. The sun is still out. Well, kind of. We're supposed to be getting snow, so it's more just like there's a lot of clouds out. The sun isn't really out, but yes. Hi, Ellery. Hi. Um, Hello, exclusive model lander early club. Early club. <laughs> hey guys, more people. Hey, boots. yay. Hey, Michael. Hi, everybody. Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur, with the fur. <laughs> boots, the cats is like, no, it's supposed to be boots and cats and boots and cats or something. I don't know. Have you seen the, um, have you seen the TikTok where the guy goes into like very passionate depth about how, um, Get get low doesn't make any sense because she has the apple bottom jeans, boots, and the fur. The whole club is looking at her. And then in the next part, it's like, uh, the baggy strip pants. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't funny. make any sense. It's, uh, his conclusion is that she's a centaur because she's wearing two pants at once <laughs> and, and two different shoes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Or I'm just imagining it cut to, they think, or it's like when they're at the club versus when they're like relaxing <laughs> or something. Or. <laughs> Or they're twins. They twins. they go, one goes with the apple ball jeans, the other one goes with the the baggy sweatpants. Well, the TikTok got so big that T Pain replied and was just like, "Oh, the first the first one is is uh is uh Flo Rida's ideal type of woman, and the second one is mine." So, uh, so I'm like, we're like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay. It's funnier to think about it. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm just imagining. I think there's a few anime out there where it's like centaur girls, and it's just like, okay. Okay. Or I only I'm only not that centaur girls is bad. It's just like anime centaur girls. It's like I remember watching um it's um Darling in the Pranks in eight minutes and it's like I love you like or I think I told you this before where it's like I love you like a brother, like an like the real kind or the anime kind. The anime kind. Ew. Oh, oh no. gross. <laughs> yeah. Oh god cut to like the scene where there's a brother brushing his sister's teeth and it's really weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ellery Bell says, okay, but why does Apple Bottom Jeans sound like it should be the model and national anthem and now oh, go, don't do Apple Bottom Jeans? <laughs> Oh gosh, there was actually an episode of America's Next Top Model Cycle Ten where where someone was like, "Why do they call them apple bottom jeans?" And someone's like, "Apple bottom, ba boom, ba boom." And then some then there was another girl who's like, "Oh, your butt is bigger than mine." And then the other one's like, "Say that to the anorexic girl, thanks." Oh no! <laughs> and then the girl's just like, "What?" And then and or the girl who said, "Well, you're just bigger than me." Oh, <laughs> she's the one that the producers were able to be like, "Hey, cause drama," and she's just like, "Okay." I don't see what's wrong with this. Great. Uh, uh Natty is so sad. Pirate blow. <laughs> <laughs> Antian is the worst. Okay. I'm I, I just showed Avery an episode the other day, and I'm trying yeah, to think of like another episode that we could watch that's like problematic, and it's just like, oh Yeah, Gabe constantly being like, Oh, I remember this problematic episode. And this one, <laughs> and this one. There's a lot of problematic episodes. So many. Like, oh my god. Oh, and I also remember there was an interview uh, with Oliver Twigs where um, some of the some of the models from Cycle 15 were told by producers, hey, you guys are boring, start fighting, or we're going to cut you all and start a new cycle. Oh, good. Gabe, have you seen the anime called something like Why You Shouldn't Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Yes. It's good, but I haven't seen it myself. Yes. Um, Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Yeah. I enjoy it, but th there are so many anime tropes, like only one decent male 
around who gets all the women but yeah. it, but he but i think it's good i think there's nice character development and 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 i think uh there are it's like the different gods and goddesses there's like loki and hestia and different familias and and <laughs> And Bell, the main character, he, his family is just like him and his god and him working real hard to, nice. <laughs> you know, power of will to become popular. I think I, th I think it's good. My well, YouTube recommendation is on point and immediately recommend to the screen. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. Every yeah. once in a while, the algorithm is just like, oh, is that Avery's stream? <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> yes. Uh, YouTube, please give Avery all the money. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, at least a little bit of a little bit of money <laughs> YouTube. yeah <laughs> just throwing pennies <laughs> yes like making it rain but it's more like making it sprinkle like it's just, ow ow, ow, ow. ow. <laughs> oh and side note i made i made another uh theropod dinosaur for our little family over here this is crispy <laughs> yeah. yeah we have the entire de la creme family it, here we have uh we have crispy creamy miracle and um, um, they don't have heterochromia. I'm really sorry about that, but we have Tookie here. <laughs> we just get like two different color markers. Yeah. Not <laughs> her her mismatched eyes, and that <laughs> that's why every time if I go into Avery stream, I'm gonna be like Tookie's heterophobic, and people are gonna be like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I missed a comment. Oh, before. thank you. Uh, Michael G says, I was somewhat part of Allison Pregler's rec reading of Model Land. You're in for a wild and headache inducing ride. Probably less headache inducing than the infamous fanfic My Immortal. Oh, we God. were actually de debating which one was worse. And I think the chat decided that um, that Model Land was worse than My Immortal. But I haven't read My Immortal in a really long time. Uh, yeah. So I can't really say. Yeah, as I said in a past stream, I've only read. Um the hunger games fanfic where someone's just like oh it's like what if this person won the hunger games and then they create an entire series about all the other or their canon versions of the different winners of the hunger games and how they won and stuff and it's very nice and they include lots of uh po like pop culture during that time so i'm just like oh that's, that's nice. a steven universe reference that's nice YouTube does not know how many people are in the stream. It keeps jumping back and forth. It's like, there's six, there's ten, there's there's whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Fun fact, after the last stream, I realized one of my favorite Sims I've made looked exactly like Tookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> how dare she specifically <laughs> make fun of that one Sim? <laughs> Oh. I like reading it as if she's just bullying a, a random sim. <laughs> Tyra saw a sim one day that she just kind of self-inserted into, and it just happened to be that sim. Oh, gosh. I should generate a bingo card. <laughs> I tried to explain to my mom exactly what makes the makes model and so so frustrating and juicing, and I'm just like, oh, there are, like, different stereotypes that... That or it's like trying to be so unstereotypical it becomes stereotypical, stereotypical, and I'm trying to like explain, and I'm just I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, oh, she's the one with red hair. Is she Australian? Read, <laughs> read. No, that person's definitely not Australian. Uh -oh. it, it was or the Zen Zen introduction, and again yeah. Zen Zen, and it's just like I made the Marauders okay. from Harry Potter and Sims, and I ended, uh, I ended. <laughs> oh, no. oh gosh how about we make it a water drinking game so that we stay hydrated uh we can have we can have uh different points uh, oh gosh we can have a list <laughs> any the mismatched eyes the um or should we like pin a list into the comments yeah let's pin a list let's do it <laughs> okay so we're gonna do a water drinking game because hydration is important <laughs> plot twist tyra saw my sim luna on the gallery and decided to bully her by writing yeah. a horrible book yeah i love this reading okay <laughs> that is canon now water drinking <laughs> game uh hydration is key <laughs> um wait how do i if i say if i say enter it's gonna send it um so i'll just not do that i will be like uh okay anytime they say her mismatched eyes oh her describing her hair <laughs> yeah 
eyes. Uh, or her wild hair. <laughs> Tookie's not like other girls. She's a cool girl. Wild hair. Forget a girl. Oh, gosh. Oh, I wonder if there's going to be like a Naomi Campbell insert. Or is that Zarpessa? Because everyone knows about Tyra versus Naomi, even though that was more the industry pinning them against each other. But Tyra still had that time on her talk show where she's like, remember when you were mean to me, Naomi? I was ill and you were being nice to me. And then... <laughs> And then I told you about something and you're like, I knew that's what they did. And you were so mean. And Naomi's just like, I guess so, maybe. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to go. The paycheck has, or the paycheck is cleared. Do you have any more questions for me? I'm just going to say mention, uh, or just, just the word, but <laughs> uh, when they start talking about their butt, um, we drown, we drown ourselves in drinking water. <laughs> There's not enough water. What else? What else are the other things? Um. Um. Oh, uh, police or whatever. Um. Uh, or whatever. Uh. Oh gosh, what's the, her name? The 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 country insert. Oh yeah, the one the the American one who's like <laughs> the only kind of funny thing is I was telling my friend I was like they're like how do they represent America? I'm like it's a big grocery store that people live at. And she's like, hey, that's kind of funny. <laughs> And and they have or and they have um four or they have four brothers and four sisters. <laughs> Casual like reminder: It is in fact biologically possible to overhydrate. Yes. Play, <laughs> drink responsibly when it comes to water. Yeah. Yes. The little disclaimer along with the content warnings: It's like please don't drink a lot of water. Oh yeah, I need to turn the content warnings back on. I still have them. They just are turned off because we were like reading other things and i was just like we have at least different content warnings for these books <laughs> oh my gosh well we didn't know we would have content warnings and then the past two books we read got really dark and we were just like oh oh gosh oh is, no is it as dark as as lizzie's introduction almost well actually there's a kid well in one of them a teenager tries to self on alive uh at the end at a party, and we're just like, oh, oh. and then Animorphs is Animorphs, so oh. like, you know. I actually haven't read Animorphs, but you know, looking at the front cover, I'm just like, oh, and I know that if they stay in those forms too long, they they oh. permanently change into that. Ellery says, "Free space plot relevant me mentions of menstrual cycle." Ah, uh, oh, and the, <laughs> or anytime any or body horror could be one of them. Yep. I don't know how to spell menstrual. That's not how you spell menstrual. <laughs> this feels like something I should know. Um, menstrual cycle, and then you have... I can't type today. <laughs> um, uh, 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 whenever Jesus is mentioned, take a drink. Oh, why is this wine now? Why is this wine now? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then where... What else? Um, oh, yeah, body horror. Body horror of any kind. We're just gonna... We're gonna be real hydrated today. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> over explanation of a place we never see again. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's just keep it with this because we might drown. <laughs> um, let's keep it here and then we can add if we want to. Also, our, there is this one time and on ANTM that Tyra runs his Naomi Campbell's. Oh yes, in cycle. Se oh gosh, I can't really. Uh, I. <laughs> oh, uh, there's also a thing I can do where I know the names of every single winner of America's Next Top Model cycles one to twenty four first and last name without looking it up. I. <laughs> but but yes, I remember that the photo shoot cycle seven America's Next Top Model where they portrayed top model stereotypes and it was Monique who had to throw the phone at the assistant and they got mad at her because she's she went a little bit too crazy with throwing the phone and Monique was a character. No one on her cycle liked her, but I think she kind of, if she would have fine tuned her presentation, it would have been her versus Mel Rose for most of the cycle. And it would have been great, but she kind of went too far too fast. And they were like, get rid of her. Uh, Kellen says, so you said this book is so incoherent that a recap won't help. Right. I mean, <sighs> I'm genuinely trying to figure out how to recap it. Uh, There's a girl named Tookie De La Creme. Her, and she has two mismatched colored eyes. She hates <laughs> herself. Uh, her hair goes crazy and she has long lips. Her only friend is Lizzie. Her only friend is Lizzie, who we're told we never really see again. Um, And she likes a guy named Theophilius, who likes Zarpessa, who's 
who's ginger and and is real is a mean girl. Ellery says we can give you major plot points. It will not help make things less confusing. <laughs> You can't recap it or else the co- the ghost of Tookie will take over stream. Not Tookie! And Tookie meant my tech ghost this entire time. <laughs> That's why everything is going wrong. She's such a forgetting girl. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Uh, but or she's not going to be a forget a girl anymore. She's going to be a remember girl. I forgot that that's an actual word that she used. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we just wrote, oh, and how inst- and she- Evangelinda is a character who's based off of Linda Evangelista. So basically, this world revolves around modeling, but it's a very dystopian world. Um, and she's now been picked to go to this school where only perfect looking girls get to go. Um, apparently there are no male models in Model Land. Are, so are far. There, there are, yeah, we haven't seen any, but the male models are accessories. You should never associate with them. Right, that's the, that's an actual thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> and Tyson Beckford shows up and puts her thumb in Tookie's mouth. I'm just kidding, I don't know. But that happened in the, in the trailer. We must hope that Tech Ghost and the Took Ghost don't team up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Or every every time something goes wrong, we're just like we're we're sorry, Ghost Tookie. We're sorry, please. Ghost Tookie, please. <laughs> Ghost Tookie, wherever you may be. Oh my god! <laughs> I just realized that I don't actually have the book in my hand. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> the forget a girl <laughs> is a forget a book. And I have, I have. Oh gosh! Oh. Thank God that was closed. <laughs> what Tookie's ghost? <laughs> Why did you know? <laughs> wanted you to uh, you can't make a one. water drinking game out of my heterochromia how dare you <laughs> only i can hate on my heterochromia <laughs> i don't but that's the thing everybody else is like we don't hate your heterochromia it's just like my heterochromia is so bad it's like, but everybody wants that that's so cool um oh gosh and and then it's just like you get with the book cover you can see her mismatched eyes where the the one on the front is green and the one on the back is brown and it's supposed to re- represent her eyes. Um, Ellery says, just know that half the body horror is clearly meant to be whimsy, but it's very badly written. Oh my god. <laughs> Tyra is no Tim Burton. She is not able to make it whimsical, unfortunately. Oh, we haven't known whimsy. In a, in a while since since reading this we got 162 pages in we yeah. just say in one day we did really good the, and I, it's funny i was looking for this bookmark and i was like where is it i was like model land <laughs> <laughs> oh no in the tight clutch is a model land <laughs> you can't get it back until the book is done no <laughs> um uh, what was i doing oh yeah i was putting trigger warnings up um <laughs> that that fun moment where you where you're just like oh yeah all the trigger warnings. Oh, and um, I have origami paper, so I'll probably make more dinosaurs for the dinosaur family eventually. Oh, the the desk cam is not connected. That's interesting. Oh no! <laughs> Striking cam. I mean, we don't need the desk cam because there's no like illustration. So if I can't get it to connect, then we can just not. Um, but. Ah. Why are you just telling me it's not connecting if it's connected? Tucky! <laughs> Tucky! Why? Okay, you know what? We're just gonna... We can just hang out with the regular cam. For right now. <laughs> We're fine. Everything's fine. Uh, there, If there was, like, illustrations of body horror, oh, I'd be like, you know what, God. you need to suffer with us. Well, well I mean, oh, well, there are, are these illustrations in the front cover. Oh, there's the Boo Big Teak, the... Where is CL? Oh, okay. Oh, the hand guy. The guy whose face is on a hand. That must be... Okay. Oh, I forgot. This is how weird the, the book is. I forgot about the guy with the, whose face was a hand. Oh, God. And he's, like, French. And he has that French accent. This is not really plot relevant. An example of accidental body horror. Nurses called purses with roller skates instead of feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh gosh. Picture if that was the resident, but all of the nurses just have 
Oh okay. gosh. That would, well, I mean, sound would ha- would would be having a nightmare because they just hear the rolling skates. And when I think of roller skates on instead of feet, I'm thinking of Dungeons and Dungeons and Daddy season one. There was a character who they. Or I believe the character was supposed to be riding a skateboard, but they had it to where they, they he like grafted a skateboard onto his onto his feet. So it's just instead of feet, it's just a skateboard, and it was supposed to become like a nice little story plot point, but it doesn't. And it's just like Dungeons and Daddies, why? I'm copying the trigger warnings over to the main cam, and I literally have to copy and paste because there's so many that I'm just like, it's gonna take too long for me to rewrite all of this out. <laughs> How? Oh god! Oh gosh! How born with with feet wheels, and I'm just like, oh, oh, I feel so bad for the moms. Oh gosh! <laughs> Don't worry, they're just practicing their tricks, and they're just <laughs> cut to the cut to the um ultrasound where it's the baby just doing spinning. Oh, in the, oh. oh god! <laughs> you guys can't see this because it's on the preview, but we just it just came up with like the content warning was just like the entire screen. Was, oh god, we know, but hey, come on. Uh, no, let's put it, put it here, you know, chill it out in the corner. We'll put the little, um, little background on it so you can actually read it. Uh, you know how we do. Yeah. Uh, wait, no, I don't want that. I need text again by accident. Uh, I want the color block. Color, (laughs) color source? Add existing color source. Oh, (laughs) oh no. We're oh all God. <laughs> just a white green. Oh no. We're such forgetting Tukey. girls. Tukey. Uh, we look in the mirror and it's like, oh no. I have I have an eye color that's different than the other. No. no. <laughs> oh, and that is there we go. Oh, Alexa, play Born That Way by Lady Gaga because they are born that way. They are born with feet wheels. <laughs> no matter. Alright, instead. <laughs> Or instead, no matter black, white, or beige, shallow, or M, you're on the right skate, baby. <laughs> you were born that way. I don't know. <laughs> Tyra would be better off as a horror writer. Honestly? Yeah. Yeah. If she committed to it, genuinely. Genuinely, I can see it. I, I would watch that movie that she would make, where she would play both Tookie and, and CL. <laughs> Me writing body horror. You see this spot where an eyeball does not traditionally go? Guess what's going there? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty much that's part of that's a lot of model land too. Oh, um, gosh. But she does it not on purpose. Like she's like, isn't this so quirky? This person <laughs> had a hand for a face, and you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> oh gosh, and then the, oh oh, we need to add whipped cream to the to the list of things to drink water to. <laughs> uh, we do need to add the whipped cream. Oh, Let's just, it's not on the list, but we just, we know. We know. We know. <laughs> Chat will remind us. Oh no, I'm really pretty and distinct. How will I ever survive? Literally, Tyra throughout most of America's Next Top Model, whenever a girl has a problem, she's like, well, when this happened, I did it. And it was so hard being so tall. Oh, I remember in Cycle 11, she talks about like, oh, when I was younger, I was... You know, I was a lot thinner than I was, but then when then puberty hit, and then you know, I uh, stuff happened to my body, and and uh, the 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 her agent sat her down and was like, "These are the agencies that don't want to take you." But then her mom was like, "Screw that! Let's order pizza," and she changed her career over pizza. <laughs> but all the models on the show need to be skinny. They are not really allowed to talk to their families. They're not allowed to have emotional breakdowns, and they can't express their feelings because there's no like on-site therapist for them. Her interview about Monoland made it sound like she genuinely thought she was writing the modern Alice in Wonderland. Oh. Um, we do need to add the whipped cream stuff you only hear in a Monoland stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Now, now that trailer from Cycle 17 is starting to make so much more sense because they're digging through the garbage, the the blood oranges, I'm Tookie, the Ophelios as Tyson Beckford. Yeah, typically you don't have to read the book for the book trailer to make sense. That's kind of part of the trailer. Ah. Point, but, uh, you know, it's 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 fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's my turn. I think the la- I think you read the last chapter on stream. Last time, right? I think I believe so. Unfortunately for you, <laughs> I wouldn't want to make you double up on on chapters. You're we already have uh, 
challenge like we're already challenging our sanity <laughs> uh, only 28 percent of the way through we reached the 400 page mark this book is just it would be like this would be the entire book. I dropped the I dropped the book, Lark. Oh no. Uh this would be the entire book if all of the extra made up words weren't in there. Uh, or the description of places that we never see again. <laughs> oh. We we just barely got into Model Land too. I'm 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 never Yeah, we just arrived at Model Land. So if you're if you're waiting for Model Land, guess what? You don't need to watch the last two streams. <laughs> oh, um, and she's tripped over her feet. That's where she left off. Yeah, she stumbled, suddenly airborne, then went straight down into a textbook Tookie de la Creme Fall. That's the only thing I could remember about where we left off. I don't know where they were walking to or where they were going. I think they're going to the giant O. Or they're like a siren went off and they had to run to get to like the O or something because something right. very important is happening. Zen Zen's like, oh, I can't tell you, <laughs> but don't go to this place. All right. Hey, Peyton. Hey all, what have I missed? Nothing. We're we were stalling <laughs> because we're so scared of this book. Yes. Um. Just explain the stream to my bio dad, and he was like, with like the ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I I don't want to try to explain this to my dad. He'd be like, well, what is happening? Oh yeah, Ellery says run towards the opera. That's right, it was the opera. Oh You're like, yes. That sounds like such a normal thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a model and thing. Oh gosh. Um. Yeah, we're just talking. You haven't missed anything. Uh, you're actually just in time. I was just about to read chapter 15, The <sighs> Belladonna's Burden. Oh, gosh. <laughs> right foot had hit her left leg with the power of a sledgehammer, forcing her knee to give way. But before she could tumble to the ground, she dredged up all her strength. No. Tookie would not crumble. Not this time. Is no a complete sentence because it's used as a complete sentence? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I am is the shortest sentence ever. Okay. The buzzer wailed. Tookie regained her balance and ran as fast as she could. Zen Zen had told her to look for the thorn bush. But where was it? She spied a wall of prickly metallic brush. She hurtled herself into it, just as Zen Zen had done minutes before. Ouch! Wrong plant. She ran down the street until she spied another wall of thorny vines. Tookie eyed it, not sure if it was friend or foe. But then one of the thorns arched up and seemed to smile at her. <laughs> Gabe just stopped folding. <laughs> um, Tookie gawked, taking a deep breath. She jumped full force toward it. The barbed bush opened, revealing... Revealing the passageway to the O. Thank you, she yelled back. The thorny passageway closed with a thwack. Tuki ran down the crescent path toward the left side of the M building. The buzzer screeched even louder and faster now, like it was counting down. You're not going to make it, Tuki. You waited too long back there. Modern symphony music grew louder in her ears, the only indication that she was making any headway. Tuki rounded the curve at the end of the walkway and came to a wall of... She squinted. Are those... <laughs> zippers? <laughs> the wall of zippers. Okay. There were hundreds of them. Zippers of all sizes. Some as tall as Tookie. Perfectly polished ones. Broken ones. Zippers placed vertically and horizontally. It was obviously a dead end. The music in the O swelled. The hideously screeching buzzer was almost a continuous noise. Tookie was running out of time. She whipped around, considering trying different, trying a different path, but she was not. But she was met by yet another wall of zippers behind her. Unfastened zippers, zippers on the diagonal. She turned around once more, and there was another wall of zippers. <laughs> so many zippers. <laughs> Why? Um, she was surrounded now. Only the, the now the only thing Tookie could see was the sky. A flock of rainbow colored birds flew overhead, seemingly flapping in the direction of the music. Hello, Tookie called desperately. What if she had taken a wrong turn and was stuck in the weird zipper room forever? Maybe this was her model land fate. Hello, she screamed again. Rustling made her turn. A stuck zipper started to wobble. The teeth parted, and a figure jumped out. Tookie gasped. It was C.L. C. 
Theo was now wearing a silver and purple bodysuit and didn't look happy. Tookie cowered, not knowing what to expect. A reprimand? Would CL send Tookie? Sorry, my nose is starting to is starting to run. <laughs> Back to <laughs> Metopia. I forgot it's called Metopia. Oh yeah. <sighs> she felt ashamed that she disappointed someone she so badly wanted to impress. CL strode toward Tookie and grabbed her arm roughly. Come on, girl. We gotta move. If you don't make it to the O before she starts her anthem. Follow me. Turning on her heel, CL scampered to the nearest zipper wall and put one leg into the halfway stuck zipper through which she just emerged. She gazed down at Tookie, who still stood on the ground, dumbstruck. Well, come on. It's like you're mountain climbing. But I've never mountain climbed before, Tookie stammered. CL looked exasperated. That's no excuse. Make it till you make it. <laughs> Not good, not good um, advice if you're actually mountain climbing. Hi, yeah. Darth Sidious. <laughs> Darth Sidious is here, yay. Mustering up all her courage, Tookie struggled up the zippers carefully, watching her feet to make sure she wouldn't slip. When she looked up, the last of CL's foot was disappearing through the half-open zipper. Tookie scrambled to that point herself and looked through the opening. It was pitch black and as silent as a tomb. It's now or never, Chucky, she thought, and tumbled in. I'm going to grab a tissue. Hang on one second, chat. Sorry. Oh, and Ellery pointed out, or, or who was, oh, yeah, Ellery pointed out my facial expressions at literally everything. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, my biggest fear, zippers. Where are we in the story? We just started reading again, Darth. Uh, we are, she's, she's, uh, she's going through the zipper room. Her zippers have traumatized Tyra at some point, and so she included a room full of them. Darth Sidious, you and I both know that nothing I say to explain will actually make any sense. I think Darth has read it before. Some some people in the in the in the chat have read it, which props to them, by the way. Yeah, I've already said I'm never getting rid of this book. I'm keeping it as a souvenir of our trauma. <laughs> we um. Sorry, what? <laughs> I was just say we can relate to the trauma of every contestant of America's Next Top Model. I'm just kidding. We, we cannot, can. but still, we understand. That could be my third read through, and I still don't know what's happening. Fair point. Fair point. Another one. I found... Who? All right, this is Theophilios. Theophilios. Love the the conga line that we've got going on. Yes. Immediately, she got the sense that she was sliding down, down, down. Screams echoed in her ears. After a moment, she realized they were hers. Stop overreacting! Seal's voice echoed off the walls. We're just in the zip zap. We'll be there in a second. Beware, Tookie asked. No answer came. Instead of being an opening to the other side of the wall, like Tookie had expected, the zipper fed into a chute filled with fast-flowing air. The air pushed her around the curves and down to steep drop. It propelled her straight up, 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 and then down, down, down. Finally, she landed on her butt. <laughs> Where's my water? Drink. Where is it? He stole my water. Okay, it's over there. <laughs> I was just like, where'd it go? I thought it was on the ground. Ugh. Hydration is important, but do it responsibly so yeah, you don't hydrate. Drown. Yeah, hydrate responsibly, please, everybody. I don't know if I'm putting this on right. I might not be around for the stream. I hope the book to give y'all a hard time. <laughs> We're doing we're doing the best we can. <laughs> everything's everything's so great. Everything is fine. It's fine. <laughs> By means it's not fine, but we'll we'll make it through. Um. Ah. Okay. We've had <laughs> we've had trauma in this room recently with water, so I I put the top back on. Yay. Um. Let's see. Where was I? Straight on her butt on a cushy surface and opened her eyes. A jagged slit slowly opened. 
and daylight rushed in. When Chucky's eyes adjusted, she could see that she was next to CL. The zipper had let them out in the O Plaza. The rest of the Model Land student body stood in front of them, staring at an empty stage. Wow, um, thank you, Chucky said gratefully to CL. The statuesque Intoxabella shrugged. Then someone snickered a few feet away. Zarpesa was watching Tookie. A big smirk on her face. Tookie hung her head. CL glared at Zarpesa, then grabbed Tookie's chin hard. Listen to me. You are different. Way different. You know that. You're gonna experience lots of cuts and slices here, but you'd better suck it up. The girl who is sucking your blood is hunting way more than... That's what it said. Sucking her blood. I thought I read it wrong. <laughs> more than you. Um... Is, her, is hurting way more than you. Never stoop to her level. Tookie nodded, squirming, as CL's sharp fingernails dug into her skin. She was happy CL was giving her advice, but also a little scared. Suddenly, CL re released her, pushing her forward. When Tookie turned, she saw that shackles had appeared on CL's wrists and ankles. CL staggered backwards and fell into the zip zap. <laughs> the zip zap. <laughs> Asked, should she go after CL? But then she heard a cheer behind her and turned towards the O. It was actually an O shaped plaza behind the M building. We have an O and an M. Is it going to spell something? Um, Land, maybe. Oh, is it? Oh, it <laughs> wanted to. Um, an immense waterfall cascaded to the ground from an invisible source in the sky. Past and present, Intoxabelle is played in the waterfall and then sprang to life in 3D water form. CL's image was not displayed. 99 Bellas are still in the T-Dot garb. Clogged... Uh, 99 Bellas all still in their T-Dot garb, clogged the space. In front of them was a group of a few hundred girls dressed in the same uniform as Zen Zen. The other tour guides, the two-toned leotard and pants outfit... But there were subgroups, each wearing a different color, seemingly split according to their ages. Uh, brilliant yellow centuras encircled their waists. But what struck Tookie most was that groups got smaller and smaller the closer they got from the stage. Tookie's eyes strayed to the left to an assembly of about 300 other girls. Some were not girls at all, but older women. They were totally nude. Oh boy. And their flesh seemed to be made of hard plastic with creases at every joint. Oh. The shoulders, elbows, and wrists, the neck, hips, knees, and ankles, which made them look living, breathing mannequins, made them look like living, breathing mannequins. Their eyeballs were completely black, making them look soulless. They stood stiffly, star staring blankly at the crowd, just looking at them, making Tookie shiver. As Tookie approached the last line of the group the new girls of the new girls, she noticed Piper, Dylan, and Shiraz. They all turned towards her at the same time. There you are, girl, Dylan cried. Nice of you to make it, Piper said sarcastically, smiling a little. Tookie, arrive, Shiraz bleated. We worry for you. Poor Shiraz. They did her so dirty. <laughs> I'm gonna oh. count that as body horror and take a drink. Oh, with the mannequins. Yeah, I think that counts. Oh uh, yeah. Run, my child! Run from Model Ant! <laughs> the girls have not started going to classes yet, no. Oh, gosh. I can't wait for them to go to class. Never shall I stay till the dawn of time becomes again. Oh, goodness. Well, we're not even one chapter in for the day, and I'm already feeling hydrated. <laughs> Yay. Um... Um... A rush of warmth settled over Tookie. I can't even tell in context if I'm on the right page. <laughs> <laughs> they cared about her well-being. Maybe they were even her new... friends? She let this moment sink in for a second. For the first time in her life, she actually used the word friend in the plural. She made a mental note to herself to start spelling friends with four S's. Friends. <laughs> in her... <laughs> in her T-mail jail... One S for each of the four friends she now had. Dylan, Shiraz, Piper, and of course, Lizzie. If Lizzie still considered Tookie her friend, the music roared to a crescendo. 
All the girls turned to the front. Something momentous was about to begin. The music changed abruptly to a funky military march. An authoritative female announcer then boomed. Welcome, our protectors, our masons, and the best accessories since the tongue stud. Our brethren from bestow, best, bestosterone. Bestosterone. Oh, I thought it was brostosterone. Best, bestosterone. Sorry, it's testosterone, uh. but like their best. Bestosterone. <sighs> the centura clad groups of the girls applauded in a rhythmic clap, thigh slap, and whistle serenade. That offered a perfect complement to the beat of the music. A group of young men marched in doing a highly powerful staccato dance. Each was more handsome than the next. They were, they wore black billowing trousers um, stuffed into calf-high boots. Leather suspenders crisscrossed their bare chests. Of course, their chests are bare. Some had laser-like focus. Others were pouting and surveying the crowd of gawking girls, aware, that their han- aware of their handsome looks and still others seemed distracted, their thoughts far away. But all in all, they were a sight to relish. Cleft chins, strong brows, flexing muscles, eyes looking at you but not through you. Uh, or sorry, eyes looking not at you but through you. I'm claiming him first, Chast cried. Which one, Zarpesa asked. All of them. <laughs> Dylan snorted. She looks like the type of girl who do all of them, doesn't she? Oh my god. Oh my gosh, oh, no. no. Oh. Hira, why? Hira, why? <laughs> Remember what I said, girl, then then scuttled back from her class from her class at the front. Don't touch the accessories unless you're doing man attack or a photo shoot with them. Man attack is all one word, but man and attack are capitalized. Man attack. Uh-huh. <laughs> Suddenly, melody dropped to an ominous oct- Suddenly, the melody dropped to an ominous octave. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the board. Spelled like you're bored of something. The female announcer said, "A series of fireworks in the sky spelled B O R E D." They're spelling it that wrong. Tookie told Zen Zen, "That's everything in this book." <laughs> Zen Zen shook her head. Nope, they spelled it that way because that's how they always look, like people sitting in the front row of a fashion show. They're the highest level of instructors here, the powerful ones. It's mandatory to call them gurus. They report to the Belladonna. Tookie counted six members of the board. One stranger than the next. Guru Applauses marched with them. It's uh it's hand head waving to the crowd. <laughs> Another board member of it I'm gonna count that but I'm gonna take a second to get to the end of the chapter. Um another board member in an ancient looking troll wait. Another board member, an ancient looking troll of a man had aged parchment skin that hung loosely from his arms. Every inch of his body was covered in moving tattoos. I'm counting that as a second one when I get there. Oh, Tookie had reached the message scrolling across his forehead. Long, long ago, the battle raged between the Muses and the Nar. But before the message could end, the board member frantically wiped his forehead and changed. What was being spelled out? The scroll started over. Long, long ago, the battle raged between the muses and the nail polish remover. One board member had lizard skin and yellow eyes and a forked tongue that sprang out of its mouth. That thing makes me feel normal, Tookie thought. (laughs) Here, I'll just take sips as you go along. I'll take three sips for that. (laughs) Thank you. As she watched, the lizard's head turned white and it morphed into alabaster alligator with pink eyes. Piper smiled. I just know I'm going to be his teacher's pet. A stunning figure that looked like it was three quarters man, one quarter woman, pranced in next, generating a half-hearted smattering of applause. We stand non-binary characters? Sure. Sure. <laughs> let's, let's, Inclusivity? Let's read it that way. Yeah. This guru wore what looks like the the mating results of a black leather jumpsuit and a bustier. He, or she, was muscular, yet they, let's call them they, with blood hair, with blonde hair, sorry, blood hair would not have surprised me. <laughs> slicked back in a tight ballerina bun, 
When the figure's eyes connected with the girls in the crowd, everyone jumped back a step. Then the guru turned and stared at Tookie and her friends. A sickened expression watched over the guru, washed over the guru's face. Oh. Blood-curdling seconds passed. Tookie spotted a deep gash on the guru's right cheek, directly under her eye. Tookie held her breath, expecting something awful to happen. But then abruptly... Sorry, let me turn it so you can actually... Oh, keep, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Um... Um, but the, uh, Tookie held her breath expecting something awful to happen but then abruptly the strange figure continued towards the base of the waterfall disappearing from view what was that? Dylan muttered the music shifted again this time to an enchanting classical melody the deep timpani rolled Timp timpani? I'm saying that wrong uh, the music shifted then on cue each of the uniformed, color-coded groups started dancing wildly. One group of Bellas did an intricate Venice waltz. Another belly danced and shimmered wild, wild, and shimmied wildly. Another trance danced like they were at a pulsing rave. Another responded with acrobatics. They all seemed to be trying to outdance one another. Shiraz grabbed Dylan's hand. Come on, is fun. Dylan gave in and swung her long ponytail round and round. Even Piper did a unique robot-like bop. Every movement precise. Suddenly, Tookie got a twinge of sadness. That miracle hadn't been chosen. Her sister would love this. Suddenly, the waterfall vanished, revealing an enormous statue standing directly in front of all the girls. The statue was as tall as a ten-story building and made of what appeared to be shimmering, flawless diamond. Atop its dazzling head sat a broad-brimmed headdress. Its chin tilted to the right. It, its chin tilted to the right. Its hands froze artfully over its cheekbones, and its eyes retain, remained half closed. Is it smizing? Probably. <laughs> um. It's Piper blurted out. The, the, the stammered Dylan. Bella chirped Shiraz. Donna took he whispered. I'm glad they all got a part of that. <laughs> Dylan bit her lip nervously. She looks pissed off, y'all. One of the one of the blank-eyed, soulless women took five giant measured steps and stood at attention on the left side of the statue. She appeared to be in her mid forties. She was the only one of the mannequin-bodied women who wore ep epaulet ep epaulet. E P A U L E T T E S. I'm not sure how to say that. I think it's epaulets. Epaulets. Who's that? Tuki asked Zenzen. Her name is Permith. Per. Persa persimmon. I'm gonna say persimmon. <laughs> uh, like the, like the weird fruit. I'm so confused. <laughs> She's named after a fruit. Zenzen replied, she's the Belladonna's chief manacant. Did they name her after a fruit that doesn't exist for real and then called her, said, like the fruit? Or is that a fruit that I don't know? Existed? I think persimmons is a fruit. Okay, okay, persimmons. Um, it's a fruit in Animal Crossing, too. Okay. Never gotten a persimmon in Animal Crossing. Servants of Model Land, Zenzen explained. They are failed Bellas who dedicated their lives to the place in exchange for never having to leave. Why would you want to not leave? She eyed per Persimian. The dark seams of her mannequin joints stood out in the light. I wouldn't trust her. She always adds her own special spin when she relays a message to the Belladonna. We call her Persimian the Persecutor. <laughs> the music diminished to a steady drum roll. Persimian turned around. Um and faced the crowd. Now, new Bellas and old, she began speaking without help of the microphone. Tookie could see. Make uh, make models and mannequins and the esteemed board. I present... Male models and mannequins and the esteemed board, I present to you the most beloved of the beloved, the chicest of the chic, the definer of all things beautiful and the esteemed leader of the Bellas lucky to be led I present to you the Belladonna of Model Land mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a break and get my seven sips of water oh, in that gosh. I counted yes here I can hold on to thank that. you 
Uh, Chad, how are we feeling, Chad? Um, <laughs> uh, people are not remembering this part of the book. Persimmon? Since this is model land, is her name spelled Persimmon? No, it's not spelled Persimmon. It's spelled, um, uh, I guess, like the fruit, if that's the, uh, that's the, um, the okay. whatever. But yeah, <laughs> it would be Persimmon or pers Persimmon? 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 Person. Uh, promise no sanity. Sadly, it's just persimmon. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Persimmon. persimmon. Um. It it has like an outer layer that isn't really edible, but then in the inside is really good. Uh, it's an edible fruit. Uh, in the genus Dias Pyros, most widely cultivated. Is the Oriental persimmon Dios Dios Pyros Kaki K A K I? Yeah, it's really good. And but... who said model land wasn't uh, educational? And I know, right? So I know I got uh, something <sighs> from a cat from like a casting director, so I might check on that in a minute because I don't want them to be like, by the way. Oh, you can go for that. That's fine. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna check on that. I'm just gonna be on my phone, everyone. I'm sorry. Don't mind Gabe. <laughs> Gabe is an important uh, movie star. Oh gosh, people like to say that I'm the star of the resident. I'm like, no, I'm not. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Because then they're like, why don't you get a line? And I'm like, you don't do that. If you're a background, you don't go up and go, why can't I have a line? Oh, sorry, here we go. Oh, no, you're good. I just wanted to get it out of your way. It's all good. All right. Everyone in the O dropped to one knee and bowed their heads. Their positions looked as if they were posing for a photograph. The new girls quickly followed suit awkwardly. Then, as the music flared once more, the grand statue began to move. Tookie's mouth dropped. The belladonna is a statue? Might as well be, Zen Zen said, her gaze nervously darting around the O. We only see the real thing once a year, at the 7-7 tournament. The statue looked around the O. Its head moved in Tookie's direction, and Tookie's stomach clenched. The belladonna is looking at me. Then the statue directed its full attention to the entire audience and accompanied by the full orchestra began to sing. Oh God, I don't know. I Who knows how this is supposed, what tempo this is supposed to be at, but she's singing the words, my dear model land is a heavenly queendom. It walks rich with memories of yesteryear. Our laws antiquated, but must be respected or I'll discard you like moth-eaten cashmere. Listen to me now, my sparkling new no -sees. Your infants, your rascals, and oh so askew, you've entered a world that most would slay for, but amongst them I have chosen you. That read like the world's worst like poem to read, like the good night poems type of thing, like good night, whatever. It just like, I don't know, I just, that read like something, <laughs> like a Shel Silverstein poem. It read like a terrible Shel Silverstein poem. Um Yes. Shel Silverstein was something that was read to me a lot as a kid. Ah, okay. Yeah, children's <laughs> poet. Ah, uh, I was not read children's poems when I was younger. Tookie tilted her head toward Zen Zen. No see, she whispered. New girls, replied Zen Zen, before be bringing a finger to her lips. Listen up, this is my favorite part. Oh boy. The do Belladonna began the chorus of her melody, and the older Bella sang with her. Oh, is it the song? Oh, it would have been so great if it was the song. Oh, the running, running, model land, model land, running. I don't know. <laughs> model land is your new home. Home, home, the older Bellas sang. Welcome to the super dome. Dome, dome, sang the older Bellas. For your XX chromosomed, zomed, zomed, the older <laughs> Bellas echoed. Model land is your new home. And then the Bellas launched into the next verse. Regard your dear neighbor, the Bella, to your neck, your left, ambassador to Model Land, and you are now too. She'll excite the world to buy wares of design and splendor. Here's a list of Model Land's curriculum menu. Then Zen leaned into Tookie and the girls. Listen to all the great stuff you'll be learning how to entice the world to wear. It's really cool. Then, she, then they keep singing. From footwear to freeze sprays foundation face powders to corsets and camisoles and culottes and trousers mes moccasins and mini skirts and mesh tops and bronzers 
sandals, suspenders, and sunblock with powers. Sunblock with powers. Hmm. Sunblock, Piper commented. Your poster girl's right here, Belladonna. You'll wear waistcoats, wedding dresses, wetsuits, and lingerie. Oh, they're young for lingerie. I don't like that. Yeah, wait until they're 18, Belladonna. Uh, leotards and yellow belts, deodorant every day, hosiery and houndstooth and rough lip, uh, and rougey lips to chalets, bandeaus and bodices and LBDs at soirees. You'll exfoliate, emulsify, dipolate, and moisturize. See glycer sell glycerin, jojoba oils, fragrances, and fluoricides. Cocktail dresses, cardigans, concealers for tired eyes, and practice all your posing tricks from sunset till sunrise. Hmm. Perform it's still going. Perform in petticoat themed much attend much attended fashion elite expos. Safari wear, tuxedos, tunics, tops, and all types of clothes. Kilts and clocks and swinging coats and crocheted kimonos with audiences making bets on who will fall upon their nose. The older Bellas began to sing the chorus again, and this time some of the new girls sang along. CL dressed in a sateen couture straight jacket rose through the ground imprisoned in a bird cage its bars were made of razors cookie clapped her hands over her mouth the belladonna continued regard this renegade this rowdy rabble rouser this shameless charlatan this scant the skank scallywag oh my god oh my god a troll making malady a traitor defective while we all zig the pest must zag CL cast a mournful look at the statue. You've all grown up dreaming, hoping to be her. Now this triple seven seven is inferior to you. Oh my god. She leaned from her misstep. She learned so learn from her missteps. Hello to your futures. To CL's to CL's au revoir. Adios and adieu. Oh, it was supposed to rhyme with you. Okay, I was just taking a lot of information in. <laughs> Besides the Zen, beside them, the Zen Zen let out a whimper. I feel her pain, she cried, tears forming in her eyes. I knew it, Sarpesa yelped. How the mighty have fallen. Maybe if CL had a famous boyfriend, she wouldn't be in this mess. The orchestra ended with a crescendo, and all remain that remained was a lone violin play playing a haunting melody. The girls sang the chorus once more, but this time they sounded nervous, even a little fear fearful. This scary, Shir mumbled Shiraz. Listen closely to the next part, Zen Zen warned. Uno, the upper class bell is called in Gaudian. Gaudi Gaudian. You will exit my gates through five distinct fashions. Listen closely. One of five will be your truth. The foolish, moronic, the feeble, the mindless will ri ri will risk all and regift their coveted youth. Regift their coveted youth. What does that mean? Asked Tookie. Close your eyes and imagine yourself 50 years older, Zen Zen said. If you leave Model Land without permission, you kiss your youth goodbye. Uh. Dos, the meek and misguided muckety muck flunkies will ride Senso Utico through farewell toll booth. Tookie, what's she mean? Shiraz asked. Senso Utico means one way in Capuchinian. <laughs> Tookie translated, you get a one-way ticket out of here if you continually suck, Zen Zen explained. I forgot Tookie can speak every language in this universe. Oh, yeah. Tres. Another castaway will opt for mannequin memoirs, perhaps better to pitiful pre model land pursuits. When the Belladonna sang the word mannequin, Tookie turned to look at Persim Persimmon in, the in time to see her head drop. Quattro. Second string Bellas will opt for the silver screen, miming in the multiplex so trite, so uncouth. The Belladonnas can't stand actresses, Zen Zen whispered. Oh. She says they're pitiful model land rejects who just want any kind of spotlight. I once heard her say actresses are a step below mannequin. We all know how, what well, this is the 1920s where uh, actors don't have social clout. They're just like the lowly actors. 
Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it was seen as like um, the way that the way that people treat like sex workers now. That's basically how uh, actors used to be treated because it was like this cheap new form of art. They oh. were this lowly class of people flailing around on screen. Apparently, that's how Model Land still works. Oh my gosh. Thinko, Prime Fuel emerge seven in seven Toxabellas. For this reward, Pathetics will sell their eye tooth. After the last chorus, the newly recruited Bellas char uh, cheered wildly. The agile ones did high kicks, backflips, and splits in the air. Shiraz did a cartwheel. The statue began singing again, this time without music. She's acting, she's writing it like she's trying to keep some kind of beat, but I have no idea what that beat is. <laughs> Your premature merriment has come much too fast. The disparity between good and bad will be very vast. THBC separates punks from the class. For some no sees, Discovery Day will be your last. That was a that was a long oh, chapter, okay. but it felt longer than it uh. was. How we feeling, chat? How's everybody doing? I'm frightened. <laughs> Apparently, my my dinosaurs are like the the ki kitty streams. Really out here, like <laughs> the sort. I can I can base how unhinged we're getting. Um off of the fact that I, I hear the rustling of paper stop when games like, oh my god. <laughs> um, I don't know how to do origami chat, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Natasha comes in and just makes like 100 cranes in two minutes, and I'm just like, my, I'm not worthy. <laughs> Hi, Salt Mountain. Skank Scallywag with a cry. <laughs> yeah. Tootie! Has anyone watched Moon Girl, a devil dinosaur yet, because I loved it. I saw a commercial for it, and it seems interesting. My question is, how is she able to to have the dinosaur do what she wants? Just be careful, Ellery says. This book will try to strip away our rationality and try to un and tr uh to try and understand the hypothetical concept of this book having a plot. <laughs> um, there is no plot. Stuff happens and nothing of worth. Even the ending doesn't seem worth it. It was supposed to be a trilogy. Oh, has anyone watched... Uh, we already read that, sorry. Uh, oh god, the song. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I said it's like a hypothetical concept. Game totally... Game totally knew who that is. I don't know what that was in reference to. I'm sorry. Uh, I had the Thomas Kincaid illustrated book uh of children poems oh thomas kincaid yeah so when i was a baby um friends of my parents gave me or i think they might have given it to my parents before i was born a shel silverstein book and they like wrote a note to like to me it was very sweet i still oh. have it they used to read me the poems all the time um my mom is cat my mom is casually listening and she is so scared and confused. <laughs> i'm so sorry natty's mom we're scared and confused too <laughs> Can you, can you, can you survive model land? <laughs> no. Uh, I own a few of his books. And this chat is what we call Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss. Oh, wait, what was it? Uh, Ghostlight Ghoul Keep Geist Boss is what we came up with. Because I said one of, in one of the ghosts and the Goosebump books, there was a ghost who was trying to tell a live kid that he was the ghost. And I was like, he's oh. go she's ghostlighting him. <laughs> and so we came up with Ghostlight Geist Keep Ghoul Boss. Oh my god really out here like the sorting hat <laughs> imagine if model land was a musical i would expect oh, gosh. nothing it would, <laughs> it would all be so auto-tuned salt mountain like the susicle i would very much like to not imagine that actually salt mountain is <laughs> cake scallywag is such a word isn't it time to add slut shaving to the list of content warnings i suppose uh, oh yeah. that's not already on there i'm sorry i thought it was i guess i'll add that um no, we don't need a Model Land musical. Like, what music would we set this to? The Model Land uh, auto tune music, of course. You wanna be on top? Do, 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 Just plays do, do, over and over do, again. Do, wanna be on top? Uh, but which which opening do we want? The one to three style opening? The four to six? The seven to nine? The ten to thirteen? The which 14. one did I see when we watched the um? Four. Four. Okay. That that's where they have like rhythmic drum beats to it, oh, or okay. or um the like uh, the. the uh, like a snare snare drum like the snare drum beats is what i meant my bad that's what i want to find out like how would this even sound i feel like i'm having a stroke i you should have i'm tr i'm the one over here reading it being like i don't believe what's in front of my eyes hey hey shook tv um 
Dinos are to model land what kitten streams are to California diaries. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Uh, so this is like a fairy glade, or was that fluffy language? Uh, I honestly couldn't answer. I have no idea. If, I, have, I don't know anything anymore. Oh, apparently the content warnings aren't warnings aren't showing. Oh, oh shoot, that's that's on me. Um, hang on, let me update it and then show it. I I left it in the. I thought I sent it to. This is what they're seeing. This is the preview, so that if I have to change something, they don't have to like have a headache while I'm just like trying to fix something. I thought I had sent it over here and I didn't. Oh, and side note, Salt Mountain Salt Mountain says that uh the Z H and Zen or and Z and Zen Zen is supposed to be pronounced like a J, so it's supposed to be Gen Gen. Gen Gen. Okay. That makes it worse somehow. <laughs> Hello, Gen Gen. Or <laughs> or <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence has snuck in, so there's Gen, but then there's Gen Gen. Shaming. I have to make the text smaller so that it'll all fit. So, so much. There's too many trigger warnings. This is literally like my friend uh, Maddie loves the series called Worm. And the, it starts out with them being like, uh, it'd be easier for us to tell you what trigger warnings there aren't. So just if you're triggered by anything, don't read this. And it's just like, <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Um, there we go. Are we seeing the trigger warnings? We should be seeing them now. Uh, we have, we're up to one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight trigger warnings. Oh and those God. are just the most, those aren't even all of them. Those are just the ones that we elected as like most important to like immediately warn people about. Someone's going to come in here and be like, oh, this seems like a totally nice stream. Reads a content warning. Oh, it can't be that bad. Listens to one sentence. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Why? A brief serotonin burst in this cloudy depression that is Model Land's existence, meaning the, meaning the. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have three new teal ones. I guess this could be uh, Dylan, Shiraz, and... Um, Piper. Piper, yes. The, the, these could be those three. I love it. I love it very much. <laughs> They're going to live there forever now. Yay. And so when we do the Jurassic Park stream eventually it could just be like dinosaur 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 dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. <laughs> i remember talking to my mom and i'm like my favorite dinosaur is the therizinosaurus and she's like why and i'm just like oh because it's cool mom because it's cool mom. <laughs> it's like a bird with giant claws and it just smacks a deer at one point it's great have you ever been to the fern bank museum yes yeah i was like you'd love the fern bank museum all uh, the dinosaurs exactly <laughs> tyrannosaurus rex <laughs> it always reminds me because they have that giant one in the atrium and it always reminds me of night at the museum when you walk in and i'm like they all come to life i know, <laughs> I know they do uh now can we burn the book no we're not done yet we're, Unfortunately. we're, at, we're at page 178 oh gosh um <laughs> i haven't even read yet today if someone said to Super Chat so Avery could buy a better book, if it makes you feel better, I did buy some Nancy Drew books from my Nancy Drew collection from uh, from this uh, discount online thrift bookstore that I like. Uh, if that makes anybody feel better for my reading <laughs> habits, I, I, did, I did that. I bought some wholesome books. I was like, oh my god. We've been through it with the books we've been reading on stream. Sorry, I'm trying to make all it. Alright, it's all good. I swear if my mom calls me a... a... I, I can't, I don't swear in real life. I'm sorry. So I'm going to say skunk scallywag because of this book. I'm a scream. <laughs> oh, also, gosh. since you're between chapters, I just want to annoyingly mention that the, okay, thank you. Thank you. That's yes, not annoying, you, Salt Mountain. We're genuinely just trying our best out here and we will appreciate any help we can get. I'm sure if they'll yeah. show, they'll add the inhuman powers later, but for now, it's only in the comic. Um, I'm, I'm, Picking up on, like, parts of <laughs> chat. Sorry, chat. Oh, God, why? Texas says, hi, Texas. <laughs> We're glad to see you. The content warnings aren't showing up. They should be showing up now. Um, you like the word skink scallywag? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, we are. Thanks, Avery. Okay. Uh, you need a ticker across the bottom of the video. Like how long? How long it's been? Like how long we've suffered? <laughs> I swear, if my mom comes, we stay. Just FYI, uh, I was posting the content warnings in chat manually. Thank you, Ellery. We appreciate you. Ellery is the 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 goat. We we have we have good mods. Yay! We love our mods here. Thank you, mod. Thank you, Ellery. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing. Or I'm holding a sign that has your name on it. Yay! Good job. Yay! Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Um, they should, yeah, now that they're up, sorry, I thought I had sent it to the live feed. I did not, because I was apparently too overwhelmed, and I was like, that's the yeah. live feed, and it wasn't, it was the 3D feed. Yeah, you all need to stop overwhelming Avery. No, He's they're... really smart and is really tech savvy, but all the <laughs> all these comments. They're, they're, they're not uh, overwhelming me. The book, the information <laughs> that I'm taking in, my brain is just like, how do I process? Oh gosh, I may or may not have seen chat the beginning parts of chapter 17 and I'm like, oh, sip of water soon. Oh gosh. I exist to ex assist the the way of the knight of bot. Thank you. Even my notifications were trying to save me. I just got it for this video and you've been on for like an hour and we've only read one <laughs> chapter. Only one chapter. Let me throw this. Oh, no, my trash is right here. I forgot I moved it. Anyway. <laughs> you okay. Uh, now my time has come for me to lip sync for my life. Just kidding. I <laughs> chapter sixteen. The T H B C T T T Tamasha T A T A M A S H A Tamasha Tamasha Tamasha. I'm gonna say Tamasha. <clears throat> the new Bella's contagious jubilance at the start of the opera had abruptly turned to an awkward mix of hope and dread. Quickly, tour guides ushered the new girls back to the zip zaps. Everything was taking place very hurriedly, as though they had somewhere very important to go next. No one spoke. The Belladonna song had been so ominous. Piper had a very determined look on her face, as though she was doing math problems in her head. Dylan nervously straightened her outfit and combed her two long ponytails with her fingers. Only Cheery Shiraz was still dancing and singing the music from the event. When Tookie detected someone else humming a different melody, quite out of tune... It was a girl with skin the color of toasted breadcrumbs, standing one line over. She had long, wavy, dark brown hair, honey-colored eyes, a tiny ruby decorating the middle of her smize, and a decorative head bangor. A newfangled invention from the far southeast that del delivered music directly to a wearer's brainwaves in her hair. Tookie realized this was the girl who'd rescue her in the plaza. Oh, the one with the kind face. I was wondering if she was coming back. Telling her to run for the zip zaps, Tookie walked over to her. Are you from Chakra? She asked shyly. She never met a Chakran before. At first, the girl didn't notice her, and Tookie was about to turn away when the girl touched her head bangor lightly to pause, to pause it. Oh, hi, I'm nervous. Nice to meet you. Tookie and the girl shared a laugh. The girl continued. I'm also... I or, I'm also Kamalini, Kamalini Dara from Chakra, Tuki Delacrem from Etopia. Tuki shifted back and forth, waiting for Kam Kamalini to look at her strangely and remark on how odd looking she was, how she didn't belong here. Ka Kamalina smiled. Tuki, I like that. Quiet, ladies, keep moving, Kamalina's guide yelled. Bye, Tuki from Etopia, Kamalina said. See you later, hopefully. Clutching her head bang or Kamalini scuttled ahead to join her group, climbing through a zip-zap, disappearing down the hole. Tookie and Dylan turned back to the zip-zaps and noticed four nearly identical girls wearing identical outfits. The only way to tell them apart was by their pastel-hued hair. Well, looky here, who are y'all? I, or Dylan asked, I'm she likey, the first girl announced, blue hair. I'm her likey, green hair. I'm I likey, pink hair. I'm me likey, purple. <laughs> yeah, it's spelled L, -L I K E E. So I'm like I likey, me likey. And yeah, no, like, I think uh, that yeah. I, that's exactly what it is. It's just oh. funny. <laughs> so where are we now in the story? The the four, someone shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you must suffer with us. Oh my god! Sorry. Continue. Okay. We're from Minnie Paul, each said a different word in the sentence. Then, one by one, the girls disappeared into the zip-zap like sand crabs sneaking down their little holes. A girl named An Angelica from Icylon yapped like an excited Yorkshire terrier. Yay, 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 isn't it? Or, yeah, 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 isn't this great? That's my Icylon accent. She jumped into one of the zip-zaps so enthusiastically she gr scraped the top of her head... On its sharp pull tab, Tookie cringed, seeing bits of blood and hair still hanging from it. So I count that as a body horror. That's two sips for me later on. Jen Jen then stepped up to Tookie and put both hands on her shoulders. I have to leave you now, Tookie. You heard what the Belladonna said, right? Tookie nodded. Be careful, okay? 
Why, Tookie whispered. Should I be worried? Um, Jen Jen looked uncomfortable. Well, yes, everyone should be worried about what comes next. Why? What's going to happen? Then then blew out a long breath. I cannot tell you one bit of advice, though. There's strength in numbers. There were only 10 girls left waiting to enter the zip zap, including Tookie, her friends, and Zarpesa, who turned around, glared at them, and then started started feverishly scratching her arms. Ick, I'm allergic to dust, pollen, and farm animals. CL's words echoed in Tookie's head. Tookie's head. The girl who is sucking your blood is hurting way more than you. Never stoop to her lever. Zuki walked up to Zarpesa. Zarpesa flinched. What? She growled. Tookie stared at the ground, unable to make eye contact. I... I, I'm not going to tell, she murmured into her chest. Zarpesta's face drained of color. She brought her nose close to Tookie's. You're not going to tell about what? About you. No, you know, I saw you at the dumpster eating all that rotting food and Zarpesta cut her off. You don't know anything, okay? But Jen Jen's voice rang out from the back of the line. Zarpesta from Metopia, into the zip zap. Go! Zarpesta strutted to the zipper, then turned around and looked at Tookie. Are you ready? Jen Jen frowned. What do you mean, is she ready? Are you ready? No, you heard me right. Zarpetsa simpered, her eyes still on Tookie. Are you ready? Then she grabbed the zipper teeth on each side of the opening and used them as handles. With one dramatic hair sweep, she gracefully launched herself into the zip zap and disappeared. But Tookie could still hear her voice from inside the zipper. For a lesson in how to shut the heck up. What is she talk? What is she talking about? Dylan sidled up to Tookie. What did you say to her? Tookie shut her eyes, not answering. The absolutely wrong thing, she thought. All right, the Super CL foursome. You guys are the last one. Step right up there. Zen Z Jen Jen pointed at the zipper opening. They sat at the zipper's base. Dylan first, then Shiraz, with Piper and Tookie pulling up the rear. <laughs> Gazunte, the human train. They slid fast down into the hole, darkness enveloping them. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! That's my southern accent, woo-hoo. <laughs> Dylan screamed in the, in the zip zap, throwing her hands up in the air like she was on a roller coaster. In seconds, with Tookie now in the lead, they all they they were spat out on the other end of the in reverse order, sliding across a cold metal floor and coming to a halt in a room lit by a single dim bulb swinging overhead. They were the only ones in the room. The only other thing Tookie can make out were more zippers, but they were shut tightly. Hello? Piper yelled. Hello? 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 <laughs> she crossed her arms and squinted. Hmm. From the residents of the sound, I presume we're in a fairly large space. Just then, the zip zap zipped open and spit out a girl with a kente cloth dress and spiral braided hair. She landed on top of Tookie. Then came another, and another. Dylan ran over and heaved aside the girls, pinning Tookie to the floor, yanking Tookie out of the flow of traffic. You okay, girl? Uh-huh, Tookie murmured, feeling a rush of pleasure. Dylan had come to her rescue. First yell, and now Dylan. Dylan, or uh, Tookie was loving the being cared for, feel, being cared about feeling. All the zippers coughed up their human cargo in reverse order of the girls' entrance at the O. They all tried staying in the lit area of the room, but as their total number approached 100, some had to venture into the dark parts. Oh my god! A girl screamed. The zip zap killed her! Probably shouldn't have said that really loud. The entire group turned to see a girl lying motionless at the mouth of the zipper. Blood pooled beneath her head. Everyone started to scream. Dylan turned quickly away. I, I can't. I feel like I'm going to throw up and pass out. Shiraz stayed with Dylan while Tookie and Piper went to investigate. Angelica from Iceland lay still, her head and shoulders covered in blood. Tookie and Piper kneeled down to check her. Piper felt around Angelica's head. Not that big of a gash, Piper said, but even small wounds can bleed profusely. Is she... Unalive? Tookie whispered. Angelica spread up to a sitting position and yelled, Unalive? Who? Everyone screamed again. It was like seeing a body rise from the grave. Tookie and Piper lift Angelica to her feet. Shiraz ran forward and ripped her gauzy sleeve from her shirt so Angelica could wipe the blood off her face. Where are we? A girl cried. A voice emerged from the darkness. You're in THBC. The girls stared into the dark abyss. Dylan grabbed Tookie's hand. Thigh high boot camp, ladies. The same voice belted. I wonder if this is the Mr. or Miss J insert. A spotlight shone down on a figure across the room. It was a stunning 
It was the stunning three-quarter man, one-quarter woman guru. I don't know what to do with this character. I'm just going to say the non-binary representation that... Probably... Yeah. All the all the non-binary people are like, we don't want. We to don't this. claim this individual. My question is, what three quarters man, one quarter woman? Which quarter? <laughs> like, <you laughs> well, it depends I mean? on what. Or it's like, or is it like one, two, three, four? Or is it like one, two, three, four? Oh, I'm picturing like just... one, two, three, four. Like, oh, I'm, I'm like, yeah. is it like the head is very feminine, or like? Is the quarter the quarter with the boobs? Is that, is that how it works? Oh, oh gosh, um, I don't know how to proceed with this. I, I don't know. I, I still have my two up for drinks of water from. Or wait, should it be three because it's just like, oh yeah, she's bleeding from her head. Yeah, I'll take that one. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Ellery says, Mister, Ms. J, insert yes, Gabe. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> but which one? <laughs> J. Manuel, J. Alexander. I mean, if. If they end up caring for the girls, then then J. Alexander. If not, Miss J. Mr. J, I mean. No, we know it doesn't qualify as non-binary. It's just, it's a very weird way to say it, and we're uncomfortable, so we're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, what does that... What is she trying to say here in real life? It feels borderline transphobic. <laughs> And I don't know what to do with that. I don't either. I don't know. What should, what should we say, Chad? Should we just say Mr. J? I don't know. Have they gotten to the part where period... No. No, we have not gotten to the part where periods have become super important. I'm I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Ms. J. Okay, Ms. J. I Fierce. Well, then I hope that this character cares for the girls because in chats, the models are talking about Miss J has actually cared for them. Okay, I'm going to call them. Okay, guru. The, the Miss J guru, the girls had first laid down on in the O ceremony. The guru stood on an or or ornate metal platform with arms crossed and feet splayed in ballet's fist position, surrounded by a halo of multicolored fireflies. The guru's gray, gray eyes glowed alarmingly, almost from within. Suddenly, more lights clicked on, one by one. I am Gune Guru Ganero, to you cheap nylon noses, the instructor yelled at the girls. I am head of model and security, head of a runaway intensive class, Head of the THBC and the head man in charge of you slovenly scrubs. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, oh, we're tiptoeing around some serious stuff, chat. I, uh... Yeah, I'm just going to add transphobia to the list of warning. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I, after after saying the G word last time, I'm just going to be real PC right now. Um, question mark? Tookie heard Chas snicker. The, the, they're questioning the, uh, they're questioning for, for their benefit. They're questioning the um, gender of this character in just a very blunt way. Yeah, I guess that's why Chas is doing it and they're snickering. So it's just like... There's only one person more powerful in Model N than me, Guru Ganero continued, but I'm not going to be singing you any songs. He glared around the room with piercing snake-like eyes. Should I just include, or, they, they, they are, their pronouns are he, It the book says, should I continue saying he, or should I say I they? I guess the pro pronouns are he. You can say, yeah. that, that's their pronouns. Okay, I might say they occasionally, but as of right now, it's he. Probably fine. I, I just don't want to offend anybody. I'm sorry. I don't think this character represents anybody. <laughs> okay, but I'm just don't want... Be, but people have been canceled for less, and I don't want to offend anyone. This... It's okay. We, we It's okay, Gabe. You're just the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> uh, the scar on his face made him look even meaner. The girl leaned back or turned away. Tookie felt a creep of goosebumps from her toes to her head. Your assignment, my ladies, your mission, if you will, is my specialty. Specialty. A fashion show. A fashion show? Angelica exclaimed. How fun! I always wanted to do a fashion show. Shiraz jumped up and down. Gennaro stared at them. This sfilata will not be runway of the mill. So if any at any time you feel like you need a permanent breather, if the going makes you want to go on a go-see to go see your mommy and daddy along this journey will be doors for the most delicate dames marked home. 
The girl's smiles faded abruptly. But remember, the guru went on, once you step your trembling toes through any door marked home, there is no coming back. Choosing the home door is not like choosing a vintage designer gown that will indeed come back into fashion. You leave through those home doors and you are forever banned from these gates, like Nehru jackets. Guru Ganero la Ganero's laugh shint chills up Tookie's spine. Now you will be experience a fashion show from start to finish in five phases. Now let's get started. Phase number one, measurements. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, boy. Shiraz turned toward Tookie and mouth. How bad can it be? Ganero kicked his high heel boot hard on the floor, and the room instantly changed. Excuse me. Suddenly, all the girls stood in a stark white round room. There was only one visible door. It was marked home. Mannequins poured in through a dozen hidden entrances, pushing carts full of various uh, uh, apparatuses, rulers, T-squares, compasses, miniature scales, ga gauges, and meters. They marched to the girls and instantly got to work. The mannequin forcefully held Kamalina by the shoulders to measure the angles of her chin and the distance between the ruby in the middle of her smiles and her eyebrows. Supreme, the readout announced. Another mannequin pinched Dylan's arm with the caliper. Ow! Dylan screamed. Yet another mannequin yanked Sheree's by the top of her head, presumably trying to get her to stand a little taller. I... Not growing taller, Shiraz protested, and one more mannequin waved a meter across Piper's cheeks. Lack of pigment, pigment, a woman's robotic voice proclaimed. Skin prone to burning, blushing, and flushing. Piper wrenched away from the wand. Then a mannequin approached Tookie and carefully measured the space between her eyes. Too far apart, the meter announced. It measured the length of her arms. And Proportionally too long, the meter said, and... Then her neck, two ostrichy, preferable foul neck swan. Y your neck is like an ostrich, not a swan, but they both have long. Um... But isn't a long neck like considered also a good thing in y modeling? Yeah, very much so. Tyra talks about no neck monsters and how that you shouldn't have no neck. You need to have length, length. Something I do not have. I have a very stumpy neck. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> well, I mean, it's an 18, but people are like, it's 17 and a half. And I'm like, it's 18. And then they, they're they like, no, it's 17 and a half. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I told you it was 18. Well, see, I always have a longer neck, but it just made me think of when I was a kid watching Phineas and Ferb. And, and you know, they told Candace she had a coup de crayon, which means a uh, pencil neck. And so I was just like, do I have a coup de crayon? <laughs> oh, oh, no. But didn't they love Candace because they had like an outfit with real a really big collar and only she could only like. she could wear it. Exactly. Could, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go Candace, voiced by Ashley Tisdale. We love her. Yes. <laughs> if you do not like Ashley Tisdale, then I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, chat. And finally, when the minicant waved a comb-shaped device over Tookie's hair, the readout proclaimed, unfortunate condition, voiced both oily and dry, limp and frizzy, completely uncombable, uncurable, and unstylable. Phase one complete, Gennaro roared. The measuring minicants vanished just as quickly as, quickly as they arrived. Tookie peered around at the other girls, and they looked just as flustered as she felt. Gennaro barked, Well, your class seems to have near-perfect degrees of beauty supremacy, almost as becoming as I. Quite the rarity. All except four of you. Everyone knew exactly which four Gennaro was referring to without his even having to look in their direction. Then Gennaro began to strut around the room. But measurements are just the beginning of this acid wash denim trip. It's time for phase two. Is this is this where we get our thigh hat boots? Zarpesa interrupted. My hairdresser step cousin's uncle, who works in the marketing department for Zuzaton, the thigh high boot designer, told me the THBC boots are amazing this year. Gennaro's eyes widened at her outburst. His lips curled into a smirk. Well, my mother's youngest and only son said that he heard you were a wannabe kiss butt brown nosing Bella and that he wants me to tell you or wants to tell all the girls here to tell you to shut the heck up. He whipped around the girls. Well, tell her. The group of girls awkwardly obeyed. Even took his sputtered. Shut your hole, I guess. Zarpesta looked shaken. Merci, ladies. Gennaro said primly. Now, moving on. Cathedra. 100 salon-style chairs pop dropped from above. Even each girl's name was engraved on the back of the chair, even Tookie's. Spiegels! Gennaro roared. 
Uncue one mirror for every chair appeared. Locate your seats and plop your fern newbie fannies into them. Bums. <laughs> or did Ganero move? Oh, did they say butts? Or they said fannies. Oh, I think that counts. Yeah. I'll take a seat. I I'm including it. I have four sets I need to take. The flock of girls stepped down the aisle. Some girls who had found their chairs jumped into them excitedly. Tookie, however, was suspicious. What is all this? She asked Piper as they walked to their designated seats. I don't know. Piper said grimly, seeming frustrated she didn't have the answer. Once all the girls were seated and facing their mirrors, Ganero screamed, Maquillage. A high-pitched sound like a missile approaching filled the room. Everyone looked up. One lone white lacquered cart plummeted from the ceiling and landed in the middle of the aisle with a crash. Amazingly, it was still intact after the impact. The cart wasn't very big and contained five drawers that spilled over with every type of makeup and beauty tool Tookie had ever seen, thickening, lengthening, and multiplying mascaras, lipsticks, lip glosses, and stick-on faux lips attached, eye shimmers and shadows, and lash curlers, and that promised to make lashes retain their curve for a year, for two years, face shimmers, glitters, and pills that promised an instant inner glow once, di once ingested, fake eyelashes made from deceased daddy long legs. Tookie spotted an area of the card that held multiple hair removal systems, tweezers, razors, and a black wax that slowly dripped onto the floor. The label of the wax jar said LP wax recycled from vinyl albums of yesteryear. Gennaro announced the next order in a wavering falsetto. Artistes, artistes, artistes. 100 minicants fluttered out from behind Gennaro and made their way to a, to a particular chair. Tookie looked at the minicant who had come to her chair. Her black eyes had many lines and wrinkles around them, reminding Tookie of the dry and cracked lake beds at home in Peppertown. They reminded her of Creamy, too, and she winced. All she could think of was Creamy's horrified and rage face at CL as CL lifted Tookie above the Ladorna Square, and her parents had fought, arguing to get rid of her. She swallowed a lump growing in her throat. Flurry! screamed Gennaro. With that, the Minican artists moved at superhuman speed. They all ran to the cart and grabbed handfuls of products, then dashed back to their designated girl and got to work. The artists tossed mascaras and sponges, eyeliners and lip glosses across the aisles to each other in a spectacular juggling display. Tookie's artiste had five sponges and brushes flying through the air while applying coal blue-black liner to Tookie's lower inner eye. After she was finished with it, she passed the liner to Piper's artiste, who then used it and passed it to Zarpesa's. The artiste slathered creams on Tookie's face and had feather-like touch as she swept mascara through her lashes. The pampering and attention lulled Tookie into a trance. She couldn't see herself through her arti because her artiste was standing in the way of her mirror, but it didn't matter. Never before had Tookie been fawned over in such a way. The closest anyone had ever come to examining her face was when Creamy took her to the doctor last year for tests to figure out why her forehead seemed to be growing faster than the rest of her face. Tookie was loving thigh high boot camp. She thought the name was especially fitting because she felt like she was flying on a natural thigh high. Gennaro's voice broke Tookie out of her trance. Two minutes left, artiste. Once every muscle in your body is on the dung you're working on, the transformation transformation of shaggy shaggy noses is no runway walk in the park. After two more minutes, the lights went out. The girls let out a chorus of surprise screams. Then the lights snapped back on. Behold your reflections, Gennaro screamed. The artiste had disappeared. For the first time, the girls had unobstructed views of themselves in their mirrors. Tookie opened her eyes a crack, her old fear of mirrors flooding back. This isn't going to make me look good, she thought. I'll be the same old kooky tooky as before. But she had to look. Slowly, she opened her eyes and stared at, at the reflection before her. Her mouth dropped open. Who is that? There was a brilliant stroke of eyeshadow above her eyes, a perfect swipe of iridescent lip gloss on the middle of her bottom lip. The spider legs were though those spider legs were glued to her lids, making her lashes look a zillion miles long. She almost looked good. Tookie glanced at her friends and gasped. Shiraz berry stained lips looked edible. With the help of Periwinkle and Sienna eyeshadow, Dylan's eyes were now a bright electric lavender. Piper's skin glowed as if lit from within. She looked even more like a marble statue than before reminding Tookie of a saint. Suddenly, Shirai's eyes bold. Tookie, Shiraz well pointing at her. 
what's happening? Suki turned to see what Shiraz was pointing at. An older, unrecognizable person was staring at Tuki. It had a boil growing on its nose, looking out a, letting out a smoke that smelled like rotten eggs and animal droppings. Much of its hair had fallen out in clumps, and many of the hanging strands fused together into what looked like chunks of petrified wood. Its eyes were bruised, swollen, nearly shut, and its ears were swollen into what looked like bulbs of cauliflower. Oh my god, Tookie and the creature whispered. That was when she realized the gruesome creature was her. Dun, dun, dun. 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 Oh my god. Uh, see, <laughs> what, so she's saying don't wear makeup? Is this Tara? I don't know if they're shaming people for wearing makeup or not wearing it. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean, but Tyra talk or I know Tyra talk about talks about a lot on America's Next Model when girls wear too much makeup and they need to wear na more be more natural with their makeup. So And then when you wear ma natural makeup, people are just like, You need to make it you need to make a statement. <laughs> you need to make more of an effort. Um And then if the model or if the model, or if they put in weird makeup, the judges are like, "You, you look weird in that makeup." And it's like, "Well, yeah, because that's not the she normal didn't do way." It. She yeah. didn't do that. Why are you getting mad at her? The uh, Ellery says, "Holy self insert Batman." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I, we are up to nine trigger warnings now. Oh my gosh. Um. Yeah. The. Please uh, let me know if I forget any chat or if there are any that we don't know because they really like to throw us curveballs. Yep, yeah, especially the description of Guru Ganero. It's going to be like up here. I'm going to be like, Gabe, <laughs> where, uh, where am I? I'm over here. I'll just have to make I'm it just, like this I'm way and it'll just like list like this across oh the bottom. Gosh. Yep, so that was chapter 16. Uh... <laughs> We're almost at 200. Almost there, and there's what 570 pages. Yep. Oh, but this one's not too long of a chapter. Take a shot every time we add a trigger warning. Well, there's been two, so oh, two, two I more. like hydration. Mm -hmm. Just, just start. No, that's what I was doing. It's like, oh, just keep a running count, and then you just, you just chug at the end of the chapter. Pretty much. I, I had like seven chugs. Well, we're gonna be hydrated. Yeah. I'll go and do a water run at some point today and get us more water. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Almost what? at 200 and nothing has happened. But also, so much has happened, my brain can't comprehend. I've never read a book quite like this. Or maybe, do we do whatever the fuck you want as the situation dictates, you know, maybe. Yeah, maybe you just wear, you know, whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah. As if, as if um... Everybody gets to choose how they look, you know? It's... Yeah, and one of the problems with the America's Next Time Model photo shoots is that, or one of the reasons why the models can't use a lot of the photos in their books, one, because they're over the top a lot of times with the background, but a lot of time they're wearing too much makeup for the photo shoots, and they're really, like, Photoshop. So the people at the agencies are like, this doesn't look anything like you. We can't get a good representation of who you are I think this. it's about sharing makeup, Salt Mountain said. I feel like there's certain I feel like when it comes to like at least mascara you probably shouldn't share it because that feels like a way that you could spread eye infections around <laughs> but these are daddy long leg eyelashes that they're using oh yeah um Peyton said long leg lashes would be a great name for a band <laughs> Every, uh, ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the stage long legged long lashes. lashes um you will never read another book like this unless Tyra Lee releases book two and three you know what I honestly <laughs> wish she would Oh, God. <laughs> I honestly wish she would do that. Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> Tyra, release. Where's book? Or it's like in um, America's Next Time Model Cycle 24, where one of the contestants during a photo shoot was like, when's Life Size 2 coming out? And then it came out. Yeah. Look, if Life Size 2 can happen 20 years after the first one, I feel like we can we can uh, hope for uh, a Model Land 2. It's going to happen, and it's going to be like a bat signal that goes off, and you and I are just going to be like... <sighs> It's going to be like 700 pages. Life Size 2 was terrible. Not quite as terrible as this. Well, terrible in a different way. It, it wasn't as entertainingly terrible as this book. I will I will oh, give it that. That's unfortunate. I know they filmed it in Georgia, though. They did. They tried to make it like there was a lot of like 
adult humor in it and I'm like who is this for I mean I get that only adults are watching this because like kids today don't remember life size but like it's so different from the first life size the first life size oh, is gosh. so wholesome uh -huh. everyone starts watching life size wow that's amazing here kids let's watch life size 2 never mind release the Snyder cuts but make it model land sequel oh my gosh I want to I want to know if this is the finished book what got cut we need we need to track down the editor and be like, hey, are you OK? <laughs> Do you need some like some cookies, a some a hug, some that I don't reminds know. me we have brownie or we have like a uh, monster cookie brownies downstairs. I'll have to go and run us and, and get oh. us some for moral support, <laughs> moral support. Yay! welcome back, Natty. Oh, I don't my think... dad. whatever you were doing was probably more uh, conduct conducive than than this. I don't think this saw an editor. <laughs> Probably not. Someone look in the credits. Uh, this is a work of fiction. No, I, <laughs> I never would have guessed. Uh... Editor, we do not speak of Model Land. We do not talk about Fight Club. We do not talk about Bruno. And we do not talk about Model Land. <laughs> oh, I remember someone was... Or it's like one of, or I believe, or it's like one of those stereotypical like hyper masculine people was like, oh, look at Fight Club, and I was like, wasn't that made by a person who was like making fun of toxic masculinity or the something? The manuscript was a thousand pages, so half the book was cut. No. Oh my god. No. You mean Model Land isn't real? Uh. <laughs> one thousand. Oh my gosh. I hope that editor, oh gosh, that editor probably is just like, I was never paid enough for this. <laughs> I hope they got paid by the hour. <laughs> oh my, yeah. Tara, or at first they're like, oh, or who's running this? Tyra Banks. I'm getting paid by the hour. I will log it. You will know. Yep. Fight Club was written by a teenage, oh. Oh. I, uh, I thought that, oh. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh. Because I, I remember reading something about how Fight Club is kind of like poking fun at the individuals that are in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, my friend Maddie says um, there's two kinds of people. People who love Fight Club uh, for good reasons and people who love Fight Club because they think it's not satire. And you never know which one it is. <laughs> like. And what we have is already insane. We. If the editor did get over a hundred thousand dollars, it wasn't enough. Oh gosh, they were like, or if they didn't get a hundred thousand dollars after the taxes were taken out, they weren't paid enough. Oh, her pen name is a masculine name, so she could get it published. Oh, good for her. Yeah, I. Oh right, gosh, I'm trying. All right, a teenage girl wrote it to be. I'd like that makes a lot of sense. Where it's just like toxic masculinity, and they're going up, and it's just like he's so insecure that he's blowing up buildings to try to. Feels some kind of importance. Well, it's like know. how um, it's like how the Matrix was um made by two trans women, but oh, like yeah. there are all these like alpha male toxic masculine guys that are just like taking the like we're, we're red pilled, we're blue pilled, we're in the Matrix, and it's like oh they don't understand anything about this movie. Oh, it's oh. an allegory for breaking out of the gender binary. Oh yeah, and and, and they're like I'm or and. Uh, Keanu Reeves character is, is I'm this person and everyone's like no you're not you're this person it's like no no I I am this person and uh, yeah the makes a lot of sense architecture wasn't enough you'll get the reference later oh no the architecture I'm so confused and scared hi people coming into chat um <laughs> we're talking about allegories and fight club and the matrix I should probably read chapter 17 oh <laughs> I know we're all just like uh, uh. I can make more dinosaurs chapter 17 is called home sour home <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> oh god she can't go home there's still over half the book left She'll be an old person then. Oh. And we wouldn't, who, God forbid, we have that. Oh no, old people. Everyone in the room screams, their faces melting and warping, just like Cookies was. Yep, there you go. Yep, that's a, that's a one. Uh, Piper's skin was so raw, it was transparent. Her blood was visible, pumping wildly through her face. She resembled a skeleton with muscles and veins, with a thin layer of clear plastic keeping it all together. Uh. Oh my god. Dylan's ponytails had completely fallen out and she was cradling them in her arms. 
Her nose had become detached from her face and was sitting on top of the bed of hair. Shiraz's grapefruit-sized eyes bulged and bulged like they were about to pop out of her head. The spot where Ruby had been over Pamelina's smile was now a gaping hole four inches wide <laughs> expressing her brain. Angelica's zip-zap head injury split open wide from the top of her head to the base of her neck when she screamed her vocal when she exposed her vocal cords which lay in spaghetti like tangles at her as her throat vibrated my head hurt so much both sides of angelica cried even zarpesa and chaff looked like mutants their noses falling off and their lips turning into slugs that is 10 sips and we are not even what would be considered a full page in. Uh, uh, I'm too hydrated, Tyra. So much hydration. Um, three monster girls instinctively ran towards the white door marked home. As soon as they went through, huge sighs ensued. I'm beautiful again, one girl said through the door. I'm not melting anymore. <laughs> Another girl. <laughs> <laughs> Last chance. Anyone else want to go through the home door? Uh, Ganero tease. It's dreadful to be hideously fugly, isn't it? Oh, gosh. Chucky's muscles twitch. She couldn't take this. Is this what Model Land is about? Bringing lovely, well, mostly lovely girls up, up here and turning them into ogres? What would be left to become an intoxibella? Suddenly, she sat up straighter. Wait a minute. She turned to Shiraz who sat to her left. It's a trick. Shiraz's lips, which were now also the size of grapefruits, parted. What do you mean? It's a trick, Tookie repeat, repeated. We're going to be okay, I think. Stay in your seat. Tell Dylan and Piper, too. Shiraz looked uncertain, but turned and gave Dylan and Piper Tookie's message. For a moment, Tookie feared she might have been steering them wrong, but she stayed put. It's a trick. It's a trick. It's a trick. Ten more Harry girls ran through the door, marked home. It slammed shut one once more, and the room went dark. More screams filled the air. Oh, dear, ladies, Ganera's voice purred in the blackness. I'm very disappointed. A mere baker's dozen skinless chickens chickened out. I thought I could count on more of you no-sees leaving by now. C'est la vie. This is going to be a lesson to you, ladies. Here is Model Land. We have a golden rule about passed around beautification appar apparatuses. What is it? Tomalini asked. Gennaro said, sighed deeply. The first thing you must know about cosmetics, feeble minded female. <laughs> Forget that everything mommy and daddy ever told you about sharing, unless, of course, you want your face to fall off just like it is now. Shared utensils give you creepy conjunctivitis. I mean, we're on the same page there. Gory gangrene. I don't think it gives you gangrene. Um, bubonic boils. Atrocious abscesses. Styes and staphylococcus. From this moment on, you will have my personal permission to be stingy, selfish wenches when it comes to your men... men Manilage. Got it, no sees? Everyone said yes, and bright searchlights immediately shone in their faces, making everyone cringe. Piper yelped and shielded her face with her hand. Tookie peeked at her reflection. The grotesque effect of the contaminated makeup held mirac had miraculously vanished. Moving on top uh, moving on to phase three, Gennaro crowed. Embellishments. More mannequins appeared. This time, carts full of jewelry that sparkled like raindrops. On clean windows, chunky rose gold necklaces, beaming bangles and bracelets, pairs of enormous platinum hoop earrings that were connected to each other via a rope of platinum and rings. Rings, rings galore! The mannequins, dra mannequins draped a layer upon layer of brilliant adornments onto the girls. Shiraz leaned over in her chair. You so smart, Tookie. You make us stay, and we pass first round. Her other friends grinned gratefully at her as well. You guys would have figured it out on your own, Tookie said bashfully. 
checking her head. Uh, then she looked in her mirror, marveling at the accessories chosen for her. Each bore a name that looked vaguely familiar. Receptacles, Gennaro screamed. Receptacles! Another group of mannequins rolled in a much larger cart full of mannequins. Sorry, it looked, my brain is changing it to man mannequins because that's a, a word, you know. <laughs> um, cart full of every kind of purse imaginable. Studded clutches, hobo chic bags, drawstring styles, quilted ones with sparkling chain straps, antique leather satchels ran over the shoulder treasures. Um, rare over the so shoulder treasures. The mannequins went down the row of girls like a factory assembly line. Placing the purses across the girls' bodies, shoving them into their hands and onto their shoulders, Cookie ended up with a snazzy black nylon backpack, a short-handed boxy purse made of stiff but fine leather, and a dream bag, the very same yellow tote Zarpesa had, the one all the girls at B3 envied. I got a heli, Chas trailed, holding up a monogrammed tote. I got a Zizo. Zarpesa cried happily, holding up a hobo bag that bore a logo of an interlocking X's. Uh, the mannequin scuttled out of the room as fast as they had come in. Almost instantly, the jewelry and bags began to revolt. Chast's tote handles bound her wrists and squeezed. Dylan's earrings turned into two-pound weights, dragging down her earlobes. Ugh. She screamed in pain. Uh, I'm going to count that one. She screamed in pain. The necklace Tookie was wearing started to get warm. The scalding hot, and then it wrapped several times around her neck and squeezed and squeezed. Tookie clutched at her neck, barely able to breathe. A door appeared. A door appeared. I'm get tissue. Hang on. Sorry, guys. All right, no, no sinuses. My <laughs> sinuses are revolting. So I know this reminds me of in Totally Spies when the three main characters got uh, these accessories that would like tighten at certain points. I think one had a scarf, one had uh, something on their her head, and another one had like some another one I can't remember, but that just reminds me of that. I thought the same thing, Natty. Hobo chic. I keep forgetting how anti homeless this book is. Oh god, Tyra was homeless one day that one time, guys and she girls can say and non-binary individuals. She can she can say stuff like that. She can say hobo chic. And I'm noticing every time that's I sarcasm, by the way, in case yeah. anybody was wondering. Yeah. Um, because like I know boho chic is a thing, but hobo chic, yeah. Get ready for that part of Model Land where all the metal stuff is taken out. Oh. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna not ask questions and just keep going. <laughs> My first thought is the thing where the way that they found out if people were the thing or not was if they had like metal teeth thing anyway <laughs> barely able to breathe a door appeared across the room and a lantern swayed back and forth home then it swung open giving way to a lush tropical scenery golden sunlight and the sound of surf hitting the sand 11 girls made a mad dash for the exit ah they all said in chorus as soon as they crossed the threshold the home door closed with a boom with that Necklace unwound from Tookie's neck. So are all these girls just going to rapidly age? Is that what we've established? I think so. Okay. Um, the home door closed with a boom. With that, the necklace unwound from Tookie's neck. All the other accessories fell limply in the girls' laps. Inanimate again. Tookie looked around. Shiraz, Piper, and Dylan were still here huddled under their mannequin tables. Relief. Just then, Gennaro, Nars, entered from a dark space in the room, swinging in his hand the lantern and that had been the light source, beckoning the now-departed girls to the home door. He glared at Tookie and her crew. Figures, you four survived. Then he turned, addressing the winnowed-down group of girls that remained. Fraudulent, phony, forgery, fake. Close your eyes and think about that time... When an item you adored, cherished, took such pride in owning, was taken from you, without your permission, swiped, swindled, snatched, stolen, your world crumbled around you, betrayed, bitten, backstabbed, bereaved. Being the victim of that doesn't feel good, does it, no seas? The girls shook their heads, confusing, uh, con confusedly. 
That's how my cronies feel whenever you purchase or accept a gift of counterfeit court couture creation, Gennaro mm. explained. Oh my god. You may Damn. think you are sporting the latest fashions and fooling your pitifully clueless circle of friends, but you are merely concocting a deceitful world of pseudo-luxury and corrupt make-believe, while the hard-working artisans who dedicate their lives to producing authentic wares are robbed blindly. And who produces these fake wares? Poor, starving children who roam homeless in public squares and live poverty-stricken in rodent-infested shanties. I mean, she got to the important part eventually. She got to the actual corruption eventually. Yeah. It's not... The, the, the first thing she said, though, was the poor designers. <laughs> and also the the kids that are uh, having to do child labor and stuff. But, you know, the, the designers. <laughs> Gennaro stopped right in front of Tookie and whipped the dream bag off her shoulder. Tookie hadn't even realized it was still there. How dare you? I, what do you want them to do? He turned to the group, eyeing the fake bags that rested on their laps and the counterfeit jewels that sparkled at their throats. How dare you all? So the lesson for phase three is what? For Gennaro designer friends, buying of the fake no good... Uh, for Gennaro designer friends, buying of the fake no good, Shiraz offered. Gennaro looked pleased. At least one of you is listening, even if it's a knee-high Lilliputin? That feels like he called her an in-universe slur. Ooh. I mean, he didn't, but he was, like, being, like, racist. Lilla, what? He Shiraz blinked innocently. Oh, excuse me for being prey a politically incorrect. Oh, he did. In-universe, he called her a slur. I'm oh, gonna but... take a sip. <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> I don't even know uh, if that's on the list, but just just drink. Um, um, Gennaro simpered. I believe the acceptable phrase is 5P. Puny, pocket-sized, petite particle of a person. Shiraz looked crushed. Tookie wanted to defend her, but she'd never defended anyone before. She'd never had an opportunity to. And anyway, now wasn't the time. There's always a first time for everything, Tookie. On yep. to phase four, Gennaro trilled. This next part is, heh, piercingly funny. Oh god, it's gonna be piercings. His heel attacked the floor again. A panel in the wall tilted backward and fell to the floor with a loud bang. Gennaro ushered the girls forward into a new space. Tookie did a rough count. Only 70 or so of the recruits were left. As Gennaro walked into the next area, he glanced at the girls over his shoulder. Can any of you dimwit guess what the final phase is? The Bellas just stared at him blankly and sighed. Perry, give me a second. I'm having a mental breakdown. <laughs> oh, I swear. Oh, no. Not quite. I, 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 it's not quite. It's not quite there yet, but I feel like having a breakdown. Oh, I swear the no seas are getting thicker and thicker each year, and I'm not talking about your hips. Do I need to add fat phobia to the list? Do we have it on the list? Well, there's body. There's there's slut shaming, body dysmorphia. I guess it falls. Well, ED. We have ED and body dysmorphia. I guess we can. I guess it goes somewhere in the middle of that. Um, he said, "I'm not talking about your hips." Then eyeing Dylan, he said, "Well, maybe I am." Oh my god! Oh I'm gonna my look at god! It's okay to have hips, everybody. People, individuals have hips naturally. Okay. Oh, Tyra, why? Or, and it's like she had the, or, and like she had the show to be like, oh, I want to choose someone different who goes against the media standards, but why aren't you thin? And it's just like, uh, um. the modeling industry. Here's this if you wanna if you wanna bench with chat. Um, Hi Perry. Perry. Hi Perry. Did you ask Gabe if you can sit by him? You can you can sit by me if you want. There you go. I have a picture that I took of of you reading and she's just like chilling and you're like petting her. I'm like it's the cutest picture. Look. Oh hey. Oh, oh they, they she's can. like are you okay? <laughs> you're gonna be okay. <laughs> Dinosaur. Oh she likes it. Oh. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh. Uh, Dylan bit her lip and balled her fist. Yeah, hit him, Dylan. The final phase is the actual defali, the 
Flata de Moda. I'm not saying this right, but who cares? Gennaro tr trilled. He eyed Kamalini. The Tamasha. The fashion show. And ladies, you'll love this. I'm okay too. Thank you for checking. I'm all right. Oh, Perry um, knows they're on camera. Yeah, she is. She is quite the uh, the attention seeker. I know you're checking to make sure we're okay. I know. You're like, I'm just here because I know you need an emotional support cat to pet, and I like pets, so it works out for everybody. She's like, I'm going back to Gabe. I like Gabe better. Um. I I didn't. <laughs> If Sorry. she doesn't bother you, you can push her down. Oh, no, it's all good. I was just pretending. Or she, like, put her face next to mine. I was just like, ow. Oh. But I didn't, like, bite her ear or anything. No, She's no. fine. I know you wouldn't just bite the cat, but it's fine. I was like, please don't let her bother you. It's all good. Um, um, ladies, you'll love this. It will allow me to drill into you all need here at Model Land. One by one, ten exits marked home lit up around the perimeter of the space. The ceiling opened, revealing a gigantic, loud, mechanical contraption. Tookie realized it was a giant screwing machine with an enormous needle that was as long as her dining room table in Peppertown. Yeah, thank you. I do need the pets. Slowly, the machine descended upon the girls, needle slamming up and down. Have we all had our ears pierced, ladies? Gennaro asked. Most of the girls... Don't... Okay, don't, don't sit on the... If, if you see messages in chat, it's Perry. She's doing Perry things. Um, um, have we all had our ears pierced, ladies? Gennaro asked. Most of the girls nodded shakily. Well, then this should be a piece of cake, Gennaro shrieked. And then he was gone. This looks like trouble, Shiraz whispered. Some girls scuttled away. Some dropped to the floor and covered their ears. But Tookie had learned by now that running was futile, so she remained completely still. Her three friends copied her. Together they were they watched as the needle drew closer and closer. Chast was also standing still. Slowly the needle bore down on her head. Tip pierced her skull and continued all the way through her body to the ground oh. where the needle retracted. Chast was gone. The machine, that's a body horror in case anybody's keeping track. The machine quickly sought out the next girl, then the next, puncturing them into the unknown. Tookie recognized one of them as Desperata, the sobbing girl she had seen in Ladorno Square at T Dot. The needle punctured Desperata's head and she howled, but Tookie couldn't tell if it was from physical or emotional pain. I, yeah. <laughs> This does feel like emotional pain. The home doors glowed even brighter than before. Angelica from I Thieland, uh spun and dodged the needle, then scurried to the door, and with that she was gone. A few more girls avoided the needle's wrath and followed her through one of the home doors. Within seconds, the needle loomed just inches away from Tookie. Her heart thudded as the tip jabbed close to her skin, then closer closer until the tip was aimed straight at her head run tookie you can run she waited for a sharp pain the moment the tip of the needle hit her skull she suddenly felt like a million tiny appendages were tickling her skin her body tilted upside down and she felt her shirt cargo pants and underwear slip off those are children uh, tyra. tyra why Four fingers gently Sorry, pulled at her limbs and clothed her body the space she was in was incredibly dark, and Tookie rubbed her hands on the mystery fabrics that now touched her skin. They had dips and folds and tucks and felt extremely luxe. The, the, enclosed turn, the enclosure turned her upright and deposited her into a soundless room. Floating in the air, bisque-colored orbs globed, uh, glowed like full moon. Slowly, faces appeared in the orbs. Tookie recognized one of the faces as Kamalini's. Her head Bengor still strapped firmly on her head. Well, at least she didn't... Uh, uh, she, she, Tyra didn't make her uh, remove the head covering. That's at least something. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, that would be a different... Thank, that thank would be you. a new kind of offensive. Thank you, Tyra. Um, Zarpace's face appeared in another orb, then chast. By the startled way the girls were looking at her, Tookie realized that she must be inside an orb, too. 
Music thumped in the distance as Tookie floated behind the other girls through the entryway. It grew louder and louder, making her insides vibrate. It was familiar sort of music, kind of like the type of music one would hear at a fashion show, Tookie thought. <gasps> More orbs bearing girls' faces floated behind her. Shiraz, then Dylan, then a dirty blonde curly-haired girl she hadn't seen until now, and then Piper. You made it, Tookie cried. But her friends didn't appear to hear her. These orbs must be soundproof. A door appeared ahead of it, pulsed to the beat of music. Do, do, do. <laughs> As if the fashion show behind the door wanted to burst through it. I'm going to be in a fashion show? Seriously? That's the thing that's crazy to you right now? <laughs> she feared falling on her face. She feared Gennaro laughing at her. But more than anything, she was almost excited. Forget a girls weren't in fashion shows. Only remember a girl's were. I'm up to like 20 sips, I think. I think uh, I'm up to like 18 uh, sips. Oh gosh, I need to take two more, but Perry's just so cute. It's okay. We can we can uh, re uh, convalesce at the end of the chapter. I don't think that's the right way of using that word, but anyway. Tookie's orb approached the door, which began to glow at a bright white. A bright white. One by one, letters appeared. T H I S. It's it's down the page. That's why I'm, it's, it's just, it's one long thing down the page, like most of the pages. T-H-I-S-W-A-Y-H-O-M-E. What's that smell? This way home! <laughs> uh, wait, I got this. Uh... What? Let me get a pad, and pa a pad of paper. Tyra, hang on. What? Tookie tried to pedal? Her or backward, but it didn't work. Up ahead, the girls' had heads floated through the home door first. Uh, first Sarpesa, then Shas. Good, they're gone, yes. But next to approach the home door was Shiraz. No, Tookie cried, but her protests were futile. Though the door to Shiraz's floating head, through the door Shiraz's floating head went. Then Dylan's head, then Piper's head, then Kamalini's. No, Tookie screamed, please don't leave me here alone. But to her horror, her own bubble was floating towards the home door. Two, Tookie summoned all her might and turned herself around, but the bubble had a mind of its own. She closed her eyes and tried to hold on to all the good things that had happened to her on her journey here. She recalled Dylan's sassy laugh, Shiraz's spunky, broken English, Piper's intelligence and dry wit, then Yen, or, I'm sorry, Jen Jen, then Jen Jen's contagious giggle, and muttering kindness, and nurturing kindness. I was like, muttering kindness. And finally, as she passed through the home door, Tookie bid a silent goodbye to Monoland, <gasps> which she definitely didn't do because we're only on page 200. Oh my Can you believe gosh. that was only 10 pages? Oh my gosh. Guys, Perry is literally using the keyboard oh. as a headrest. It's Perry. Oh, oh, Perry. Perry. Perry, how could you? <laughs> Perry's a platypus. Agent P. I call her Perry the Catapus. Ah, ha, ha. Agent P. She's named uh, per Perry because it's short for Perido because her eyes are so green. But we we call uh, her. We I've always called her Perry, and so the name just kind of stuck. Um, I made another dinosaur. Is this one CL? Yes, but I mean, or we well, need to I get mate. like a basket for the dinosaurs. <laughs> just a little conga line. It's all good. Mm. Or right, CL needs to be like the grandest one of all. I'm gonna just gonna see how many pages there are here. Uh, maybe that's Zarpesa. We have a Zarpesa yet? Not yet. Okay. Now we do. Zarpesa. What do we think of that one? Is Perry trying to talk to us? She's trying to use um the uh, this as a pillow, and her fur is now all over everything. She's not a long haired cat, but she sheds like a long haired cat. Falsely upping the page count with that THB whatever. Yes. He was aiming for modern Alice in Wonderland. And look at what we got. <laughs> okay, the next uh, chapter is 15 pages, so. Okay. Just trying to see what I missed in chat. Um, years to get to any point. How is this class not done yet? I don't know. <laughs> we have went through three chapters and we're still in the same scene. I cannot believe this. It's at the cross section of the Venn diagram of ED, body dysmorphia, and slut shaming. Ah, yes, the holy trinity of oh, Monoland. Oh, gosh. Um, 
deliberately causes physical pain, failing to actually demonstrate anything. And that's what you should, and that's why you should wash your teeth. <laughs> yeah. Uh. It's like the whole class. Tyra's trying to change model in by doing the exact same thing. Uh, drill into them. Did I hear that right? You did. I don't <laughs> like the look on a lot of a lot of piercings, which is only why I only have my ears pierced the, the one time. I've had my ears pierced three times because I'm very allergic to nickel, and the first two times they closed up. Oh. This is the third attempt. They're in there. Um, but I took these earrings out for, like, a couple of days, and they, like, almost closed up. And I was like, oh, time to put earrings back in. Um, I had my nose pierced in that close up. I need to redo it. That just reminds me of the scene in Parent Trap where it's like, here, I'll just, here, let me just heat up this rod and, ah, ha, ah, ah. ha. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All the screaming. I think this one hurt the most just because there's a lot of cartilage to go through there. Ooh. Um, while we're on the subject of body horror. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Taking a sip. Oh, right. I have to take all my water sips. Yeah, they like 20 time. sip. I'm just going to chug. Oh, my gosh. I'm like almost halfway through this. Me too. And we've only gone through what? Three chapters. Three chapters. <laughs> okay, that's five. Give me a second. <laughs> now, now for every time we do it, we have to just narrow it down to like three things that we can. And it's like no more body horror. They won't get their ears pierced. They'll end up getting skewered. Yep, I remember correctly. Darth Sidious said. Remember, Tyra's aiming for whimsy with this book. Yes, whimsy, whimsical. Mm, this is for young girls. I was thinking about this mid chapter. There is somewhere. There's a girl. There's probably a few girls who are young, like twelve who read this and think this is a, a great book because they're 12. And when I was 12, I thought every book was great. So they're going to grow up and be nostalgic for this and just be like, oh my God. Oh God. No, they're going to find, or it's going to be a bunch of uh, 12 to 15 year old girls. And they're going to find this stream and be like, how dare you say disparaging things about Look, the love of my life do, model? We're land. trying to protect you. If you get enjoyment <laughs> out of this book, I'm truly glad. I just have some concerns and questions. Um, Tyra, why the fuck are you like this? <laughs> These girls are 15. Oh, I assume that's because of the clothes. Yeah. yeah. It made me very uncomfortable. And someone didn't know that they were 15. It's like, yeah, they're 15. Somehow this book is not a horror novel. What the fuck, Tyra? I didn't know these were children. These are actual children. I believe they're... Yeah, they're 15. Um... <sighs> No shit, Chucky. You lived in Model Land. What other kind of music would there be? <laughs> Bella Donna was singing earlier, so like, could be anything. I mean, we get. I guess all bets are off here in Model Land. Um, trying to falsely upping the page count. I don't think that was the issue. I don't think she had any issue with not enough pages oh, being in there. I buy the Alice in Wonderland with all the weird creatures, but not the body horror. Yeah. I was using some heavy drugs while writing this, right? <laughs> right? She apparently spent five years, uh, 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 allegedly. She says in the back of the book she spent five years uh, conceiving of this premise. Yeah, Don't man. get water poisoning from Model Land. We won't, Gabe, too. <laughs> uh, we won't. Yeah, Tyra invested five years in conceiving and writing Model Land, her first book of fiction. I never would have guessed this is her first book of fiction. Yeah, well, she probably wrote a lot of autobiographies, maybe, after America's Next Model. She's like, I'm popular. Everyone must know my story. Naomi Campbell was mean to me. You're never going to hear me uh, say that I'm the best writer in the world, but oh my god. <laughs> Just, if you think that you cannot write a book and you want to, you can. You can, because this got published. Read this book. I love looking back on books I read when I was younger. In retrospect, were absolutely awful. Well, a lot of the ones that I read were crazy. Crazy, like reading back Goosebumps books and being like, "Oh my god, <laughs> so weird," uh, and weirdly like erotic undertones of some of them, and you're just oh. like, "Arl Stein, why?" <laughs> oh gosh, Arl Stein. We've had this conversation before, but I read this one where a guy gets hit in the head with an iPhone and gets iPhone powers. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> hilarious. You should have spent another five years after finishing it considering if she should publish it. Oh. Her first and only book of fiction. Uh, yeah, you know they say you do your work and then like you kind of leave it and come back to it and see if like it's it's really good or if you know you just are caught up in the moment of writing or whatever. Yeah. 
yeah, she probably just wrote it all down and was like, oh, I have another idea and wrote that all down and just didn't look at it again. Hi, Perry. She's like, is everybody okay? I've only taken, I think, 10 of my sips. But, oh, gosh. You know, maybe I took 15. <laughs> maybe. I'm doing my best to, to play fair. Uh, she's, <laughs> Avery's doing her best to stick to the, the made up rules that we made at the beginning. Nothing matters. This is model land. This holds so much water. I'm not sure how many ounces, but this thing holds so much water at this. I've been using it ever since they sent it to me. And I'm like, it's like my water is like here. Why? <laughs> my And my water is here halfway through. I'll go do a water run. <laughs> okay, I will. Sorry, I fell asleep. Uh... <laughs> oh, this book, it, it uh... drains me. But I'm going to. I Hi, know, Harry. I here. thought you left the room. She comes. She tends to come and go. She makes the rules. She's so cute. Hi, Hi Harry. Okay, okay. You want to let's, let's sit. Let's not knock anything <laughs> over. Let's just sit. Okay, and okay. <laughs> Chapter eighteen. La lumière. Tookie's eyes were shut tight. A stiff breeze made. Her face tingled. It smelled familiar, sort of like tangerines. No, blood oranges. Tookie opened her eyes. She was wearing exactly what all the other girls in the O Plaza had on, except it was two-tone green. Her head felt foggy. I don't remember how I got into these clothes. Where are Piper, Shiraz, and Dylan? Am I sleepwalking? Was thy high boot camp just a nightmare? Or, oh no, am I still in boot camp? Way off in the distance, the M building stood proud and tall. In front of her was a mishmash of cube-like houses connected by silver, silvers of jade and turquoise, op by silvers, slivers of jade and turquoise opaque stones. Huge faces carved into the hedges decorated the grounds. Vines and flowers made up the faces, eye, the faces, eyes, and hair. One of the flower eyes opened and stared straight at her, admiring the D. Are you? A voice asked. Tookie spun around. Children, Jen, children, 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 children. Jen Jen scooped her into a huge bear hug. Then over Jen Jen's shoulder, Tookie saw Shiraz, Dylan, and Piper walking toward her in slow motion, all wearing the same outfit as she was. They're walking in slow-mo. It is a dream. Wake up, Tookie. More girls appeared behind. Cam Camelina, Desperada, and Chastin Zarpesa. Yuck, no, it's definitely a nightmare. You you made it, girl! Dylan cried, running toward Tookie. Shiraz and Piper barrowed toward her, too, and the girls crashed together in a sloppy, love-filled reunion hug. Then Tookie looked at Jen Jen. Is Thigh High Boot Camp really over? Tookie asked. Jen Jen nodded, and the girls erupted into hugs and applause. But there was no fashion show, Piper stated, interrupting their celebration. Guru Ganera stated, rather demonically, that the whole THBC process would culminate in one big fashion extravaganza. You mean you didn't do the fashion show ending, Jen Jen frowned? She looked worried. The Belladonna is going to be so upset. Ganera has been excluding the fashion show part of boot camp for the past two years. Word is, he doesn't want any fashion shows happening before the new Bellas get their walking lessons from him. It's like he wants to take full credit for any walks. She rolled her eyes. I'm really sorry you had to experience such heck without getting a payoff of heaven. But you made it. I hope your time here is worth the agony agony you just experienced. Oh, it was nothing. My hairdresser's personal trainer's manicurist nephew has a friend who went through it before. And I already knew everything that was going to happen, Zarpesa said smugly. Dylan rolled her eyes. So how many made it? Kamalina asked. 54, Jen Jen said. Shiraz cocked her head. Those who know, who didn't make it, where did they go? They're gone forever. Never to return. Tookie and her friends looked at each other with wide eyes. They'd buckled under the test they would have been gone to. Then Jen Jen turned and faced the bizarre building. So guys, this is the D. Come, I'll get you settled. Yeah, they are spelling out Monoland. I don't like that they're calling it the D. <laughs> Dylan planted her feet. Honey child, I must have been invaded by bacteria, sliced and diced by earrings, stabbed by a monster needle, and had my head imprisoned inside a bubble. I'm not going in there until I know what whacked out play what whack what that whacked out place is. Jen Jen stepped 
upon, stepped onto the porch. It's where you're going to be living while you're here. She motioned for the surviving six members of her original dozen to follow her into the deep. Sun streamed through high windows into a vast living room with couches, tables, and pillows. It was decorated in a blend style, gothic, mid-century modern art deco with a hint of laboratory in some strange way. The place smelled, as most places in Model Land seem to, of blood oranges. Model Land is now your home, 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 Jen Jen trilled, beaming with pride. This is the uncommon room where you'll hang out. I get it, Tookie announced. The D stands for dorms. Exactly, wow. Jen Jen said. Six stoic looking youngish mannequins entered the room and stood next to Jen Jen, holding stacks of what looked like scarves draped over one arm. Centura, Zarpesa yelled. I'd know that shade of yellow anywhere. Same color as the dress you wore here, added Chath. What a coincidence. Zarpesa's right. These are Centuras, Zen Zen said. The Centuras are very, very special. The more you wear them, the stronger your pow, pow, powers become. Jen Jen accented the pows with a pointed finger like she was shooting a pistol. Pew, uh, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I should use that in Im imagery on stream. But anyway. <laughs> the, the manic I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. Wait, is that... <laughs> or like ma like making a, like a like a gun motion with your finger that might Oh, get like I just think trouble. about like water guns with the when people oh. are like pew, 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 pew. Like, Oh, okay. I I don't know. I'm just afraid someone's gonna come in and they'll be like, cancel Gabe immediately. You're okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that I know that feeling, but you're okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how far I can go with this. <gasps> that screen goes black. The, the minicants talked the stacks of centuras into the air. Miraculously, the strips of fabric circled above the girls in a brilliant air show. Some flew in formation. Beyonce. Others did solo kamikazes into the crowd. The girls ooed and aahed at the performance, which ended with each centura nodes diving into the group, finding its recipient, and wrapping itself two times around the girl's waist. Whap! One wrapped around Zarpesser. Zing! One circled Shiraz, and finally a centura even cinched Tookie's waist. She stared at it, barely believing her eyes. Is this really mine? Listen up, girls. Keep tabs on these magic golden cummerbunds. Benedict Cumberbund is here? I was going to say, that sounds like <laughs> when we were all making fun of Benedict Cumberbatch's name. <laughs> we love you, Benedict Cumberbatch. Please sponsor our stream. Please sponsor our stream. <laughs> this stream is sponsored by Benedict Cumberbatch. Just the person. <laughs> just Benedict. He's just sitting at home being like, what? <laughs> <clears throat> You might have innate powers, but this is the only thing that can make the Bella magic happen. She shook her head. You all should see some of my photo shoots when I didn't have this darn thing on. Pitiful. The girls gingerly touched their centuras. Tookie held the ends of hers like they were the wings of a wounded bird. Zarpesa and Chas scooted to a mirror at the far side of the space to admire themselves. Tookie could see them yanking their centuras tightly, trying to find the most flattering spots on their hips for the sashes to rest. Jen Jen clapped. Okay, girls, go up to the second level and look at your, for your names. The girls climbed the long suspended staircase that only had steps, no risers, no banister. And it floated in midair, down a long wide hall with immense fabric flowers and plants growing out oh, no. of the artwork where... Just, no, not you. Not oh, you. Okay. okay. Continue. I just saw something in chat and I was like, oh god, it's all coming together. Oh no. Something. Oh gosh. I... Slowly, the names of the girls who should occupy each room appeared on the door graffiti style, as though an invisible hand was doing the writing. Everyone ran to look at their for their names. Piper, you're here, Tookie called, pointing to a door to her right and then waiting at the door for to write the next name. Dylan, you're with her. Tookie, you're 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 here, Shiraz beckoned. Tookie from down the hall, and K-A-M-A-L, Kamalina, that is me. Kamalina scooted to the entrance of the room. Next one is... Shiraz peered closely at the door, her lips spread into a smile. Shiraz, Shiraz! Tookie and Shiraz ran through the purple door and gas. The room was a large, bright square lit by floor-to-ceiling windows, but there was nothing in the room save for four square burlap bags on the floor. Kamalina clutched her head bangor. We have to sleep on the floor? I guess we can make it make do. Shiraz walked toward a window and suddenly there was a loud clunk and she stopped short, as though she knocked into something. She lost her footing and fell forward. Instead of crashing on the floor, she stopped at something as something invisible broke her fall. Huh? Tookie whispered. 
She scuttled over to Shiraz to see what was there. It seemed like a cushion of air was now suspending Shiraz three feet above the floor. Shiraz grinned. It's soft. Feels like a bed, Tookie finished. The outline of a bed materialized before their eyes. A cushy white comforter and four fluffy pillows rested atop the mattress. It's fancy. Way better than Candel Abricot, Shiraz joyfully exclaimed, looking at the bed forming around her. Then the sound of a pencil scratching against paper filled the room. Black lines tra traversed the white comforter, slowly forming a picture. Shiraz jumped off the bed to give it a closer look. In no time, the lines formed a large eye, then a nose, then another eye, and a pair of lips, and finally abstract scribble made luxurious black hair flow from the head. When miniature dots began to cover the face, Shiraz gasped. It's me, Tookie and Kamalina looked at each other excitedly. Where's my bed? They said at the exact same time. Jinx, Kamalina teased, bumping Tookie's hip. Tookie smiled so hard her cheeks hurt. No one had ever jinxed her before. Tookie walked to the left of Shiraz's bed. Kamalini strode right. At almost the same time, their knees bumped into an invisible bedpost. They both allowed themselves to fall forward. Delicious, Kamalini exclaimed, like falling into a cloud of whipped cream. <laughs> No, not the whipped cream. Oh, but she's not eating it, but it's like she fell into a cloud of whipped cream. I'm gonna count it, I think. Uh, okay. Oh, Number one. Cookie said, sure enough, outlines of two beds quickly formed. Moments later, the pencil scratching noise rang out. A drawing of Tookie appeared on the white comforter. The likeness was a bit goofier than she looked in real life. Her mouth exaggeratedly big, her ears sticking out 20 degrees more than they truly did. But the comforter did draw one of Tookie's eyes darker than the other. For a brief moment, Tookie took in the eyes of the girls in the room and longed for a set of matching irises. Two. Yep. Kamalini's comforter now depicted a caricature of her too, but Kamalini seemed almost saddened by the image, touching her head banger and singing into the mattress. Don't you like it? Tookie asked, peering at her. Will I? Kamalini shook her head. I love it, really. It is just, I'm nervous about being here. I didn't really try as hard as all the girls in my country did. I was showering and this thing, she pointed out her smiles, just popped out. So here I am. You don't think you deserve to be here? Tookie could hardly believe Kamalini was saying such a thing. With her big, soulful eyes and her flawless brown skin, she was one of the most beautiful girls here. I feel like this might be a self-insert of a model named Anchel from Cycle 7 America's Next Top Model, who was probably the most gorgeous model ever, but had very bad um, self-image issues. I can't imagine why when Tyra's so accepting of all body types. Exactly. And, and then there was a point where everyone was talking about all the food that she was eating and... Uh, and they're like, your confidence is running low. And she's like, yeah, because I don't feel pretty here. Yeah. Kamalini shrugged. My parents were so happy, though, but they are worried about my addiction to the drugs. Shiraz jumped in. No, not drugs, Kamalini said. The whiskey? Shiraz guessed again. I don't judge you. I just want to help. No, not alcohol either. Worse, this. She sh held up her head being, or they didn't want me to bring it. I smuggled it in. Oh, whoops. I accidentally ripped the page. Oh no! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, the perfect book. I'm, I'm sorry. Kidding. I'm kidding. It, that's totally a joke. <laughs> oh no! You're gonna lose a dollar when you resell it for two dollars. I'm not gonna resell it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have it like laminate. No, I'm just, I'm just gonna put it on a shelf and be like, yes, we did read. Model <laughs> Land. We we read. Mo we survived Model Land. Sure, I squinted. You're addicted to the music. Kamalini nodded. My father made it for me. He is dean of my country's most prestigious university and an inventor. My mother is a Chakrawood actress and director, a rarity. I started using it after something happened. She lowered her eyes. It eases the pain, helps me forget. It's hard for me to be without it. I get withdrawal symptoms, she sighed. What does she think it does? Music. Okay. Because it generates music into her head and I... Okay. Oh gosh, Dar Darcidius, can you or uh, yes. can you put some hints in there? Some like real like, or I can't remember the word besides hints. Some are to make it be like, oh no, this is about to happen. Yeah, chakra wood, like Bollywood, because it's not too on the nose. Oh gosh. My father even made this one waterproof so I can wear it while swimming and in the shower. I had it on when the smize contraption came out of the shower head. 
The girls at school say that I think I'm the most beautiful girl in Chakra and that my parents purchased the smize on the black market, but it's the farthest thing from the truth. Can I listen? Tookie asked hesitantly, almost certain Kamalina would say no. Kamalini looked into Tookie's eyes and then nodded and placed the head bangor on Tookie's head. Tookie felt a rush as the music hit her brainwaves, the most crystal clear jangling tune with sitars, a high-pitched singer, a tabla drum, and a she she shenhai shen shen shenai s h e h n a i shenai flute filled her ears. She stood, paced around the room, and listened to the words. The song is about a forbidden love, right? She asked. Kamalini's eyes lit up. Yes, it is my mom singing. Another rarity. She acts, she directs her own films, and she sings her own songs. Most of our actresses lip sync. My mom's latest song is a hit in Chakra. Way to drag Bollywood actresses. <laughs> no one else can do what she does. I wonder if this is, or, or I'm just like, is this a self-insert of Tyra's mom because her mom was a, a very well-known photographer or something? I don't know. Maybe. Or she's like, uh, the Della Crams aren't like my mom, but the best mom in the book, that's my, my mom. I don't know. My mom's latest song is a hit. Every language are a big dance number in her next movie. But wait a second, you know my language? Every language she knows, Shiraz called matter-of-factly from across the room as she traced the lines of her face on her comforter. Magical, Tookie is. Yeah, right, Tookie thought. Ha, huh, did someone say magical? A voice rang through the room. That sounds, or uh, that sounds like my cue. Zarpasa stood in the doorway, a disingenuous smile on her face. Well, a room for four. I kind of figured we have our own room, but I guess I gotta live with us. No, Tookie thought. Please don't make her our roommate. But when Tookie looked at the purple door again, Zarpasa's name had appeared. No one spoke as she pranced across the room and plopped down on Tookie's bed. A goodness. She said, running her hands over the outline of Tookie's face on the governor. This reminds me of my face after the TH Bissam makeup attack. Oh, she growled monster like and then slapped the drawing of Tookie's cheek. Give her Ganero, you and there? Suddenly, the, the Tookie's drawing vanished in a new face form, Zarpesa's. Now, thus is more like it. Zarpesa gazed at her caricature, which accented her dramatic eyebrows, full lips, long, bone straight hair. She grabbed the fabric of the comforter and ran it between her fingers. Mm, 2,500 thread count. My mother's son's cousin's mentor is the manufacturer of these linens. You are, you all are going to slip like princesses in this. I've got them on my bed at home. Don't I, too. She whipped around and stared at Tookie, challenging her to say something. Tookie stared at the marble floor. It is Tookie. Or, oh, wait, oh. Oh, Chi Chi. Oh. It is Tookie, Kamalina corrected Zarpesa. Whatever, Zarpesa said loftily. Head, bang head hanging, Tookie walked through the room, trying to feel for another bed. Finally, in the darkest corner of the room, she hit an invisible post. When the outline of the bed formed, it was smaller than the others, and the sheets were the teeniest bit scratchy. This bed's fine, she told herself. The pencil lead sounds kicked in, and soon Tookie's image was staring back at her. So, what do you think of your room? Oh, sorry. I thought that was Zarpesa. Never mind. So what do you think of your room, Jen Jen? Said, walking in. Incredible, right? Listen, she went on. You can only keep two things from home. The clothes you wore here are in those burlap sacks. Make your choices by tomorrow. Then she stepped back into the hall. And oh, one more thing. We will... We tell time by color, not by number. Look for the clocks around the land. You'll get the hang of them soon. Of course they do. As soon as Jen Jen departed, four nightstands appeared. Resting on them were self-elaborate cotton nightgowns and model and monogram toiletry bags. A tag on the gown read, Fashion, fashion especially for you, based on the calculations from your THBC measurement sessions. The girls began removing their uniforms. Nope, 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 They changed clothes. All right. And it had an attached cape that hit halfway down her thighs. It fit around her shoulders, waist, and arms instead of gaping and pulling and pinching like all miracles hand me up. She pushed her feet into the model hand slipper booties, happy they didn't cramp her toes. Only two things from home, Zarpissa said, funny. That sucks. But for Tookie, it wasn't a hard choice at all. She reached for her burlap sack, item number one, T-mail jail, which she pulled through from her cargo pants pocket and stashed in the top drawer of her nightstand. Next to her, she noticed Shiraz stuffing a stiff piece of paper into her own drawer. Tookie knew that her item number two was to be. 
She reached into a smaller pocket of her cargo pants and closed her fingers around a round dental bu dented button. Tookie. Just touching it made her feel better. She removed it from her pocket and held it in her palm. What's that bit up thing? Tookie's head shot up. Zarpessa was staring at her. Tookie quickly closed her fist. What was I thinking? I can't have this pin in plain sight. Not in front of Theophilios' girlfriend. Tookie knew a bu the button was damaged and not easily recognizable, but she feared Zarpessa would be able to tell it was tell what it was. It's a a. She stammered. Huh? It's a what? Zarpessa made a face. Frantic, Tookie skidded around the room looking for something to cover up the pen. Everyone stared at her, even Shraz and Kamalini. Then Tookie turned to the hallway. Yes, she snagged a large thorny flower with long streamers and pointy tendrils from one of the art pieces and nervously fashioned the flower into an oversized corsage. She, which she pinned over the button. The brooch was nearly the size of her head and looked as though it might lash out and bite off someone's arm, but it covered up her secret Theophilus treasure. As soon as Tookie returned to the bedroom, she announced or an announcement blared over a hidden loudspeaker. All Bellas must retire to their beds and rest up for the first day of classes tomorrow. It is now time for the Lumiel. Snap. The overhead bulbs went dark. The faint light from the crescent moon still shone through the window. Tookie fell into her small scratchy bed. She felt it throb and she felt a throb in her lower back, a kind of ache she never felt before. The dull pain traveled to her hips. She was so exhausted from the day, the tiniest muscles, even the ones around her eyes, ached. The room filled with soft sounds of everyone pulling back their covers and slipping under the sheets. Good night, Shiraz and Kamalini said sweetly. Zarpessa said nothing. Silence filled the room, and Tookie's mind started to wander and drift. Just as she was about to sink into a sleep, a light popped on. What's that? Shiraz sat straight up in bed. A spotlight shone on Zarpessa's face. Whenever Zarpessa moved, the light moved with her. Did the overpass? Zarpessa screamed, clearly half asleep. Tookie stifled a laugh. Maybe she this is some kind of punishment. But then Zar Zarpessa rubbed her eyes, seeming to awaken. She suddenly looked ecstatic. Oh my god, it's my Lumiara. Lumiere? Shiraz repeated. Zarpessa tilted her chin toward the light as though it were a sun lamp. The Lumiere is a special light that shines on Bella's at night. It's whatever their most flattering light is. Candlelight, sunlight, whatever. And look, mine is a spotlight. It means I'm going to uh, be a superstar in Tata Bala. The power, power powers are right around the corner. I'm going to be a quadruple seven, bigger than the elf. Suddenly, a warm reddish light snapped on over Kamalini's bed. Kamalini let out an irritated shriek and pulled the covers over her head. We cannot sleep with the lights on, she wailed. We need darkness. But Kamalini's... But come on, Lena, Zarpessa said in a patronizing voice. It's an honor. The Lumiara, the Lumiara, is supposed to give you all kinds of restorative gifts throughout the night. Plus, it helps keep your skin fresh and dewy. And so does sleep, Kamalini protested. Down the hall and all the other rooms, other girls were calling out as well. It's so bright. Mine glow sticks. Are we really supposed to sleep with these on us all night? Tookie waited for her own light to shine, but the space above her bed remained dark. Then she cast her eyes to the right. There was another dark bed in the room, Shiraz's. Shiraz's bed creaked. She stood up on the mattress and inspected the ceiling. Is Lumiere, Lumiere supposed to happen to every girl here? Every, every model, <laughs> Zarpessa corrected her. Shiraz glared at her. I model. I'm just as beautiful as you. Maybe my light's broken. It's... Excuse me. It's not a matter of if it's broken on it being broken or not. Zarpessa settled onto her pillow like a princess, fanning her hair around her. It's more about the quality of the girl in the bed. Maybe some of you don't belong here. Maybe some of you are here for other reasons. Oh my, I've sacrificed so much beauty while speaking to you all. Good night. In the dim lumiere, Tookie could see Shiraz opening her mouth. A small moan escaped it. Shiraz stared across the room to Tookie's dark bed and met her eyes. The sacrifices. That's ridiculous. Zarpessa is just trying to scare us. It's just a dumb rumor, Tookie thought. But when she closed her eyes again, she wasn't sure. Darkness surrounded her. Cold marble pressed on the soles of her bare feet. A draft cut through her bedclothes and made her body shudder in one hard, painful wave. A faucet dripped close by. Papers rustled. Over her head, she could hear tiny footsteps. Mice? She blinked hard, but her eyes couldn't pull in more light. Where am I? Was it all a dream? Am I back home in Peppertown? 
Tookie smiled a small win- spied a small window over her head. The tips of the M building glowed not too far away. She was still here at Model Land, but she'd sleepwalked. This definitely isn't the D. Tookie found a wall and felt her way around. Slowly, she rounded a dark corner and saw a few flickering candles through the opening. She hoped it was a passage that led back to the D. She had to get back to her bed. The model and staff and security probably didn't like night wanderers. She approached the door carefully and put her hand on the knob. Suddenly, a sharp sound made her stop. Whack, whack, more whacks came, followed by whimpers and the muddy sound of breathy, unintelligible words. Heart pounding, Tookie poked her head around the doorframe. Inside was a cinder block room that resembled a jail cell. A figure was on its knees, rocking back and forth, mumbling, It's my fault, it's my fault, it's my fault, over and over and over. The person held a wooden plank in hand, and their back was bruised and bloody. Uh Uh-oh. The only item in the room was a picture pinned on the wall. Tookie squinted at it, recognizing the three pillars immediately. The obscure obelisk, the bizarre structures that had arisen in Ladorno seemingly overnight. More champs and deeper moans from the figure. The deranged person raised the plank once more. No, Tookie said silently. What could, who, who could do such a thing to themselves? Whack. A gash in yes. the figure's back. Self-harm trigger warning there, reminding in chat. Oh, gosh. A gash in the figure's back open and Tookie... Oh, ugh. Took it, and Sorry, Tookie... Oh, no. You, you like, censored the next you worry. Oh, good. And still Tookie stood paralyzed at the door. Whack. Mm-hmm. What were once pinpricks of red oozed red body juices from deeper cuts and gashes. Then the figure reached up to the obscure obelisk, its hand flailing as if the figure was blind and elderly and desperately trying to connect with an unseen face. Hands clawed at the photo, and the figure started to beat its forehead against oh. it. Then came a wail, so deep, so girdle, so agony. Ah, sorry, sorry, so, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Tookie gasped, never having heard such a horrible sound. The figure in the room stiffened at the noise and raised its head. And suddenly, Tookie caught sight of who it was. It was a face she and all the world knew very, very well. CL. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Um, so, Chad has decided... I, I asked Chad if I should sit here while it's your turn to read while we're listening and start designing some of this Model Land merch that we keep talking about. Oh, yeah. So, I was getting... I was finding fonts for that. Um, and the pretty fonts were distracting me from the horror. I don't know how many I'm supposed to take a sip. I feel like I want to go down and get uh, monster cookie brownies just because we need moral support <laughs> at this point. Oh, gosh. We, we've only read four chapters, and we're like, uh Not just self-harm, but, like, self-flagulation. Self-harm is punishment. For children, yeah. This is a children's book. And and we're supposed to be... I don't, I don't know. It's just... Uh... Uh... I see people like in the I see people like popping in the chat and then popping back out and I'm like yeah save yourself <laughs> get out of here while you Run. can or you can or what you can what uh, what people who are popping in and out can do they can jump in turn it on mute and give Avery the money no I watching. would pay money for people not to have the trauma <laughs> of this book oh gosh ugh <sighs> uh. Live. Live. Yes. Live. I, we have I, 13 concurrent viewers toughing this out with us. Thank you guys. Thank you. We appreciate all of you so much. Uh it is it is a special form of commitment to be <laughs> like, yes, I will watch all the model land streams. Oh gosh, and we haven't gotten to the stuff about the menstrual cycle. We have not yet. Oh ah. sorry, Dragon Bean. <laughs> Be oh, I, I think I heard one of the cats running up from downstairs and they're like, I'm a support animal. Yeah, no, you just hear that. And like when I'm streaming at night, I'm the only one up. So I just hear like the cats getting into mischief. And sometimes I'm like, let me go check that. <laughs> I'm the only one awake. I should probably make sure they're not getting into fuckery. I don't know. Cat fuckery. Oh, no. 
Oh, I I like the stop calling it the D. Will the Model Land streams be every day? I'm cool with Model Land streams as long whenever uh, Gabe has time. When Gabe's schedule allows. <laughs> Usually Saturday, yeah. Usually Saturday, yeah. It gets worse, Darth Video says. When when does it not get worse? Is my question. I think it just keeps getting worse until the book ends. Ugh. Ugh. I'm just kidding. I'm just like looking up and seeing. Am I gonna get a spoiler? And I I don't know. Everything's so confusing. I don't even know if you could be spoiled. I don't know that I could be spoiled just because I barely understand what's going on. <laughs> like I feel like in 300 pages for now from now. I'm going to be like, what the hell is that supposed to be? <laughs> I'm like barely gripping on to the information that we do have. Yep. Chapter 19 is called Kara 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 and the Dormitory Effect. Um, that sounds like a Fall Out Boy song from <laughs> the 2000s. Oh gosh. That reminds me of that song from Family Guy where it's like, gotta, 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 gotta buy me a rainbow when Meg was pretty. Um, if anybody, um, by the way, if anybody in chat knows of a font, because I don't think we can use the actual model and font, but we can probably use one that's close to it. If anybody knows of a font that's close to this, uh, feel free to let me know for, uh, for reasons. So, oh, and car, 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 car is Spanish for face, face, face. Oh, okay. L-I-R-C. I was Google translating this stuff. I was so confused. Uh, it's not you. Car, car, car is Spanish for face, face, face. Yes. Um, there are spoilers and I'm having a hard time not saying stuff because there are some crazy things that happen. Well, poor Milo has read, Milo is like trying to abstain from saying spoilers because they've read this book and they've also read Animorphs. And so like, they're just like, I want to vent about this so much, but I can't <laughs> because the rest of chat doesn't know this. Oh no. Dark Sidious, can you like hint at it and be like, oh, when this happens, ooh. Like the period stuff. That can't, that's not, I don't count that as a spoiler because I still have no idea how that's going to come into play. Oh, gosh. I'm I... afraid. All right. Uh, the next morning, when Tookie opened her eyes again, she was lying on her bed in the D. Stop. Stop. Tyra, I'm gonna, stop. I'm going to take a sip. Tyra, stop. Uh... Instantly remembering the night before. Uh, she rubbed her eyes instantly remembering the night before. What had that been about she had she seriously seen cl hurting herself why tookie was used to having awful nightmares and ev even night terrors when she woke up screaming so she couldn't tell her friends what she'd seen not until she knew it was real disoriented tookie stumbled into the large stale sterile looking community bathroom as she did, a dull pain shot through her legs, hips, and stomach. She doubled over, feeling as if she were about to vomit. Perfect, she thought. I'm sick on the first day of school. Everyone in the bathroom wore clear uh, shower sandals and aqua bathrobes with yellow arms and lapels that formed an M. The backs of their bathrobes sported immense eyes decorated with smizes all at once. Every single girl in the bathroom doubled over in pain, gripping her stomach and back just as Tookie had. As a bathroom stall door banged open, Tookie caught sight of a scrawled graffiti on the wall. Many of the drawings were just of hearts and initials, but several stood out. Lada Def 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 Cake 7174 Sure and Persecution with a QU. Um, never forget, never return. Jesus. She trudged up to one of the 25 sinks cut into a long slab of white and gray marble. Over each sink hung a white framed rectangular mirror with different size holes in it. One hole spat a perfect plume of color of cold blue water. Another shot out red tinged hot water. They're color coded for the water. Okay. A large hole emitted purplish-tinged water, perfect combination of hot and cold. Tookie spotted Piper at a corner sink and walked toward her, trying to, not to fall over from another sudden stomach spasm. Piper had laid out a series of toiletries, including a toothbrush, toothpaste, a hairbrush, a comb, in a neat, even line. When she bumped one, of, one out of place, she quickly pushed it back into position. 
She was also playing with a puzzle that had many moving pieces, which scrambled parts of a picture. A golden light overhead danced on her delicate skin, enhancing the elegant angles of her chin and shoulders. Isn't this a child? Isn't this still a child? Yes. Every movement Piper makes could be a beautiful picture, Tookie thought. She's posing even though she doesn't realize it. Where'd you get all that stuff, Tookie asked. I understand, like, if it's written for girls, you want girls to feel comfortable in their bodies, right? This is a big thing with, like, this is a big thing with, like, Sailor Moon or whatever, but it's, it's done so badly. I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah. This is uncomfortable. Piper looked up and smiled. This I brought from home. The tiles formed a picture of Piper's mother on a throne with a stately man sitting next to her. Piper tried to hide the puzzle from Tookie, snapping the last tile into its proper place. The other stuff was on my nightstand. You didn't get a toiletries kit? Tookie blinked. It's back in my room. Do you mind if I borrow some paste? Paste. Okay. Sure, <laughs> Piper said. Then she shoved the puzzle at Tookie, making sure to hold it upside down so Tookie couldn't see the picture. Would you mind messing this up for me first? I couldn't see the picture because it was upside down? Okay. Um, Tookie stared at her, but you just solved it. Piper raised one shoulder. I know, but I'll solve it again. Playing with it keeps me sane. I, I can understand that. Puzzles weren't Tookie's thing. It would probably take forever for her to figure this one out. But she'd heard that this about people of Sans Calor. They were ge- Oh, I forgot about this. They were geniuses, adept at all subjects, masters of science, mathematics, music, and art. She took the puzzle, rearranged the pieces for Piper without looking at it. Who are you rooming with, she asked. Dylan and I are with the strumpet chast. With that strumpet chast, Piper rolled her eyes. And the Likey sisters, I believe. Model Land is counting them as one. They're all sleeping squashed together in one bed. Weird, Tookie mumber murmured. She opened her mouth to receive the water spout. Bright blue water sprang out, hitting her upper lip and her nostrils, sending shivers and cramps up her nearly bare back? Why? Why, Tyra, why? Tyra, no! Tyra, why? Tyra, no! I'm taking no. a step. <laughs> no, Tyra, bad! <laughs> <laughs> Where's the frame? <laughs> uh, sorry, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to uh, demean Tyra the way that she demeans everybody else. Oh, so, God. Tyra, why? <laughs> Tyra! Um... You look freezing, Piper said. Didn't a robe appear in your closet this morning? Of course she's naked. Ugh. She pointed to her own. Tookie lifted her right shoulder and raised her eyebrows. Then she grabbed Piper's toothpaste, doled out a narrow strip on her left index finger, and started rubbing her teeth. Does that do much? Piper asked curiously. Better than nothing, plus I don't have time for a shower. Piper looked closely at Tookie. I would recommend you not skip bathing today, Tookie. This is the one week where you want to be as spotlessly clean as possible. Tookie shut her eyes, wincing again with another pain. Piper, my back and tummy are killing me, she whispered. Isn't Piper... Piper showed up with her. How did Piper know all of this stuff? Or, or uh, Tookie... What, uh, maybe Tookie just walked out of her room and Piper's like, Oh, yes, there's a this here, there's a that there. Okay. Piper's the smart one. Piper shrugged. Joined the club. Tookie, every new Bella started menstruating at the exact same time this morning? What? Oh, there's the prot there relevant. Alright, that's what, three or four uh, sips of water, yeah, I guess? Yeah, better, you know. Wait, what? You've never heard of menstrual syncography? Think synchrony, sorry. My brain was like, oh, re regular word, hang on. Um, or the dormitory effect, Piper asked. Menstrual sy synchro synchrony is a theory that suggests that the menstruation cycles of women who cohabitate, think army barracks, female penitentiaries, uh, convents, and university dormitories, synchronize over time. It usually takes months for the alignment to occur, but here at Model Land, it seems to have happened in 24 hours. That's not how periods, Tyra. I'm going to generously hope that this is the uh, this is the co-writer who is a male who doesn't know about periods, but Tyra should have said something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I've never gotten my period before this, Tookie whispered. 
Well, Tookie, looks like you're a woman now, Piper said. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Tookie was about to protest. There was no way she was any more womanly today than she had been the day before. But all of a sudden, she felt that perhaps something in her had changed. Those abdominal pains made so much sense after all, and that certainly made the more the more bearable. For once, she felt normal, like everyone else. There are women that don't have periods, and there are people that have periods that are not women. Just putting that out there. <laughs> anyway. Then she glanced down at the sink again. She noticed Piper's toothbrush. It was made of an iridescent pearl-like substance, and its bristles were fashioned in the shape of an eye. Of course they were. Just looking at the toothbrush made a memory strike her. She is uncoordinated, unattractive, unmemorable. She's not mine, Creamy. The words were like daggers in her heart. She was allowed to keep only two personal items, but in reality had come to Model Land with heavy baggage she couldn't get rid of. Tookie moved. I'm sure you think I'm saying. <laughs> dinosaur. Happy little dinosaur. No, I'm glad it's a, it's a, it's um emotional support. Um, um Tookie moved her face closer to the mirror as if knowing why she was doing so. The mirror inched closer to Tookie's searching face, kindly refraining from spouting any frigid or blazing water. Tookie stared deeply into her multicolored eyes, seeking, seeking a clue. She silently begged the mirror for some similarities, for any portion of her face to resemble her father. She took her baby fingers and traced to the line, baby fingers, that's one that we forgot. We can count it if, if we want, I guess. Um, she took her baby fingers and traced the lines of her face, ending with the outline of her rounded, full lip. Nothing. She looked nothing like him. Hot tears fell from her eyes. She picked up a spare comb from the counter and ran it, its teeth through her hair. The comb snagged and then broke in two pieces, just like it always did. I've broken combs with my hair before because it's unruly, but I've never, like, snapped one in half. Oh my like, I've gosh. snapped the teeth off because my hair is just really thick and curly when you don't do anything to make it not. But um, Moments later, Tookie ran out of the D... <sighs> I'm calm. I'm very calm. Toward Beautification Boulevard. She was now dressed in the official first year Bella green model land uniform she'd had on the day before, where she'd emerged from the THBC. Most, um, see, HBC is a real thing. Uh, Thorns stands for Historically Black College. For, so THBC is throwing me off. I'm like, my brain's like, that's almost a real thing, but not. Uh, most of the uniforms had been easy to put on correctly, and although wearing the leotard over her pants felt strange, it certainly was a cool look. Was it? Was it, though? Tookie didn't understand the Centura at all. It didn't fit the way they had the day before. It kept slipping off her hip hips. When she'd gone back to the bedroom for the bathroom, a bottle of perfume was on her nightstand. Jose set a sign on the plunger. When Tookie depressed the atomizer, a fine blood orange scented mist had spritzed into the air. Slowly the mist had assembled into an onion skin thick sheet of paper. It was her schedule for the semester. Or quadmester, it was called in Model Land. So they're doing it in four. Quad would mean oh. they're just doing four semesters. Oh god. Unless it's a semester but it's called a quadmester. Then I'm really confused. She shuddered from another abdominal cramp, then looked at her schedule again. Bella assignments for the first day of first quadmester of the first year. Uno, car, car, car time. Midnight blue, sharp. Midnight blue, sharp. Dos, runaway intensive. Time, Kelly green, sharp. I forgot about the time. I was so confused. They count oh, time yeah. in colors. Tre, tres, um... Uh, Mastication time. Golden rod. Sar sharp. Midnight blue. Kelly green and golden sharp. Tookie needed to learn how to tell time all over again. Tookie stared at the whirling kaleidoscopic clock on the beautification boulevard. All around her, girls were rushing past just as confused as she was about the wacky colored clock. She tried going right, thinking Kara 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 face 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 in 
Gaudi Anne might be that in that direction. Did she, you're just stealing words from real. That, that's not that's a real those are real words in real languages, Tyra. You can't be like, oh, it means this in Gaudi Anne. It's like that's Spanish, Tyra. The direction. I guess we know what Gaudi Anne is supposed to represent. Uh, might be in the direct. Might be in that direction. And found herself on a path she'd never traveled before. An enormous half-finished stadium loomed in the distance. Hulking male models from the testosterone worked giant construction machines. Some of them wielded metal beams, welded metal beams together with silver flashlight-like devices that shot red-hot liquid glue. Others struck overtly sexualized poses for photographers while they worked. Aren't these also children? I am so concerned. <laughs> How many sips are we up to? Uh, I'm just gonna say five. All right. Suddenly, a deep voice rang out behind her. Are you lost? Tookie turned and saw a muscular bestostero with chiseled features walking toward her. Blueprints tucked under his arms. I'm this very stereotypical, like, man-man. <laughs> like, he's walking around with a hard hat and blueprints. He's building things. Or someone was asking what chapter we're on, and I'm like, 19? 19. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. 19. Chapter 19, also known as Kara 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 and the Dormitory Effect. Now we know why it's called that, I guess. Uh, Chucky... Uh, I'm gonna sh um... Blueprints tucked under his arms, his pecs swelled under his shirt. His skin was smooth and richly colored. His eyebrows looked naturally arched, which was almost as bad as if he'd been a religious waxer. Tookie had never been a fan of the pretty boy arched eyebrow look. Theophilus' unique features were more her taste. Way to body shame in such a unique yeah. way. Your <laughs> eyebrows are wrong. <laughs> you're really you're really pretty, but I need to find something wrong with you. I once had a makeup artist go, who does your eyebrows? And I said, I do. And they said, you're doing them wrong. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> your eyebrows aren't naturally growing correctly. <laughs> yeah. How rude. God help you. God, they didn't like, because I had very thick eyebrows and very thick hair. So the hair and makeup people were just like, ugh. Which, like, I get it, but still. Rude. Um. Um. My name's Bravo, he said, looking straight at Tookie. From Bestosterone. Are you a new Bella? Tookie opened her mouth, but then shut it again. The guy was staring at her so pointedly, like she had worms crawling out of her hair. We're building this new 7-7 stadium for you, Bravo went on, gesturing to the site. A couple of years ago, a huge fireball decimated the old stadium. It came out of nowhere from the other side of the wall. I wonder if we're going to learn more about this, this incident. <laughs> Some people say the spirits over there get pissed at us sometimes and want to burn Model Land down. I also would like to burn Model Land. Oh my gosh. Tookie still couldn't say a word. Then two boys appeared behind Bravo, both fashion in fashionable workmen's uniforms. One had pale skin and angular feature and an angular face, piercing hazel eyes, and the other was stockier with dark skin and the fullest lips Tookie had ever seen, even fuller than her own. What's that you're t who's what's that you're talking to Bravo the angular faced one said Ooh. the dark skinned guy he was with snickered and nudged him Webb, you need to stop tripping man Bravo said <sighs> he bristled and turned away Webb's insult wasn't anything she wasn't used to she glanced over her shoulder just once pretty boy Bravo was still watching her finally he returned to his friends they and they retreated towards the immense eye made out of shiny metal. Its iris was constructed from green jade, and the lid wore yellow eyeshadow like a smize. Finally, Tookie found the Karakara Kara building. It was with a massive boat. It was the massive boat she'd seen during orientation. Ah, uh, yes, the thing that I definitely have forgotten about by now. <laughs> a bridge made of driftwood led from shore to the vessel's door. Hey, Tookie! Dylan stood in front of. The building, Piper and Shiraz were standing with her, both bearing the same achy, period-stricken looks the other Bellas had had in the bathroom earlier. We were looking for you, girl. You made it. 
I feel like women go through way too much, like, dealing with periods of, like, going to work, and you never know for them to be like, they all had that look on their face. They had a period. Oh. Uh, oh. Um, barely, Tookie almost considered telling them about the Bestosterow and his rude friends, but she decided against it. Why bother? The girls walked across the bridge into the floating classroom. An immense burst of the Belladonna leered from the ship's bow. A bust, sorry, bust of the Belladonna. I was like, what? <laughs> it's made out of some element that doesn't exist in the periodic table, Piper whispered. Of course it does. Shooky, Tookie shivered. She felt like the stony eyes were watching her. Would they ever see the Belladonna for real, or only bizarre rock-like representations of her? They ducked their heads through the entryway and entered a classroom whose ceiling and walls were made entirely of bleached bones in the shape of a giant skeleton. Hmm, Piper said, examining the interior. Dermal corset of flexible col collagenous fibers, hexagonal tesserae of bleak and separated teeth not attached to the cranium. It's a shark. What a weird way to say that. Yeah. Why well, I'm calling it right now the Belladonna is gonna be like a, a Wizard of Oz situation. Oh uh, yeah. Where it's just like a normal person. Watch we never even see it because that was supposed to be a book three thing. Oh. Uh, uh, who's behind the curtain? <gasps> and it's also Tyra Banks. Yes, the, the third self insert. I'm just a normal person, but I'm beautiful. Yeah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Tyra Banks is the is the uh, the Tookie, the CL, and the Bell Belladonna of this universe. Yes. Um. Um. There were no seats, but the Zarpesa and Chast. Is it Chast Day? I feel like Chast is a. I don't know. We're standing in front and center of the middle of the circles of the floor with their names printed on the center. Tookie, Piper, Shiraz, and Dylan found circles to their own, of their own in the row behind Zarpesa and Chast. As soon as they stopped, individual spotlights shone straight into their faces. Piper squinted hard. Is it Lumiere? Sh Shiraz exclaimed excitedly. Chas turned around. Of course not, little girl. That one, that only happens at night. Just then a wooden door on the other side of the boat snapped open. Book to make calling somebody short somehow into a racial slur. <laughs> somehow. Um. Uh, where, I lost my place, hang on. Just then a wooden door on the other side of the boat snapped open. In bounded a tall man wearing an embroidered cape and a red jumpsuit with a vibrant, multicolored seraph sash around his waist. He had poochy lips, a button nose, bushy eyebrows, and twinkly saucer-shaped eyes that immediately generated a smile from Tookie and all the girls in the shark room. His features flapped and twisted as if they were made of something much more flexible than flesh and bone. I'm counting that as body horror. But despite the, all that, Tookie thought he was quite handsome in his own special way. What a what a patronizing way to say say that. <laughs> so rude. What's up with Rubber Man? Dylan whispered to the girls. Hola, hola, hola. I am Guru Pacifico Cruz from the land of Texacoco. Texaco -co instead of Mexico, I I believe. Jesus Christ. Um I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm just so, uh, I know it's I know I didn't do this, but I'm sorry anyway. Oh my god. Uh he announced, at Model Land, we are not fans of last names, so please call me Guru Pacifico. Okay. This is my dear Bell. Why did he tell them the last name? Sorry. This is my dear Bella's is Karakar Kara class. Being a modella. Fantastica is all about mastering how to maneuver your face. And speaking of faces, this course you will prepare you will prepare you for what you will face out in the real world too, if you become Intoxabellas. If Sarpesa rolled her eyes. Not if, honey, when. Mi class mi classe, uh, guru. That's not that's not how you pronounce that. That's the French way of pronouncing that. Sorry. <laughs> guru Pacifico continued, is located within a great white shark not for comedy no you sit within the belly of the sea beast to remind you of the real sharks in the world they will swim around you if you become intoxabellas they will want to rip your 
rip you to shreds, jealous of your fame and fortune. They will wait for you to bleed and then swallow you whole, leaving nothing to bury but your fancy stilettos. Is this trauma class, chat? Because if it's not trauma <laughs> class, it must be wild. Tuki wasn't sure whether to laugh or cry. So my class is muy importante, fellas. The guru's eyes sparkled. It will tighten your gut, cement your resistance, and strengthen your core. If you've noticed, we are on a rocky boat. Metaphora, indeed. And you, your, shall I say, cycles have all been synchronized. Um, I'm sure you've noticed by now. Crampy, see? <laughs> Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, let's just joke about this. Groan oh. sounded throughout the room. Tookie pressed on her abdomen. This is not a coincidence, fellas. Usually it takes muchos meses, many months, uh, for ladies' cycles to, shall I say, organize. But here at Monoland, we have accelerated that harmony. I'm sorry for mispronouncing these definitely not Spanish words, but also it's, um, I'm dealing with a lot right now. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um... I knew it, Piper whispered to Tookie. Why do why do we do this? Well, Bellas, in life of the life of a model is one of great adventure and many challenges. Model land tolerates no excuses for tardiness or for faulty or missed assignments. Come hell or high agua, Intoxabellas must be ready to shine, to model through mayhem and mishaps, to perform, to be the very best. I wanna be the, the very, very best. best. Do, do. No one ever was. Do, do. Do, do, do. No excuses. The yeah. day your training begins. Hensio, your Tia, your Tia flow, Aunt Flo. God help me. Oh gosh. It's happening right now. Yes. How well can you project an image that is the opposite of how you are feeling, or at odds with your surroundings? Your goal in Kara 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 is not to mirror, but to mask. In other words, make the opposite expression of what you see or feel. <laughs> when you're feeling things and they don't feel good, what you gonna do? Repress it! That's a Tom Cardi song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, 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 opposite expression of what you see. You, you see... Happy, the guru made a gleeful expression, his rubbery lips extending well past his cheeks. You make sad. He distorted his face into a sappy appearance. His eyes drooped dramatically and his chin hit and his chin sinking literally into his neck. If you are tickled, do not laugh. Frown. Mastering this will get you one step closer to being an intoxabella. But fail and you may be, may be relegated to spending your life as, heaven forbid, an actress. <gasps> the guru said this last word in a low, disgusted whisper. Actresses are incapable of opposite performing. But that's what acting is sometimes. <laughs> I don't understand. They must think about the sad times in their lives to project sadness on the silver screen. Nonsense. Oh, he's saying actresses are too emotional. They could never. They could never repress uh -uh. their emotions the way that models can. Um... Which is true. We are very emotional, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, nonsense. We mustn't let that pitiful fate happen to you. Oh, and also, Bellas, you will see that Mi Clate is the best in all of Model Land. His face contorted. So if you like what you see here, put in a good word for me to the board. See? The, they need a bit of comic relief to join their ranks. They are so god awful serious all the time. The guru's fingers stretched out from his hand curved around the girls, and flicked on a light in the back of the shark room. In just a few seconds, you will be tested as you have never been. The challenge begins now. Pacifica, I just heard that in the, um, in the weakest link. Clock begins now. And then she starts answering, the, uh, asking the question really quickly. Oh, God. Um, sorry, my brain is deflecting because, you know, trauma. <laughs> in just a, uh, begins now. Pacifica untied the syrup sash, syrup, syrup sash from around his narrow waist, rolled it into a narrow strip, and tied it around his head, martial arts bandana style. Copy me, Bellas. Copy me. The girls 
yanked their centaurs from their waist and tied them around their heads. As they did so, Tookie noticed that the boat was tilting more rapidly from side to side like it was caught in a storm. She suddenly felt off kilter. Though your crampy pain and sickness from the sea, through your crampy pain and sickness from the sea, Pacific Go said, your centauras will aid you with power to conjure the opposite expression. Perfectamonte. Uh, a shark bit, a shark bite sound filled the room, and then a three dimensional image of a two headed vulture picking at a child's eyes before every Bella, several, before every Bella. Several girls gasped. Piper covered her eyes, saying it looked like a legizard. A girl named Bo, who sat on the other side of Tookie and seemed devoid of any expression whatsoever, didn't react at all. No, 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 Pacifico bellowed. Opposite, opposite, opposite. Look at me, Zarpesa cried. She was smiling in the eyes of the two-headed vulture, as though it was a cute newborn baby. Fantastico, Bella, Guru Pacifico patted Zarpesa on the back. The boat rocked to the right, making Tookie's stomach swim. The two-headed vulture morphed into an enormous yellow feather that was as long as Tookie was tall. It flitted around the class, tickling girls. Giggles erupted throughout the class. Bella, Pacifico shook his finger. Use the power of your centauras to resist the urge to laugh. At once, the centauras came to life. The two strands that hung... The two, yeah, the two strands that hung at the back of each girl's head reared up and swatted the feather as it approached. Shiraz's centaur swatted the feather like a boxer hitting a speed bag. Piper's centaur took calculated jabs at it. Dylan's clawed and feathery, feather-like, clawed at the feather like it was a girl in a cat fight. Mm. Chas centaur shimmered sexily. Child, 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 stop! Pulling the feather toward her body. But when the feather approached, Tookie, her, cent Tookie, her centaur remained limp at her head. She couldn't stop giggling even as the boat lurched angrily to the left. Tookie, Guru Pacifica declared, you are all wrong. Frown, pretend that feather feels like the muhair pain inside you. The woman pain inside you. <sighs> Tookie's cheeks burned. All these years, she had never been called on in class, and now that she finally was, it was for something negative. Worse than that, her head was spinning. Why is this boat rocking so wildly? It seems so calm from the shore. The challenge zipped by more quickly. They had to react to a steaming pile of rotting food under their noses, then a picture of earless baby rabbit abandoned by its mother. Oh, Tyra. Tyra, why? Some girls instantly reacted to the photos before remembering they were supposed to do the opposite, but Piper studied the images quickly and smiled. When the image was ghastly, looked surprised, um and smiled when the image was ghastly, looked surprised when the image was serene, and gasped when the image was gentle and sweet. Good, Piper, Pacifico praised. Is it a point to be suppressing all of your emotions? Like, to just be stone-faced? Not to express different emotions. I, I guess being able to think on your feet? I don't know. I guess so. Um... Um... An image appeared of a bunch of boys mooning a busy highway. Then one of a hooded figure that looked like death approaching. The Bellas changed their expressions from happy to sad, confused to angry, sexy to serious. Child, child, child. Which each different challenge, uh, with each different challenge, but Tookie continued to fail miserably, over or underacting to the photos, finding it difficult to focus. Her centura remained comatose on her head. Tookie, 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 Pacifico cried over and over again, which made Zarpesa twist around and smirk triumphantly at her. The only girl he corrected almost as much as, as uh, almost as much was dead faced Bo, who didn't even freak over a photo of a dead cat giving birth to an octopus on an Apache drone. Oh my <laughs> gosh, Tyra. Oh my gosh, what's happening? That is of an acrobat falling off a dizzyingly high tightrope appeared. Almost everyone else reacted with the opposite sight expression. Boredom, apathy. But Tookie's face froze in the worst possible way. The performance reminded her of Chris Cram Crobat, 
her father, or well, whoever he was. The shame feeling disowned and unwanted washed over her. She couldn't hide it. The ship lurched to the side once more. Tookie's insides churned, and her lower back contracted in a sharp cramp. She gagged repeatedly in the cl and closed her eyes to avoid the next abdominal image. Abominable image, sorry. They were just talking about period cramps until my brain said abdominal. Um, but closing her eyes made her seasickness even worse. Suddenly, she, could take it. she couldn't take it anymore. She twisted to the right, leaned over, and threw up. Some of it landed in Bo's hair, but to her relief, but to, but to her relief, Bo threw up too, impassively, of course. How does that make it better? How does that make it better, Tara? <sighs> Dos mio, Guru Pacifica cried, the wretched scourge of the first run regurgitation. Um, Dios mio, sorry, my god. Uh, seen before and smelled it much, see, seen it before and smelled it much longer. The images around them disappeared. Okay, Bellows, remove your centuras from your head. You will do this again and again, uh, this quadmaster, until you get it right. Do not fret about the mess. Remember, sharks love chum. Oh! Ah! God, yeah, just, just drink. Just drink. I wish I had alcohol, and I wish I liked alcohol more than I do. Uh, as far as we... It gets worse. As far as... That's the it's... first time it actually made me gasp. Oh. Uh, like, gag. As far as who did well today, he paused on Piper, seemingly wanting to point to her, but then looked away. He pointed to another girl and said, Definitely. Bella's Zarpesa. Sorry. Zarpesa smiled devilishly. Thanks, Guru, but I have a confession to make. My parents trained me for Model Land at a very early age. They got the best coaches. Neatopian money was no object. I was being coached up until the day of discovery. They spent 50000 on my prep, and she trailed off as she caught Tookie's eye. Her face hardened into a scowl. Tookie quickly averted her gaze. She didn't know whether to feel an envious or sorry for Zarpesa. Envious, of course, because Zarpesa had such a vivid imagination with which to escape from her dreadful life. Even if it was a new concoction of outrageous fibs every day. But she felt pity as well. <laughs> so clapped. Now that you have finished your first Kara 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 class, I have two gifts for you. Everyone froze, waiting. I shall let an esteemed special guest tell you the first gift, the guru said. He gestured to the walls of the boat. Instantly, they peeled apart, revealing a masthead of the belladonna at the front of the ship. The masthead twisted around and stared at them, suddenly alive. The masthead belladonna parted her sculpted lips, just as her giant statue in the O had. Yes, no seas, I have a surprise for you, her voice rang out. Something young, maturing girls can only receive here at Model Land. Kara 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 was your first class, or shall I say your first period of the day, but guess what? It will also be your last. Huh? Chas pulled out her schedule. It says I have two more classes after this. Ah, 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 the guru shook his finger. Not that kind of period, mommy. The belladonna continued. This cycle you had this morning will be the last period you will ever have for the rest of your lives. There was silence, turned heads, questioning looks. We want no excuses for you missing class or shoots or shows. So Model Land is ridding you of this pain and suffering for your menstrual cycles and cramps forever. The belladonna, but what if I have a different reason for not, what if I'm just sick? Do I, can I have all ailments gone? <laughs> no, just the natural. Just periods, because you know women use their periods to get out of everything. Uh... Um. Oh good, we're going into this. I'm sorry to say I did have questions about this. Um. Of your menstrual cycles and cramps forever, the Baladonna mast had explained. You will still have the ability to procreate as you reach, reach adulthood, but no periods. Period. That's not how anything works. Hi, Ra. Hi, Ra, why? The guru beamed at them. Isn't that grandis grandissimo? Almost everyone cheered, although Chas looked strangely forlorn and confused, clamping her mouth shut and biting her bottom lip nervously. And Tookie felt another kind of cramp in her stomach. One of loss and regret. I finally reached womanhood, she thought. 
I finally got something that Miracle has teased me about so much, and now it's gone. J.K. Rowling must have written this. Uh, Only women no. get period. Uh, the mask had twisted back around to its original position and then went still again. The second gift, the guru said, facing the girls. Now you can view your pictures of today's session. Pictures? Dylan clutched her apple cheeks. But honey, I don't have my game face on. Pacifico smiled craftily, his rubbery lips curling over his teeth. This was your first model land photo shoot, ladies. Go look, go look. The guru pointed to the exit at the far side of the shark. The second boat had appeared where the bridge had once been. As soon as the girls stepped inside the cabin, the boat moved away from the dock and began to float down the long river. The three-dimensional images of the Bellas during the Kara 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 exercise appeared in midair. The images moved and morphed, showing each of their many expressions. Ooh, some girls squealed. Yuck, others cried. Can I erase this one? Bo murmured stoically, and Chas batted her eyelashes at herself. Honey, she said to her image, if I were a guy, I'd want a piece of you. They're 15! Uh, 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 uh. I know the other characters are 15, but this is an adult woman writing this. I have concern. Ugh, Tyra. Look at that hideous thing, a voice called from the other side of the boat. It was Zarpesa, and she was staring at Tookie's repeating loop. Zarpesa nudged Chas. You know those rumors about scouts choosing civilian girls to come to Model Land to be used as sacrifices, experiments, and food? I certainly won't want to eat that. Tookie moved to the front of the boat to look at her images. In each, she looked awkward, confused, and just wrong. She looked over at the guru. His eyes narrowed, and he shook his head slowly from side to side. These were the type of photos that would fail her, the type of photos that would get her kicked out of Monoland and sent back to Peppertown forever. Can I just... I just want to go back. I would want to go home. I'd be like, please, let me go home. <laughs> she closed her eyes and thought about the fate that awaited her in Peppertown. A family who didn't want her, a best friend who probably hated her now that she's abandoned her, a life as a factory dependent. I can't go back there. I can't go get sent home. But then she thought about the sacrifice rumor, torturing girls in dreadful experiments, siphoning their blood for ancient rituals. I'm counting that as body horror, whenever you're up for it. Um making an offering to whatever magical beings had founded Model Land in the first place. If that was in store for her, she couldn't imagine staying here either. Cold fear trickled down her neck. Had she come this far only to be a human guinea pig? Oh, that felt like a long chapter. That was a long chapter. I gotta decompress. Whew. What did I miss in chat, guys? How's chat? I feel, I'm so sorry, chat. There was a lot of, <laughs> the part is coming. The part is coming. Yeah. Why are the Bestosterone guys not called Bestos de Bros? Missed opportunity, honestly. I see. Bestos de Bros? <laughs> Bestos de Bros. Bestosterone makes me cringe. Me too. A fireball is the wicked witch in Toxabella. <laughs> She's probably one of the least uh, uh, whimsical, as Tyra would put it, in Toxabella's out there. Oh, gosh. It's me. I'm the spirit. <laughs> it's uh, me. Hi. Hmm. And the problem it's me. Just Tuki through this whole book, and we're just like, stop! <laughs> I wish this bo book didn't exist. But we wouldn't all be spending this time together, bonding. It's like when you get a really bad set, and you're like, we bonded through the trauma of this. Yeah. You just took a <laughs> breath, that you were looking at the next chapter, and I was like, oh god, what's going on? Or I saw the last word in the chapter that I'm reading, I'm like, oh, fine. I would like the Belladonna to burst, so let's just go with that. Uh, we don't really get that with the Belladonna, but we get to see some of her backstory, I think. Oh, and re in regards to her being a, a giant uh, balloon, like in The Wizard of Oz, like a fake, a, fa a fake, fake person. <gasps> I think I can't type. I can't think. My brain, it's like that mug episode where he's like, I stopped thinking an hour and a half ago. Like, <laughs> We've we we've only read a few chapters, but we're like, oh my brain, why? There it is. I thought you just pronounced it like that on purpose, but chast is pronounced chased. Chased. Okay. Chased. I am personally offended. Yeah. 
It's like chastity, but Tyra thinks it's funny to have a girl in pasties that she slut shamed with a name that means the opposite. At least he's not a gardener or maid, I guess. Oh god. Oh, that god. cannot be the bar. That cannot be the bar. No, this isn't trauma, I don't think. Uh, it's not, we have gotten to trauma class. We haven't gotten to trauma class. This is not trauma class. This is just Kara 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 class. Oh, God. Um, we got taken away. Uh, she wasn't sure whether to laugh or cry. And suddenly I am reminded that we could be reading a better book like Heaven's Official Blessing instead, LMAO. Oh, we, should, we need to read Ellery sent us um, So You Want to Be a Wizard, which is genuinely a book that I'm excited to read. Uh, it's from the 80s, and it's like a fantasy-type novel uh, from this um, female writer that's, that's really uh, talented. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> haven't read a book like that. Tyra seems to have a thing against actresses, yet Tyra is an actress. She is. Yeah. She she was in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. She was in I the. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. She was also in the bad Halloween sequel. I think it was H two O. That was really bad. It's certainly fun, but the show. It, it's certainly fun, but the show isn't as gay as the book, because Chinese censorship. Ah, I see. I'm, I'm rude. Like, I yeah. call for male objectification or adult male objectification. <laughs> Please, a consenting adult. Please, yes, please. Yes, let's not talk about, you know, the, the girl who is a teenager walking around in pasties. That said, I forgot that she was in pasties. My brain, I think, just blocked that out for my own good. Well, I, I, I remember it being described as she has, like, diamonds that are hanging that, like, barely cover everything. And I'm just like... Tyra. I just want to know who are these individuals based off of? Because she's just... I don't know. It's just... The, has everyone in her life been terrible except for her mom who's not represented in this book because there are no redeeming characters except for like her friends that said every time i hear someone doesn't know whether to laugh or cry i'm reminded of the book because it's what's his favorite way to express protagonists being overwhelmed that's yeah i can imagine I'm having a hard time visualizing what is happening in my brain. Same. And I'm not, like, I'm not a person that has trouble. Like, there's a name for, like, not being able to visualize. Um, I realized this was a thing because one of my friends was like, wait, when you read books, you, like, imagine. Like, you can, like, see it in your mind's eye. And I'm like, yeah. And then I was just like, oh, that doesn't happen for everybody. That's interesting. Um, uh -oh. I'm not one of those people. But even me, it's like the geography. I'm like, wait, we're here. But now we're not. But now we're over here. And I'm just like, my brain is trying to parse it together. And it's like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the individuals where I can't really. I, I need like a visual representation okay. of it so That's I can imagine it. Or else I'm just like, uh. See, my my memory or my, my imagination is very vivid. So I can like, like I read, you know, other books, right? And I can picture at least a version that my brain is made up of like, this is what the room looks like. This is what whatever probably looks like. We know that this is over here and this is over here. And I can kind of spatially imagine it. I have no idea what's going on in this one. It's it's not, if you're, if you're struggling with something like that, it's not you. It's the book. <laughs> it's the book. And yet she over describes every little detail. So Toki saw Zarpesa eating out of the trash, and she's the only one in Monoland who knows, plus Zarpesa pretends to be rich. Yes. All the insane things in this book, the least believable part is that people actually want to stay in Monoland. She literally built in a mechanism that they would rapidly age because she knew it didn't make sense for them to want to stay in Monoland. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot what book we're reading. Uh, Toki doesn't say it because she's trying to be nice, but, like, Zarpesa is not uh, earning this secrecy yeah yeah like girl if you think this is dirt maybe bullying the person who has it is a bad idea yeah yeah aphantasia aphantasia my dm for D, D has that it's why they spend so much time on making 3d battle maps that's fascinating oh. it's just one of those things where it's like oh you learn something new every day <laughs> uh i have synesthesia so and i have like the kind um I have chromesthesia, which is, like, where you see, like, things in sequence and, and letters and things as, like, having specific colors. But I also have the one that I forget what it's called, where, like, you, um, like, your hearing and your sight are connected. So when you hear oh. sounds, you, like, see colors. Um, it's, it's weird. Oh. But I just find it interesting because I didn't know that this was a thing until high school because I just never thought about the fact that other people's brains didn't process um, the same way that mine did. And so I was like, ooh. 
<laughs> but I find out other people's brains work differently than mine. I'm like, oh, it's so fascinating. Brains are awesome. <laughs> um, it's just all needless violence. The th the throw up was the first time that I actually. Like, oh gagged. yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. One point Ducky says she likes it in Model Land, but we have seen nothing to support that. Yes. Yeah. Just like, uh, well, she has her her only her only four friends. Because she thinks Lizzie hates her and no one was nice to her back home except for Theo Belioff. Even though it's not her fault because she literally got kidnapped. She's yeah. like, stop saying you abandoned your friend. You got taken hostage against your will. You are a child. I'm going to work on that Tyra Y. Uh, we survived <laughs> Model Land and all we got was this t-shirt and trauma. <laughs> um, I'm going to work yes. on that as we as do we work. It. Since I don't know how to do origami, I'm not I'm not talented like you. Oh God! Well, you know how to set all this out, and that barely. takes a lot of talent. <laughs> barely, it's it's uh, a lot of credit goes to Spencer, who we call the Texorcist, um, because when it when I can't fix when something breaks, I know how to turn it off and back on again, and then go through like the four steps that I know. And if that wow. breaks, I'm like Spencer, help! And then he comes in and he's like, "What did you do?" I'm like, "I don't know, <laughs> fix it, please." This uh, is like the least calming ASMR ever. Uh, <laughs> we need you to sleep in Model Land. We're gonna do inintelligible whispering because it's basically unintelligible as it is. <laughs> we just say Tyra Banks over and over again. I like it in Model Land. Us, okay, but why? <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a bunch of sips because I lost count, but I think it was at least ten. Yeah. Oh, and we haven't seen them eat yet or heard about them eat yet. I don't think. Oh yeah, I was gonna get. I was gonna go get a snack. Oh, snacks. Let me go run and get snacks. <laughs> okay, snacks. Yay. Yeah, this chapter is pretty long. It's 233 to... Uh, no. Uh, it's 233 to 246. You want to read to them? I can take this with me and listen as I'm getting snack. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna be, okay, let's talk crap. I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's talk about crap about Tyra Banks. No, I'm just gonna. I still like to imagine Tyra Banks is sitting watching the screen. Oh gosh. Like, and she's like, I'll shut her down. I can't see it because she would absolutely try to take me down for like bogus copyright. Probably. This isn't fair <laughs> but or it's like section whichever. We're using it for commentary. What the heck, Tyra? Tyra, why? <laughs> Tyra, why? All right, I'll... Okay, uh... Chapter 20, Run and Gun. Tucky stepped into our next class, Runaway Intensive. It took place on a long, narrow building the length of the Sapphire Esplanade, es yeah, Esplanade Mall and the width of a half-dozen bowling lanes. A curved staircase led up to a vast mezzanine. Each tread bore a hologram of an Intoxabella famous for her runway walk. Tookie spied many Intoxabellas she recognized, including CL. Her hologram was extremely faint, though, a ghost slowly disappearing. She thought about the terrifying vision of CL beating herself. Had it been a dream? Shiraz immediately jumped over and grabbed Tookie's hand. Yay, we are in the runway class, runaway class together. Stand by me. As they scuttled into the classroom, Tookie could feel two pairs of familiar eyes bitterballing her again. Sarpessa wrinkled her nose at Tookie like she smelled raw sewage. I see they haven't turned you into Tutu Barbecue yet. Chase laughed so hard she snorted. Tookie gritted her teeth. She was dying to retaliate and whisper something clever about digging through dumpsters. But then she closed her eyes and thought CL's advice. Don't stoop to her level. Don't stoop to her level. Dylan and Piper entered the room as well, beaming as they spied Tookie and Shiraz. Besides the four of, four of them and Zarpesta and Chase, Tookie recognized only two other girls in the room. Tear streaked Desperada. She was crying even harder now, if that was possible. Then Gennaro Nars whirled through the door. Everyone bristled. Ugh, not him, Tookie thought. We meet again, my dear Nosies, he growled, sweeping his gray eyes over the crowd. As you know, I am not only the administrator of the terror-filled THBC, I am also the official, the omnipotent, the one and only pace parader, sauntering serenader, gangway gallivanter, your runaway intensive educator. If you thought you came to despise me during your time at thigh-high boot camp, think again, because you have yet to experience the 
teach the strut in all my sumptuous, unfitted glory. My sumptuous, unfitted glory. Gennaro stuck his arms in the air to pose in a V and sashayed up and down the runway between the girls. The door burst open again and he went back around and glared at the intruder. It was Persimmon, the belladonna's devoted mannequin. Gennaro scowled. What the? Persimmon cleared her throat, cutting him off. By order of the most beloved of the beloved, the chicest of chic, the definer of all things beautiful, and the esteemed leader of the Bellas. The Belladonna declares that today's session of a runaway of runaway will be co-instructed by the only living triple seven. Per you're kidding me, right? Gennaro closed his slate colored eyes. Body girl in my class? Tuki glanced at Shiraz, thoroughly confused. Shiraz shrugs. The Intoxabella, known the world over, has refused to follow orders since she has returned to Model Land, so she has been ordered to repent by the sheikest of the sheik, Persimmon said, pointing through the window to the Belladonna statue. It seemed to be visible from every corner of Model Land. Then Persimmon yelled, You may enter now! The door flung open and in walked Ciel. She had on an outfit made of hundreds of copper and brass-colored handcuffs. There was a frazzled, painted look on her face. No one seemed to know how to react. Shiraz clapped tentatively, and a few girls joined in. Zarpessa and Chase scowled. I don't want her teaching me, Zarpessa said to Chase. I'd rather see her tortured some more in the O. Ciel stood before the girls, her eyes lifeless. Then she spied Tookie's small group in the corner. Her face slackened, and her eyes bulged, and she became a different person altogether. Her hair began to whip around her face and caught up in its own private wind. Taking a deep breath, she began to speak. A colorless girl in a colorless world, she said, now stained crimson because of her quest. It's a new poem, Tookie thought. Ciel's word poems were famous, recited by girls all over the world. Even Tookie had remembered them. Then she noticed Ciel cut her eyes to Piper. I'm stained crimson, Piper whispered. Is she talking about my Auntie Dottie? A microscopic glass below the criterion, Ciel went on. Journey... Aboard it, but soul cannot rest. And then Ciel looked at Shiraz. Does she mean me? Shiraz squeaked. What does she mean about my soul? I'm not dead. Ciel continued, now overwrought with emotion. A Rubenesque damsel surrounded by twigs, her lush car carcass devoured insects and fest. Dylan, who stood right next to Tookie, scoffed at Ciel. There better not be no bugs infesting me, she sputtered. And then finally, Ciel shut her eyes and placed her thumb on her on her chest. Their crony elected exemplar of excellence has failed them, whose soul demons now do possess. The room fell into a befuddled silence. Guru Ganero seemed to be amused by Ciel, a sly smile on, on his lips. Again, Tookie thought of the violent moment the night before. The moaning, the chanting, Ciel doing that to herself, the wax, the sorry, 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 Ciel's haunting wail. Ciel was acting so strange in the classroom now that Tookie began to believe that maybe she had truly seen the terror. Then Shiraz moved toward the window. Look, she was pointing at the Belladonna statue. It had begun to blink and move its arms. Slowly, it lowered itself and peered into the runaway classroom window. Then a crackle filled the air. Suddenly, a bouquet of flowers protruded from Ciel's lips. Everyone screamed except for Ganera, who looked quite pleased. Ciel wrenched the flowers out of her mouth, but a large rose bush popped out next. She struggled to remove the bush, trying unsuccessfully to avoid the thorns. After that popped out a purple orchid plant, then a mess of daisies and dandelions, then a bunch of springy tulips, then ivy. It was a long magician scarf of flora, all of which Ciel yanked from her mouth and tossed disdainfully to the floor. She sneezed and greenish petals shot out of her nose. Ganera sniggered. Looks like the Belladonna want to pretty up that foul mouth of yours, body girl, he said, eyeing Ciel's body up and down with disdain. Nookie wondered why he was calling her that, even though Ciel was... Still very striking, she wasn't quite as thin as she had been months ago when she was the top in Toxabella. All right, all right, Ciel yelled towards the window at the Belladonna statue. I'll stop reciting poems. I'll teach with Gennaro. I'll do whatever you say. Just stop this. The statue blinked placidly. Ciel coughed, reached into her mouth, and yanked out a perfect miniature bonsai tree. She glowered at the Belladonna statue. I know what I did, okay? I know I was wrong. I'll comply. I'll obey. I'll do what you ask of me. This seemed to satisfy the Belladonna. 
and she straightened up and resumed her position in the O. Gennaro cleared his throat, still not looking very happy with CL, that CL was there. Well, my little no sees, he said, beginning a lecture. You all possess centurions, yes, but simply wearing them around your slinky little waist won't do the trick anymore. To bring forth the true power of the centura, one must retract one's stomach, letting the centura magic force soak into one's soul. He glared at Seal. Show them, BG. Dejectedly, Seal sucked in her stomach in hard and closed her eyes. Her centura began to wave in, in its own wind. Music! Gennaro cried. The overhead lights dimmed and bass heavy music began to play. Marches! Guru Gennaro yelled even louder. On command, Ciel began to parade up and down the runway. Her legs fluid, her arms in perfect harmony. The lips pursed, the hands on hips. Gennaro watched Ciel walk back and forth. He looked to be mentally walking as well. His hips swayed a bit while his feet remained in place. It seemed to Tookie that the Guru was doing everything in his power not to jump on the runway and push Ciel out of the way. His lips pursed even harder when CL completed a triple spin. I guess gurus can be jealous of intoxicabellas, took he thought. CL disappeared behind a wall behind a wall in the back of the room. She returned in less than two seconds, now in a stunning dress covered in teddy bears, complete with bear claw like platform heels. Everyone even Chase gasped. Zarpe Zarpesa eyed CL like she hated her and wanted her and wanted to be here at the same time. A private fashion show by CL, took he thought. And she changed outfits so quickly. How? Tookie realized this was how CL had been able to do every designer's fashion show one season as the sole model. 173 fashion shows. Probably over 7,000 clothing changes. But how? What was going on backstage that got her back out on the runway so fast? Disappearing once more, CL appeared in mere seconds in yet another outfit. A floor-length gown made of various types of chains and a tangle of OG metal necklaces that glowed neon. One half of her hair was sheared in a pixie cut, the other half in a long curly bush. Mirrors on all sides of the room showed her every angle. Flashes from invisible cameras snapped as CL paused and posed at the end of the runway. She did the same quick change with four more outfits, the girls clapping with glee every time she emerged from the back room. But as she strutted to the end of the runway again, Tookie could see that whatever clothing rubbed against the skin of her back, CL did the most did the most minute flinch. The last outfit she donned was a red polka-dotted jumpsuit with an attached hood and polka-dotted boots. A necklace made of cantaloupe-sized, rough-colored pearls draped around her neck to her knees. Then the music ceased. Enough, you show off, Gennaro Blair, looking jealous. CL stopped in the middle of the runway. Well, Gennaro crossed his arms over his chest. Tell them the secret. CL took a breath and faced the bells. What you saw wasn't real. Spiegel cambio, Gennaro yelled. The mirrors on the wall folded in on themselves and transformed into a new kind of mirror that glowed from within. These mirrors played back CL's impromptu fashion show with one critical difference. Instead of CL gracefully walking down the aisle as the girls had witnessed, she was now running, her arms pumped, her legs leapt. She dashed as if in pursuit of life-sustaining oxygen. The mirror also transmitted what happened backstage. Instead of a room full of chaos and fashion show dressers, the space was empty, clothes blew off CL and disintegrated. New clothes appeared and dozens of tiny hands pulled them over her head and down her body. Everything happened at a rapid pace, like a pit stop at a car race in the city of 500. Finally, the replay showed CL exiting the backstage area in the red polka dotted jumpsuit. Her poses at the end of the runway were lightning fast and merely split seconds long. Fini! Ganera barked and the mirrors went dark. All the girls looked dumbstruck. So no sees, you idiots all know the fashion shows appear calm, smooth, and orderly when spectators view them, Ganera explained. And models appear to be dressed by human dressers, who aid and abet them into multiple outfits one after the other. That's just how everyone sees it. But it's not how it really plays out. Your centurions hold the power to hypnotize the audience, whether it's the fashion show auditorium or watching a recording in the privacy of their master bedrooms. It shows them what Model M wants them to see that this is the most important class you'll ever take a model in. For a clumsy no-see, we'll never book a go-see. Dylan jabbed Tookie in the ribs. All all the gurus got some swelled-up heads, don't you think? I ain't never taken so many important classes in my life. Tookie guggled. Shiraz raised her hand. Why do you lie? Gunnar smirked. My pine-sized Lilliputian 
Why does a lady never let a man see her bare face sans makeup? It ruins her glamour, her mystery. It makes her real. The more people know of our secrets, the less intriguing this place becomes. That's why I'm the head of the security, honey. I uphold the laws, the secrets, and the runaway. So how do you do it? Tookie dared to ask. CL raised her Centura. In order to make your running look like walking, you must have your Centura somewhere on your body. It's the only way. Zarpesa took a step forward. So I can be as fabulous as you just because I'm wearing my Centura? Out of my way, honey! Not so fast, the guru said. It's not simply enough to run at a super speed. The movements have to be super fast, elegant, precise, fluid, and swan-like. Just because you may think you're a swan don't mean you are doesn't mean you are one. Still everyone leaned forward, eager to try. Only Tookie hung back, her stomach swirling like she was still trapped on the Katakata boat. How am I gonna do this? I can't even run down a hallway without tripping. So who's going first, CL asked. I will do the walking, Shiraz cries, bursting. <gasps> Thank you. There's candy. Uh, There's these. Candy. Yes. I also, I also brought seltzer water. It's peach. It's Ooh, very good. fancy. Uh, because we're probably almost out of water. <laughs> yeah, I'm about. Um, we'll, we'll send him. <gasps> and I made you a regular kettle corn because everybody Yay. tells me the way I make popcorn is weird. So Thank like, oh. you. You're welcome. There, that works. <clears throat> Can we just say uh, sorry to interrupt you? I uh, love the why do we never let men show up, see us with our bare faces? And it's like, meanwhile, women women everywhere are like, hey, we have faces. <laughs> what the heck, Tyra? Not every or it's like I was saying earlier where my ex step grandmother was telling my sister to wear makeup around her husband, and it's like, well, Yeesh. shove it. But anyway, <laughs> um, Nars eyed her, or I will do the walking, Shiraz cried, busting in front of even Zarpes and Chase. Nars eyed her wearily. Just go up and down the runway once. No ducking into the back room. No to change clothes. Got it? Yes, yes. Shiraz had already started down the platform. The lights dimmed. She walked frantically, her face tense and tight. But... When everyone looked into the mirrors, it showed what she what was really happening. She was running so fast that she was a blur. Her arms jutted awkwardly. Her hair flew straight back from her face. Every time she reached the end of the runway, she slid to a stop like a baseball player stealing home. Gennaro clapped his hands over his cement-colored eyes. Girl, you look like a squirrel stuck in the middle of a busy street trying to avoid being crushed. Heck, if I had a car right now, I would make a point of running you over, little butt over the light snapped on again and oh, Shiraz it, butt. it didn't say butt oh oh okay never mind yeah all right it's the derogatory term for butt but i don't, I don't he said the a word everyone i'm sorry not the a word yep the light snapped on and shiraz walked dejectedly off the runway but i do the fast running she said to tookie Tookie just shrugged and squeezed Shiraz's hands. You'll you'll get better. Then, as Shiraz peered cr across the room, her expression changed. CL's been looking at me funny today, like she's the Labrian evil spirit. Look. Tookie looked up. CL was staring intensely at Shiraz again. Tookie couldn't tell if she was pleased or disgusted. As soon as CL noticed that two of them staring back, she averted her eyes. Piper leaned toward them. CL's making me really uneasy. What did we do wrong? Quiet, chattering, you want to be model monkeys, Gennaro roared. Bo's turn was next. On the runway, she looked like a walking zombie, her arms hanging heavy from their shoulder sockets. In the mirror, she ran with little en energy, her face stuck in a drone-like expression. Girl, you belong in model bland, Gennaro <sighs> joked. Desperado was supposed to go next, but she was still sobbing too hard. CL looked annoyed. What are you crying for? Do you want to be here or not? Desperado just sniffled and didn't answer. Listen, there's no way you can even try until you stop crying. See how it went on. Chase went next and said, In the mirror, she somehow made running... Uh, she almost made running look pornographic. Yep. Something that is being said... Uh, about a child. Yes, a 15 year Fuck. Shaking everything that shouldn't. On the on the runway, 
she she acted as though she was a dancer at a nightclub. Oh, God. I'm not old enough to look. Shiraz yells, closing her eyes. Gennaro groaned, this is model land, not, not town. He waved, chased off the runway, then looked at Tookie. Get up here, crazy eyes, it's your turn. Oh, reference to the eyes. Start chat saying it gets there are worse sentences in the book. Yeah. Just... Can, can I hyperventilate into this paper bag once I finish? Uh... <laughs> Or, and also the description of the model it reminds me of in cycle or just a brief pause it reminds me of in cycle 11 america's next top model when when sam she, she kind of or she like when she was posing she kind of lifted up the that kind of dress she was wearing but she was wearing leggings underneath but then it was this whole thing where she was never told not to like ha, like put her hands on her hips and have her dress right up because there's a scene where you see her like modeling and you like her like moving the dress like this. Again, she's wearing leggings underneath. And it cuts to the the designer saying like, um, don't touch your body like that. But then when you see him, you don't see his lips move. And when you see her doing like the crazy posing, you don't see him behind her. Oh. So she was really, she was like set up for that. And it's oh, like, God. oh, she was posing like this and this was, the, and that's just what that reminded me of. <clears throat> Chucky swallowed hard, her heart pounding. Her limbs swelled tangled already everyone was staring at her which made her cheeks feel hot she got up on the runway and set off trying to conjure up graceful in her cat tookie to the lion she extended her leg in a long leap then another then another she raised her head and tried to remain as calm and composed as she could i'm doing okay even her centura felt like it was working her heart lifted and her soul soared out of the corner of the eye she noticed ciel and the bella stared confusingly from the runway platform to the mirror why are her performance and her reflection the same? A cleft chin blonde named Kieran whispered. Tookie glanced at the mirror. It showed her awkward running movement. She turned away from the mirror and glanced down at her legs. They were running. The quick pace nowhere near as elegant slowed down runway walk. What is happening? Is it my centura? The thing hates me. She glanced out into the confused crowd. One, one face wasn't faced at all. In fact, she was sporting a clearly devilish smile. Zarpesa. Their pets up. All at once, Tookie knew she did something to me, something to mess up my walk. Tookie gritted her teeth and charged ahead. It doesn't matter. She ran like her life depended on it, losing sight of her position on the runaway. Determined not to let Zerpesa's evil face get the better of her, Tookie ran and ran and ran and ran all the way. Off the end of the runway, she knew she was no longer on the platform, but she was determined not to stop and ran and ran and ran and ran, and ran until boom, she hit the wall. She scores! She scores! Zarpesa hooted from the sidelines. Get up! Ciel yelled. Tookie struggled to stand and play it off, but it was too late. Ganero was already shaking his head. A failure on so many levels, on the runaway and off. Maybe those crazy eyes are half blind. Oh, geez. Tookie trudged to the sidelines, rubbing her sore forehead. What happened? Shiraz asked. I think it's Zarpesa, Tookie murmured, but I don't know what or how. By coincidence, Zarpesa was next. Shiraz turned and faced the runaway. Hmm. I hope she she fractures her spine. Zarpesa set off, her long legs extended, her arms swinging confidently, her head held high. Not once did an ankle wobble in her high heels. She reached the end of the runway, posed, then ran back, not stopping. And then, in a display of defiance, Zarpesa eyeballed Ciel, slipped behind the wall, and returned wearing a studded black bat-themed mini-dress with pronounced wing-like shoulder pads. She has to show she is a strong woman. That's a reference to uh, Drag Race Season 9 with um, Sasha Valor in a Russian accent talking about her shoulder pads and how else am I supposed to show him strong woman? <laughs> and Shea Kula was like, vote, B word. Anyway, she started to the end of the runway, stopped abruptly, and spun four times. One more spin than CL had done. She then disembarked from the platform like a gymnast and smirked haughtily at Guru Ganero. Insolent! Ganero gazed at Zarpesa with a mix of jealousy and disgust. Ciel gave a wave of her hand to Zarpesa as if to say, touche. The kaleidoclock glowed chartreuse. Thank God. Class is over, Ganero sighed. I guess we don't have time for the rest of you for today. Now, one of you, although an insipid show-off, may just have a little skill on the runaway, but just one? That's sad and pathetic, my noses. If you girls don't Watch out, actresses will take your place in the, on the future runways. And no, they are not famous or magical, but they're already making the ridiculous crimson carpets a runway event in itself. 
With a miffed eye roll and a disgusted sigh, he dismissed them. As Shiraz waved goodbye and flipped out the door, another figure appeared behind Tookie. It was Zarpesa. And there was a wide smirk on her face. Tough thing about your runaway collision, she trolled. I cannot imagine what went wrong. Her eyes flicked to Tookie's ways. Tookie whipped her head up. What did you do? There was a devilish look on Zarpesa's face. I'll tell you a little story. I love the yellow dress I wore here, so I kept it as one of my two items. I still feel that being allowed to keep only two items is still not really fair. I mean, my acupuncturist grandmother said when she was here, she was allowed to keep five things. But then I had an idea. Why couldn't I cut out my dress and make one item ten? So you see, I've got a new yellow skirt, yellow gloves, a yellow beret, a yellow neck scarf, leggings, panties, a bra, two thumb bracelets, and... Oh, did I tell you that I found a centura under your bed? I'm still so, so so perplexed as to how it got there. I mean, you're wearing it, aren't you? Or maybe you have two. One magical and one not. Tookie blinked, slowly understanding what Zerpissa was telling her. She touched the centura around her waist. It was the same yellow as Zerpissa's dress. Perhaps a touch off from the yellow of the real centura. You didn't. Zerpissa leaned her face close. That's right, I didn't. I didn't do a thing. But you know, if you start telling stuff about me to your friends, to anybody, it'll be bad for your soul. I'm a true believer and, oh, what was it called? Your chalker friend w would know. Then she snapped her fingers. I know, come on. Zarpesa spun around triumphantly and met up with Chase. Embarrassed and furious, Tookie turned to exit the class and locked eyes with Ciel. The intoxicable appeared at her. Her eyebrows furred in her frown. Tookie's stomach clenched. It was the same ominous look she'd given Shiraz and the other girls earlier. Ciel turned and marched away. That was when Tookie noticed that some of the red polka dots on the back of her jumpsuit were richer, whiter, and blotchier than the others. All along Ciel's back, just under her shoulder blades, and traveling up and down her spine, something red seeped through the cloth, growing larger and more garish by the second. It took Tookie only seconds to realize what it was. Red body juice. Ugh. Why is or I, I feel like Zerpiss is a self insert for Naomi Campbell. Maybe, I don't know. Red body juice is not my favorite way to say blood. Yeah, but I or I hear people say that on uh YouTube to try to defeat the YouTube censors. So I'm like red body juice. Yeah. I don't know. Not YouTube censors. <laughs> Please. We're we're doing nothing wrong. Uh blame Tyra Banks. <laughs> it's all Tyra Banks' fault. Just like most of the the models on the show talking about their trauma. Tyra Banks. Gasp. She's cheating on Theophilius? Not Theophilius. <gasps> Theophilius. That's a long <laughs> chapter. Yes. And it's just like, oh no, why is CL being so mean to them? It was her. She was. <sighs> It's like what she does with the models on the show. She just drops them in, doesn't really give them anything to go off of, and then is mad at them when they don't do it perfectly every time. I imagine Zarpes has a valley girl voice, Darth Sidious says. And then Salt Mountain says, Since Naomi Campbell was mentioned, I feel the need to inform you in the America's Next Top Model Wii game, they reference her and Kate Moss as Niobe Camp Show? And Kate Grass. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Oh, and thank you for the food. You're welcome. I was like, we need to eat our feelings. <laughs> yes. Iobi Camp Shell. Kate Grass. How dare you disrespect the Kate Moss in that way? <laughs> Kate Grass, Kate Grass, that's such a downgrade from Moss. Moss is amazing. Very almost got reviewed. There you go. Mine's on the floor. On the floor like Kalo. Kate Grass, that's the Walmart version of Kate Moss. Oh it's no. Like Kate Moss. Oh no. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, it was weird. I was downstairs making food, and I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to watch the stream. This is <laughs> weird. <laughs> All right. Chapter 21. On page 246. 46 has been, it's like 
my lucky number, which I'm only pointing out because I'm trying to remind myself to take every um, illusion to luck that I can get in this in this <laughs> moment. Uh oh, not dragon. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't want to. I'm pushing things. Ah, there we go. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chapter twenty one. Jammers, chowers, and poachers. Oh, is this the eating class I was warned about? In oh chat? no. Rubbing her aching forehead, Tookie walked down Beautification Boulevard to her third and last class of the day. Mastication. She touched her centura on her hip. The correct centura, which she found exactly where Zapesa had said it was, under her bed. She felt a familiar pang in her stomach again, a mixture of pity and envy for Zarpesa. There was anger in that pang, too. Tookie couldn't help... Um... I don't know if that popcorn is good. I, oh, I don't, it is. I just I don't. don't. Eat, I don't eat the kettle corn, so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that it's good. It's good. I just am trying to like cover myself eating from camera, so they're not like, ew, we can see the popcorn. Oh, I was just straight up eating. I was just chowing down. I was like, eh. Fine. <laughs> people pay money for this, <laughs> or they watch YouTube streams of people eating. So, tell your friends. Uh, mukbang. Oh, you get your it. get the Australian accent ready. Oh, God, I don't do a very good Australian accent. I'm so sorry in advance to all the Australians watching. Um, she felt familiar pang. There was anger in that pang, too. Tookie couldn't help it. I know she's got a secret, but why does that girl have to be so nasty? Slowly, she realized that the pangs were due to something else, too. Hunger. It had been over a day since Tookie has eaten anything. Oh. All oh, an absolutely... An absolutely rarity for her. An absolutely rarity? Wouldn't it be an absolute rarity? I'm not a. I'm not an expert. I uh, yeah, absolute rarity. You're right. Um, but she miraculously hadn't been hungry until this very moment. Now her stomach felt like it was caving in on itself, and her throat felt parched from all the running into walls in runaway. Tookie finally found the site of mastication class. The building was giant bowl made up of multicolored bricks with a ladle-shaped smokestack poking out of the top. As she got closer, Tookie could see that the bricks were actually loaves of wheat, white, pumpernickel, and raisin bread. Butter and cream cheese served as grout. Beef and chicken kebabs provided additional building support as the windows seemed effervescent, like they were carbonated. Tookie stuck out her tongue to lick the window. Don't do that. Tookie turned to see Dylan running toward her. I just tried it, Dylan said. Out of breath, I licked a kebab and zapped. Crazy. Tookie looked at the building with disappointment in her eyes. But I'm starving. I could even eat chocolate. Oh, that's right, guys. She oh, yeah. Like chocolate. Oh, yeah, Dylan said sarcasti. Disgusting, horrendous chocolate. Well, it is in front of you, right there, Dylan said, pointing to some brownies serving as a window trim. But just might, but it just might kill you. Ha ha, very funny, Tookie said. My first class was so friggin' hard. Oh my gosh, Tookie. It's called Tick Tock Color Clock. It was supposed to explain how to use the clocks around here, but no one, but not one of us walked on, out knowing. A friggin' thing. How was your last class? A pain in more ways than one, Tookie said quietly, rubbing her forehead again. She shared what had happened to her in Runaway, including the story of Zarpesa Centura Switcheroo. Dylan clenched her jaw. That girl deserves an ass whooping. <laughs> no one treats my Tookie like that. Tookie blushed. She'd never been anyone's Tookie. It felt good. It's tempting, but I don't think we should stoop to her level, Tookie concluded as they walked toward the building. Dylan made a face. What's she got against you anyway? Zarpesa's threat swam into her mind. Tookie thought about sharing Zarpesa's secret with Dylan, but then just shrugged. I have no idea. They walked into the entryway. Suddenly, Tookie's ears filled with the sound of frying bacon. Her nose twitched with the most delicious smell ever. A combination of juicy fat from soup, dumplings, barbecue ribs, sourdough bread, and rich melted butter. 
Her stomach let out another grumble. On a door, the word mastication was spelled. It's macadamia nut, uh, in macadamia nut. Inside was a large three-tiered room. Um, bulbous copper receptacles stood on each tier. Copper pipes connected the receptacles and disappeared into smooth concrete walls. The smells of food was everywhere. Uh, a tall, striking, lovely woman with a round face and brilliant blue eyes burst through two swinging doors at the front of the room. Her legs made an upside-down, bowed-out U, as though she just jumped off a horse after a long ride. Her arms were extended, as if she were holding the reins. She wore a tool belt filled with bright, shiny copper knives, ladles, tongs, and spatulas, and a chef's apron that had all kinds of food, cobs of corn, veggie sticks, blue corn tortillas, and prawns still in their shells with the heads attached, stretched into the fabric. The walking buffet didn't stop there. She wore armbands made of roasted garlic. Her pants were made of burlap potato sack. And atop her sat a hybrid of chef's hat and cowboy hat filled with tiny bags of spices. Her hair consisted of long tube-like food items. Strands of spaghetti, wisps of licorice, blades of wheatgrass. We did not need three paragraphs to describe this person. <laughs> She sat down on the edge of the desk, nibbling on her hair, saying nothing. Body horror? Uh, I mean, people fair. do nervously, like, chew on their hair. Okay, fair. But she's eating her hair because it's spaghetti hair. Uh, and... I don't know, yeah. <laughs> More girls spilled into the room. Something whipped past Tookie's ankle. It made a teeny boing sound like, the, like a bug of, like a like a bug on springs. As the rest of the Bellas filled in, including Chaste and Zarpesa again, uh, the Lakey sisters and Kamalini, more of the creature, um, Kamalini, more of the creatures zoomed through the air. Girls seemed, girls screamed, Kamalini clasped her hands over her head, Bengor. Finally, Tookie spied one standing still on a table. It was a small mouse-like thing with pointy ears, a long tail, and a slit across its belly. Uh, excuse me, Zarpesa screamed to the guru, who didn't seem alarmed by the chaos. This classroom is infested with vermin. The guru is... Wait, is Zarpesa the one that has the valley girl accent? Yes. Okay. Uh, excuse me, this classroom is infested with vermin? <laughs> the girl chuckled. The guru chuckled. Nah, they're just... Oh no. Nah, they're just rude jerky. <laughs> Gra grabbing a set of chopsticks from the table, she caught a hopping creature as it passed. You little bugger. <laughs> she tossed <laughs> into her mouth. They, they taste like chicken if you catch one. I'll let you eat it. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Half the class shuddered, but Tookie salivated at the jerky. She was so starving she'd have eaten anything. The guru grabbed another jerky, then hop, then hops to the desk. Good day. My name's Laura Brown. The guru, the guru, guru Laura to you. She had an accent from. Gosh, what it, what it, what is the name? She had an accent from didgeridoo, a hot land full of features. Uh... The usual. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry if you're Australian viewers. <laughs> I know we have some of them. I'm so sorry. There's someone out there that's like, Tyra Banks, why would you do this to my <laughs> to my country or continent and country of a, origin? A beautiful country, continent, and island. And island that of origin. Been desecrated this way. Uh <laughs> Tyra, how could you do this? The land of Hugh Jackman. This is what you're doing to the land of Hugh Jackman, Tyra. We need to get uh Tommy Wiseau to make the movie version of Model Land. <laughs> I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. And this is where mastication happens, Laura continued. In this class, we only use... we on, The only one who will use magic is me. Therefore, these lovely yellow sashes around your waist have got to go. Uh, she walked around the class, confiscating all the centaurs, labeling them with each girl's name so they wouldn't get confused. Tookie breathed a sigh of relief. At least I know Zarpeso won't sabotage my centura in this class. Then Guru Laura turned, returned to her desk. Okay, Bella, stick out your tongues. I'm so sad that 
that Gabe doesn't have this chapter. <laughs> no! The, the girls looked at each other nervously, then obeyed. Laura walked up to Dylan and grabbed her perfect pink tongue between her fingers. Ah, Dylan, your favorite food is... She twisted Dylan's tongue up and down, around, inspecting it closely. Bo Big Teak Deep Dish Pizza Pie. Dylan jolted back and put her hands... Oh, that wasn't Dylan speaking. Um, Honey, don't say pizza pie unless you've got some. Laura turned next to Tookie's tongue. Your favorite food is an odd one. Whipped cream. We have the mention of whipped cream. Mm, whipped cream. Straight out of the can, am I right? Tookie nodded immediately. Her mouth began to water. Next, Laura appraised the likeies. Even her favorite food isn't like a food. Like... <laughs> it just... Well, I, or, and I think it's because I remember, uh, Tyra or like uh Tyra or one of the get or judges on the judging panel early on of America's Next Top Model was um Kamara Lee Simmons, and she talked about how um if you want a food that that feels filling that isn't a lot of calories, then whipped cream is what you would eat. And apparently, when she was younger, she would eat a lot of whipped cream because it was inexpensive, and it's um, like you're eating. And uh, uh, at least I think so that's depressing um okay um, <laughs> the whipped cream <laughs> no not the whipped cream i'm just waiting for laser or misfiring or any of our australian viewers sammy to show up and just be like hey i'm sorry guys if you do this i'm really sorry this is offensive to all australians tara banks what are you gonna do <laughs> we have an army of various australian animals ready to confront you and ask you why you're doing these things this is the most on the nose australian thing since 321 penguins with the one penguin that was australian and he always had his little bonsai tree <laughs> <laughs> um laura turned next to tookie's tongue oh we knew this whipped cream yep um next laura praised the likeys all four girls stuck out their tongues and laurel frowned sugar-free breath mint the likeys nodded eagerly they are our favorites they sat down the line we suck one each they said down the line they said down the line it says they speak not in unison but one <laughs> word at a time oh my god like an improv class <laughs> four girls one brain oh god laura gave them an odd look that's no way to live dearies you realize your bodies need fuel correct you realize you'll still be beautiful if you chew and swallow the likeys wrinkled their noses in unison. So far, a more wholesome way to take this than I was expecting. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> then she turned to Zarpesa. Hmm, Laura mur muttered, uh, looking at Zarpesa's tongue. White truffle wagyu saffron risotto topped with almas caviar. Right, I'm obsessed, Zarpesa yelled. Our private chef prepares it when we're not dining out at La Dooley. Oh, but wait, sweetie, there's something else I'm seeing. Zarpesa's face quivered. What? 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 Oh, she, I keep forgetting she has the Valley Girl accent. Um, a blend of discarded foods, room temperature, slightly decaying, puzzling, very much Darrow food, mate. Dar Darrow? Dylan whispered to Tookie. Tookie hesitated, but decided she would translate. Darrow means homeless in the didgeridoo dialect. Dylan and Tookie looked back at Zarpesa to find Zarpesa was already glaring at them. Um, Madam, how do you know our favorites? Kamalini said. Her favorite food was the special vegetarian samosa used to eat. She used to eat watching her mother on movie sets. Laura adjusted her hat. Because I, mate, am a tongue reader, I can tell who, what all of your tastes are at all times. Reading tongues for me is like reading palms. I know what you want, when you want it, what your tummy's hap when your tummy's happy, and she pointed eye at the likeies. When it's sad, you're all very hungry right now, aren't you? Everyone sta started to murmur. Tookie clutched her belly. Laura removed her chef's hat, revealing a crazy stiff ponytail that looped straight into the sky. She tipped the hat upside down and made a spilling motion. A fine yellow smoke swept up and slithered around the room, snaking into each and every girl's nostrils. Oh, Chase said in a big whiff. It smells like honey roasted almonds and oysters stepped in, steeped in pomegranate juice. No, it smells like virgin olive oil bread with a slight 
uh, it smells like virgin olive oil bread with a slight hint of mold, which is okay because it can be sliced off and a half eaten and a half eaten pheasant. Zarpeza swooned before stopping herself. Oh, this is so sad. Dylan's nose twitched. Boo big teak, boo big teak pizza pie. She muttered, her eyelids fluttering with pleasure. Where is it, baby? Where is it? Um, and when the smoke trail reached Tookie. She smelled delectable whipped cream. Whipped cream again. Just whipped cream. Suddenly, the pipes leading to the large copper kettles began to tremble. Fifteen harnesses dropped from the ceiling, dangling above each vat. Zarpesa leapt to her feet. There's food in there. All your all your favorites, Guru Laura said. Find your food receptacle and then climb inside the harness. I'm so sorry. Tookie followed her nose to the vat she was sure uh, she was sure was hers, climbed into the harness and dangled over it. And oh, what a delicious spread it was. About a hundred cans of different types of whipped cream, heavy cream, light cream, vanilla cream, all spewing their contents into the air. She tried to grab some of the white stream. Don't like that. But she but her hands didn't quite reach. Darn it, she cried in frustration. Next to her, Dylan groped fruitless as well. Well, Chase let out a breathy whimper. Uh, why can't we eat? This is cruel and unusual punishment, Zarpeza cried. With a wave of the guru's hand, a round white kitchen timer appeared on the stainless steel table and counted off the seconds with loud, jarring ticks. After about ten seconds, the timer dinged and each girl's harness lowered closer to her vat, almost close enough to touch the bounty. Tookie groped for the whipped cream cans until her arms arched. She was so hungry that she was be that her head was beginning to spin. Laura strolled around the room, dipping a finger into each girl's slop. Outstanding pizza pie, she told Dylan. The perfect blend of acidity and sweetness, she said about Kamalini's samosas. And as she plucked one of the Likey's breath mints from their shared vat and slipped it into her pocket. I'll save this for later. Rude Jerky leaves your breath so rancid it makes koalas fall out of the gum trees. <sighs> Tyra. Tyra. Um, she plucked a can marked heavy creamiest cream out of Tookie's giant vat <laughs> and squirted it into her mouth. Brilliant, she announced, a globe of whipped whip remaining on her lip. A timer dinged again, and the harness dropped a few more inches. Tookie's arms swung, her legs kicked. She could almost get one, but the harness recoiled, and she and all the girls sprang all the way back up. Everyone groaned. Patience, Bellas, Loro chanted. Patience. Brr, the kitchen timer bleated so forcefully. I think is how I was supposed to say it. The kitchen timer bleated so forcefully it vibrated right off the table. Loro clapped an instant, and instantly the harness went all the way down, allowing the girls' heads to ha and hands to reach their food. Yes, Tookie grabbed some cans, inverting them and squeezing endless streams of whipped cream into her mouth. <laughs> then she, I'm I'm up to like seven different whipped cream references at the end of this chapter. So many. So many. She then she did it again and again and again, tossing bent cans to the side as she reached for new ones right away. This isn't a meal, Tookie. In no time, her face was covered in cream. Her brand new model land uniform slopped with goop, and her arms dripped with dissolved froth as she brought um as she brought another can to her mouth. It slipped out of her hands and plopped right into her oversized flower brooch. Tookie glanced down befuddled. Somehow the pain had swallowed up the can. But when she reached into the center of the brooch, voila! Her fingers curled around the top of the can once more. It's a secret food receptacle, she marveled. A mint, re a mini refrigerator, just like I had in my dumbwaiter locker at B3. Oh my god, the reference back to B3, no! <laughs> That's why it was overly described. It's page 255! We're going back to B3! Uh, the class continued to gorge with gusto. Dylan closed her eyes and slowly relished every bit of boobig teak pie, laughing like a lunatic after each swallow. Chase slurped the pomegranate juice, 
Zarpesa stuck her entire face into a brew of fish chunks, clumps of old spaghetti with coagulated carb carbonara sauce, half-eaten sandwiches, and gooey yellowish rice. Ugh. Uh, Sounds like background food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Here, we pulled this out of the trash just for you guys. <laughs> That's how we love the extra so much. Yeah. Oh, this right. was supposed to be their favorite food. The Lakey stared nervously at their vat of multicolored sugar-free breath mints. Finally, each girl used the thumb and index finger to pick one up and placed it under her tongue. Kamalini was the only one who seemed unfazed, eating with calm, measured bites, savoring the experience. The vats of food tipped over, the contents spilling onto the floor. The Bellas groaned in unison, still unfulfilled. The empty vats rose in the ceiling and hovered there, and the harness released, spilling, spilling the girl straight into the food slop. Almost everyone, even Tookie, recoiled at the blended ingredients. Only Zarpesa crawled hound-like on all fours, <laughs> her head down, scraping the floor to retrieve the vile vittles with her tongue and incisors. This isn't, this isn't offensive. Oh my gosh. This isn't, this isn't homeless, um, r repulsed or anything. They're, they're definitely uh, treating this issue with respect. Oh gosh. Because Tyra was poor that one, or homeless that one time. It was even crazier than the way she'd scuttled around in the dumpster behind the restaurant at Peppertown. In Peppertown. The vat then crashed to the floor and morphed into elevators. One per girl. Guru Loro gestured to them. Even though Tookie already took had dessert, you other Bellas haven't. Get in, mates. Mates. Can't, <laughs> can't even. The girls boarded the food vat carriages. The elevators didn't go up or down, however, but slid across the floor and transported everyone to a nearby building. The sound of gushing water filled the air. The elevator, whoop, uh, the elevator doors opened, revealing the back of group showers in shiny facility of chrome and translucent surfaces. But the liquid spurting from the nozzles was anything but clear. One nozzle spurted rich cassis. Another spouted thick, deep brown liquid. Another showerhead's waterfall was a rich tan hue. The smell tickled Tookie's nostrils. Lovely scents filled the air. Caramel, boysenberry, and marshmallow. Marshmallow, Dylan Swoon. Sorry, I'm just trying to make her um, sound like uh, Honey Boo Boo's mom as much oh, as I can. Oh, gosh. Um, eyeing the fluffy confection streaming from the showerhead. She looked as though she was about to faint. I'm showering, I'm showering, I'm showering with you sweet treats, mate. Guru, Guru, the, the teacher, the teacher said. Mm. Guru Loro encouraged them, go for gold. The girls rushed to the showers, all except the likeys, who stood on the sidelines, sucking their mints. Chase checked to make sure the guru wasn't watching them watching, then knocked down a brunette girl as she gunned for the dark chocolate shower. God help us all. <laughs> Tyra, why? Jackie ran over the fallen brunette, scooped her up, and then made a break for the salted caramel stream, cupping her hands under the faucet and burying her face in her palms. Zarpesa stuck out her mouth under a maple syrup spray, but her shower jammed as it forced out broken bits of pecan pralines. Letting out a frustrated wail, she ripped the fixture from the wall, allowing a solid stream of maple pecan praline sauce to flow directly into her wide-open mouth. Kamalini let about nine heaping tablespoons of pistachio coolie drip onto her tongue, emit emitted a pleasant squeal, and wiped her chin clean, being extra careful not to let her hand bengor, uh, head bengor uh, get soaked. Dylan dove headlong into the marshmallow shower. The liquid covered her hair and face and melted all over her uniform, legs and arms. I don't I don't like I don't like this. Yeah. The, I don't like this at all. This I don't, is weird. I don't I don't like this. Be whimsical. <sighs> there was a look on her face as if her actions were involuntary. It's so good. Wait, who is this? This is Dylan. It's so good, she kept crying. Just so good. Last lick, last lick, Bellamites. 
Eller, L- Laura, sorry, my brain just re scrambled everything. Laura bellowed, bellowed, and moments later, the showers all dried up. Moans and groans filled the room. I hope you enjoy the feast as much as I enjoyed feeding you. Now it's time for the lesson on jammas, showers, and poaches. I don't like, I, I'm so, I'm so uncomfortable. Mm. She approached the oyster and chocolate covered sha- chase and pulled a green stamp from under her chef cowboy hat and pressed it on Chase's wrist. Hey, hey, Chase said as she stared at her new brand. Gut chowder, it said in a square green letters. You are very slow when it comes to reaching... When You are very slowly... Oh, sorry. You ate very slowly, and when you reached your perfect amount, you stopped, never getting over full, Laura explained. That's the first time anyone has ever told me that it's good to stop, even when something feels really good. Don't like any of this. I'm very uncomfortable. Uh... I'm super uncomfortable. Uh, Chase licked a bit of leftover chocolate off her thumb. Uh, uh... I'm concerned. Loro glared at her. Then Guru Loro circled the room. Kamalini also got a gut chowder stamp. For eating steadily and continuously, and for eating the side of vitamin C loaded spiced cauliflower that had come with her samosas. Then Laura approached the Likies. When the four girls stuck out their hands, their stamps glowed red and said, Gut poacher. We need to talk, ladies, <laughs> Laura said quietly. You're restricting nutrients your Bella bodies need, and feeling awful about nutrients you do get. The Likies stiffened. That's not true, Guru. The Guru gave them a warm look. When you want help, I hope to, I hope you'll give me a bell. I mean, that's somewhat positive, I guess. Yeah. When Guru Loro approached Zarpesa, only half of the stamp would materialize in the Guru's hands. The word gut. Okay, Zarpesa. I must admit, with a rue, with all, with all rue respect. Uh. Your munching habits are doing my head in. Uh, for now, only the only thing's for sure, you have you have a gut. So here you go, mate. And she stamped Zarpace's plain and simple gut. Then she approached Tookie. A red stamp marred Tookie's hand. Gut jammer. You eat with voraciousness of a of a Prega's Tasmanian devil during her first trimester. All she ate was whipped cream. But she ate a lot of it, I guess. Laura explained. <laughs> however, your stomach is however your stomach is telling me that it's never full. Is that true? Yes, because it's only whipped cream. Chucky nodded. This woman really can read my stomach's mind. All the tummy stuffing in the world won't fill your fill out your fragile frame, mate. Not anytime soon. Anyway, when you reach your twenties, your rear may begin to plump up and then We'll talk about the butt. Uh. And then you'll be crying a different tune. Uh, until then, and even after then, be happy with what looking what the looking glass tells you. It ain't half bad, kid. Fifteen. 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 Ain't half bad, Tookie thought. It was a thought Laura had told her. It was as though Laura had told her she was the most beautiful girl in the world. Finally, Laura walked over to Dylan, who was still licking residual marshmallow off the webby spaces between her fingers. She red stamped her hand, gut jammer too. You're also a shoveler. Just today I just today I am, Dylan said quickly. I haven't guzzled like that in I don't know how long, really. And anyway, you can you blame me? I was starved. Uh, Laura gave her an I know better look. I'm I'm picking up that food has an emotional effect on you. Dylan froze. No, it doesn't. The guru held Dylan's gaze. Dylan lowered her eyes. Then Laura tucked the stamps back into her hat and faced the class. For the few of you who have made who will make it all the way to the intoxibella status, there are a few things that would challenge you more than food. What to have, when to have it. How to have it, whether to have it, starvation and oversatiation. I'm sorry, I just I couldn't even pronounce that word, so the so I abandoned the accent. <laughs> or not acceptable, mates, mates. 
Models are known for restriction, restricting their food or going on binges. Oh gosh, but but that's not what we're going for here. And besides, the Guru Loro trailed off making a face. Those lolly-headed leading ladies restrict as well. Worse than models in my rue opinion. But here, moderation is what we're going for. One of the things I'll be teaching you here is... Sorry, the, the, rue, the rue opinion got me. How to find your balance. All your future meals will be des designed by me. How you eat is important to your success. I hate to sound like I'm myself, but this isn't the most important class you'll be taking at Model Land. Yeah, yeah, our last guru said that too, Chase said, rolling her eyes. The girl named Bibiana from Terra Bossa Nova raised her hand. What do you mean, future meals designed for us? I, I'm so full, I feel like I don't need to eat for a week. A smile stretched across the guru, guru's lips. She tipped her chef cowboy hat again. It's a chef cowboy hat hybrid. A chef cowboy hat hybrid for yes. the Australian. Yes. And the same <laughs> yellow smoke swirled. He has a little present from you to me. The gift of renewed the gift of renewed appetite. You'll now so hungry you could eat the ass out of a low flying duck. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. I <laughs> the one out of the where? <laughs> the, the duck. Oh, Darth Sidious is like, it's the duck part. And it's like, the, the why? What? <laughs> Nani? <laughs> um, Another thing about butt, so. Um, uh, the dessert shower is retracted into the floor. Dessert showers is a hopefully new phrase to model land. Retracted into the floor. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just making sure I didn't, like, kick anything. No, no, you're good. Um, revealing an entryway into an enormous room filled with modular tables lying within cutouts in the floor. The wall to the left contained a floor-to-ceiling window, the Belladonna statue clearly visible through the glass. The wall to the right was made of hundreds of tiny glass doors, each with a mouth-watering dish of food inside it. The doors were separated into color-coded um, sections and labeled with the three designations that Loro had given the girls in the shower room. Gut chowder, gut jammer, gut poacher. The wall in front of the girls boasted the name of the establishment in large letters. Eats with a Z. Ooh. I get it, Tookie said. The M is for model land, O is for opera, D is for dorms, and E is for eats. But it spells model land, too. <laughs> we have two more, so so many more letters. We we have the we're up to M O D E. Eats is our pace. Eats is our pace. Interrupted sarcastically. Wow, you're so brilliant. Dylan narrowed her eyes. There has to be an L. Tookie said, ignoring Zarpesa. Yeah, stands for idiot. Yeah, stands for idiot. Zarpesa mumbled under her breath, like you. How about Lamo? How about Lamo? Dylan spat back. <laughs> Unable to hold it in any longer, like you. Starpace's eyes blazed. Lardass. Chase snickered. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Hit her. I'm just kidding. Dylan, Joke violence. Violence is never the answer, but also, I cannot tell you how. <laughs> That's it. I can't tell you how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the sentence. Um. Chas snickered. Chase snickered. Dylan whipped around to face Chase. Loose Lucy? Loose Lucy. <sighs> <laughs> Loudmouth. Zarpesa retorted, a little bit of spit spewing from her mouth. Leech lizard. Lay off, lay off, Tookie interrupted, inserting herself between the two of them. Dylan turned away, but she was smiling wide, having gotten the last L insult. Chase and Zarpesa shot Tookie and Dylan looks that seemed to say, just you wait, hags. You've done it now. <gasps> An upper-class Bella approached the eats wall and spoke into a large pair of lips. Amber jo of Ange Angel City, cream of wheatgrass soup and a side of wheat toast with but butter. With a brief chime, the door opened and a steaming bowl shot out. Uh, in it was the most hideous-looking grass-green soup Tookie had ever seen. 
This is the E, Bella's, Laura, oh, this is the E, Bella's, <laughs> Laura announced, your cafeteria, and I am, and I am its executive chief. Enjoy, ladies, dine, appreciate, but please try to find balance. This character deserves nothing worse than a corny, terrible accent. <laughs> um, As do all of them. We're supposed to, we're supposed to dine now? Zarpeza looked nervously from the upper class Bella's to the rotting food all over her uniform. We look certifiable. I, I know, mate, uh, Laura replied. A rude jerky materialized in front of her again, and she chased after it, pinning it with her chopsticks and popping it into her mouth. But no Bella's first day is complete without a stinky, sloppy, slimy trip to the E. Just another part of earning your, your keep here in Model Land. Bon appetit. Everyone collected their centuras from a bin and hurried to the wall of goodies. Only Dylan remained where she was, her bottom lip trembling slightly, slightly, still covered in marshmallow, her centura held limply in her sticky hand. Tookie touched her arm. You okay? Dylan flinched, then tried to smile. Uh, loved her didgery whatever accent. She was nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, something about Dylan seemed deflated. Tookie wanted to ask what it was, but she was afraid of upsetting her. So she pulled Dylan towards the eats wall, trying to ignore the scornful looks from the upper class Bellas. All the girls in our class look crazy. Oh, all the girls in our class look crazy. So why the heck are them Bellas only staring at us? I mean, they acting like our genes are contagious or something. Tookie joked, trying to imitate Dylan in an effort to cheer her up. Oh, that was Tookie imitating Dylan. Okay. Ah. Uh -huh. Just then, a loud collective coo erupted from the other Bellas. And look at that. We've read 100 pages today. Good for us. Yay. I feel like we're making better time than we did yesterday. Maybe. I don't know. Or last. Or la that... Did I say yesterday? Yeah. Oh, my God. Last <laughs> week. Last week. Last time. Uh, uh -huh. The girls nearest the windows rushed to look outside. The rest of the Bellas in the room followed the stampede. Sexified succulent, someone cried. Uh, uh, I'm going to hyper hyperventilate. I'm going to hyper hyper hyperventilate, moaned a girl wearing large sunglasses. I called firsties, exclaimed Chase, Chase and ladies and lasties and tops and bottoms. Tookie and Dylan drifted toward the window. Kamalini stood behind them, trying to peer out too. But there wasn't an inch of space, and no one seemed to want to move aside to give them room. Finally, Dylan pulled over three chairs and stood um, three chairs and stood on one. Tookie and Kamalini jumped into the onto the others. Outside the window, three strapping young men walked the length of the building. They held a girder of steel over their heads. A photographer snapped their picture again and again. Tookie squinted hard at the rippling muscles and chiseled face of one of the guys. He was staring mesmerized at a building to the left of the E. She knew him. It was the boy who'd wanted to help her with directions earlier that day. Anyone know who he is? A girl screeched, pointing to him. I do, Tookie wanted to say. His name is Bravo, responded another student. The other two are Webb and Alexander. The girls began frantically tapping glass. <laughs> tapping the glass. Don't tap the glass. They hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Webb and Alexander noticed the girls and smiled, waved, and licked their lips. Bravo shifted his gaze from the building to the girls, but just smiled politely to the group, and then looked away. That just stirred up this gr the girls even more. They slammed their knuckles against the glass. Bravo tossed the steel girder into the air for a series of action pictures. He caught it once the photographer snapped the camera. The girls inhaled. He caught it a second time. The girls exhaled. Show off, Tookie thought. He tossed a third time, and the girder slipped out of his fingers and came hurtling down, sharp edge first, snagging the skin on his forearm. The girls cried out in unison. Then it happened. Something no one in all of Monoland could have predicted. The bleeding. Bravo looked up at the window and focused on only one face. A whipped cream caked, punch bowl headed girl with one green eye and one brown eye to be exact. What? 
<laughs> ah, my buff arm got ripped open by the steel thingamajig. Let me look at the main character. I don't know. <laughs> Let's use every stereotype we've we've um established for her to describe her too while we're at it. Oh gosh, she talks about ruse a lot. She talks about ruse a lot. Yeah, a lot of ruse and oh my god, they taste like chicken if you catch them. Bravo is the love interest in this book. Yes, which is funny because there was a sec, there was a different love interest that was set up that we'll probably never see again. Yeah, Belias. Yeah, and I incorrectly said that I I think that uh or or. During another CM, I was like, oh, in the trailer, Tyson Beckford was the affiliate, but it, no, he brought, I, I believe Tyson Beckford played Bravo. So now that's who I'm imagining playing Bravo is Tyson Beckford. That instrument is the Aboriginal. Hi, Laser. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If only Miss Byring and Sammy were here too. I'm so sorry. I, I just. All it, the Australianism. <laughs> they were like, all the Australianism go into one character, right down to the cowboy hat, chef's hat combo. Yep, and from the town of Didgeridoo. Mm hmm Avery Honorable Official Australian over here. Oh, God, <laughs> did I get it revoked? I probably got it revoked. Oh, no. <laughs> Australian. I do not remember the opera. They were only there for, like, a minute for, like, the beginning ceremony part. Oh, yeah, and it was just like, oh, look. The place behind all the zippers. Oh, yeah, and CL had to help. <laughs> Tookie, and she's like, go! Hurry up! Um, and I was just like, oh. Yay for Australian characters. Chat, I missed a lot in chat. Give me a second. Oh, uh, Yeah, it was a long chapter. Foods, but dark brown liquid in a bathroom. I thought the same thing, Ellery. I thought the same thing, Ellery, and I didn't like it. <laughs> this next chapter is 264 to 281. Oh my so. god, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's all good. I mean, you read a similarly long chapter, so it's Book, the least just... I can... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just saying, it's the least I can do. Book, just stop, Texas says. <laughs> no, 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 Darth Sidious says. <laughs> I, I just really hope I can speak with an Australian accent this book, and I can be judged by laser. I just committed to doing a bad Australian accent because the character is so cartoonish. So uh, like, I can't do a good Australian accent, so I'm just going to lean in really hard to the bad Australian accent. Oh, uh, I'm going to try to do a good Australian accent. And Laser's like, wow, you've insulted all Australian people. Congrats. And I'm going to be like, no. <laughs> so our pain's are getting trash food because she's a poor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tyler was homeless that one time, guys. Remember? Guys, girls, and, and non-binary individuals. Oh, there's Covered a... in whipped cream. That's a terrible visual. It's a terrible visual. Yes. I hate it. <laughs> oh, side note. There's a point. I, I think I told you in the anime Skate the Infinity where one of the voice, <laughs> where one of the characters is like, "What up, b words and bros and non-binary o's," <laughs> and it's just like, well, at least Adam's inclusive. My favorite uh, avoidance of YouTube censorship is strawberry jelly time. <laughs> oh, strawberry jelly. <laughs> Oh, uh, she had strawberry jelly on, you know. Mm. I use red body juice. She's cheating on you, Julian. <laughs> Not the Ophelios. Um, that was way back. Hang on. I'm, I'm trying to see the... Um, I don't like the word masticating. Why did they have to call it masticating? Is that like grinding up your food or something? It's just a it's just a way of saying chewing. Oh. But it just is a gross sounding word. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't know. Tyra it, it's like Tyra just looked up various words in a dictionary, added those in along with French and Spanish, and then for the rest just kind of mushed words together. Oh, straight up typo. Okay, I thought I was going crazy. I'm yeah. Like... <sighs> Come on, or <laughs> Or, or Tyra's editor somewhere is just like, oh gosh, they found out <laughs> my one mistake. This, <laughs> sorry to tell you this. The whole book is a mistake. Oh. <laughs> Here we get to find out what Tyra's version of Australia is. It's hilarious. Buddy, time to get the food. Um, yes, yeah, she does like fudge scented candles. Dylan. Oh, Dylan. Um, she likes them fudge scented candles. Yeah, I did not spell didgeridoo right in the comments. I spelled it like D-I-G-E-R-D-O, but it's D-I-D-G-E-R-I-D-O-O. Didgeridoo. There's a... 
Did you read you? <laughs> this, this is what her, happens if the Yurks take over the Earth. The Yurks are the bad aliens invading people's minds in Animorphs. Oh. <laughs> the, the Yorks read model and they're like, yes. This is what we will do now. As if eating isn't a foregone conclusion. Yeah. Did you do your welcome? I've been waiting for this one for a while. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, this is like five minutes when I heard it the first time. Did you do? She couldn't even think of like a play on words for Australia. She just straight up called it didgeridoo. Yep. Not even trying. Come on, Tyra. Four girls, one brain cell. Yeah. Oh, the the four sisters that only eat breath mints. It's like, oh no, don't do that. You need. Well, trip. damn, this magic system is worse than Harry Potter, and that franchise is problematic as hell. <laughs> oh. And what's this? What, what's this franchise? This is also problematic. Oh gosh. This whole book is a violation, Darth. <laughs> Model warts is what we're calling it now. Yes, instead of model land, it's model warts. <laughs> Gotta get back to model warts. Gotta get back to school. The last night I started like an index of the horrifying creatures, and I was gonna contain it just to the horrifying creatures of animorphs because there's a lot of them. But I feel like now we need also the goosebumps and definitely model land horrifying creatures in there, oh, like God. an index. <laughs> so so many asterisks that are like, look in the back for uh, information about this and about this animal and all that good Someone stuff. Someone put Tyra into therapy. This book is fucked up. Look into her psyche. Yeah. Yeah, just the explanation of the food stuff alone. It's just like, oh, Tyra. Yeah, the du oh, the chat was saying, Darth was saying in chat about ducks. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, please. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, everybody. They're 15. Say it with me again for the people in the back. They, <laughs> they are, are children. 15. Yeah, sorry. I... sorry. <laughs> sorry. That was on me. No. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Yes. Yes. But hey, we're almost halfway through, I think. Can't wait till fan favorite characters return later. Oh, gosh. We get to see some of these people. <laughs> I thought she'd just forgotten. Uh, or do we see Angelica anymore? Because there's like a symbol above the eye so i was just like angelica which one is angelica the one from not iceland Who, oh that, norden swe norden swe is my personal favorite yeah name. oh yeah norway denmark sweden yeah and they, she like got so excited she accidentally pulled some stuff out of her head with the zippers no she's from icy land icy land <laughs> yeah mm. i i don't know why i did that accent i don't really know how icelandic individual sound um <laughs> generic uh european is it too late accent. to throw the book away no we can never forget this yeah we can't we have to it's like it's like we've all been through a horrible experience together <laughs> because we have yes mm. and we're still going through it mm-hmm How does this condiment shower like IDK get them clean or what is the point? I don't know. <laughs> it's whimsy. Isn't that so whimsical? <laughs> it showers condiments. Nightmares are the point. Texas says. <laughs> oh, and then they were talking about how someone wanted to make this into a movie and it's like, how? This is the most <laughs> unnecessary, convoluted way to serve dessert. Yes, it is. Such an overly sexual way to have dessert, right? I was thinking the same thing, and then I felt horrible because I'm like, they're 15. They're 15. <laughs> I'm just uh, Tyra. <laughs> Tyra, why? Wh why for the sake of whimsy, Tyra? NC 17, what? Tyra wanted to film this. I. Oh, I would pay so much money. Oh, I would love to go see this movie. I would be so confused. We would have to buy it secondhand so we don't give Tyra money from it. And so that we can cover it here. Yes, um, yes. We would get so many views. People um, would be so confused. Um, And of course, Seal has to be played by Tyra herself. Yes. Obviously. And Toki has to somehow be played by Tyra herself. They they do like the the, they take her face and put it on someone else's body. And yeah, have yeah. her dub over the lines or like something. Like Will Smith in that one movie where he was like his younger self. Yes. Yeah. Um. This would be a Fox movie before the Disney buyout. Oh, what? I don't know who would make this movie, which is why we haven't seen one yet. <laughs> uh, or 
I'm just thinking someone with a lot of money could do like an independent film version of this. Texas, how? How can it get worse? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Laser showed up right in the middle of that. <laughs> what is this, mate? Tasmanian devil? What the heck? I'm so sorry. Ty blame Tyra Banks. It's Tyra Banks' fault. I just show up to hear those two words. Yeah, Tyra Banks has a character where she was like, let me put every Australian stereotype into this one character <laughs> and, call the, and call Australia. Australia is now a country called Didgeridoo. Yep. Oh, side note, I remember when I was in, I believe fourth, no, third, I was in elementary school and we were doing a project where we had to take various animals in Australia and do, uh, and do project or and do presentations about them. And everyone else got like the, the kangaroo, the dango, the, the kookaburra, the platypus and the, the known animals are, and, um, wallabies. And I got an animal that I've never heard before. And I've never heard of since, except for maybe like two or three times. There is an animal in Australia called a quokka. Q U O K A. Oh, I just learned about this semi recently, and I was just like, "What?" Yeah, and they're they're marsupials, and they they look kind of they're like smaller wall not they're like smaller wallabies maybe, and they smile a lot. But apparently the I didn't remember I didn't know this until recently. Apparently they're known the mothers are known for for like throwing their children at predators so they can get away. Someone sad lump says violence is sometimes the answer. And then salt mountain goes, violence is not the answer. Violence is the question. And the answer is yes. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, Hey everybody. We're, we're so sorry. Um, <laughs> we're so sorry for the, the trauma that we caused by reading the book. Yeah. By Tara Banks. The didgeridoo is an Aboriginal, um, so, so native Australian traditional um, instrument. Oh, oh gosh! I remember watching RuPaul's or Drag Race Down Under, and the, the like. The first contestant eliminated was, or I can't remember what they're called, but they're basically places outside of the cities, and they have to get like permission to go into the cities and stuff like that. And it's, it's and it's just like oh. Honestly, Laser, I'll take almost full Australian um, as a compliment that that accent doesn't deserve. <laughs> he said, this is the stream. I always remember where Avery goes almost full Australian. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or that just remember, or that just reminds me of like um, something, the memorable Captain Jack Sparrow. Or, mm. <laughs> but you have heard of me or something like that. I can't remember. Um, My brain is like frying at this point what needs to be added to the cross stitch list um it's not how we say the name I've seen ads it shows movies of them um is it quokka how is it said kawoka kawoka i thought it was quokka sorry kuoka this was how it was taught to him in school well yeah i had to find this information myself and no one corrected me I'm <laughs> Tyra discovered a thesaurus. <laughs> Violence is not the answer. Violence is the question, and the answer is yes. Agree, yeah. Remember how the Americans were in Round the Twist? They did their best American accents with small flags? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure that's the version of just me doing an Australian accent, which is why I said at the time. I can't do an Australian accent, so I'll be easy on them. But they were supposed to be, like, Texans. And it took me, like, half the video to realize that they were supposed to have an accent that wasn't Australian. Because they just sounded Australian. Oh. Um. My mother's friend's name sounded like one famous person's actual name. And it was the name of a fighter in the Civil War. I'm afraid to look deeper into it. I don't want to know which side of the uh, war he was on because I don't um, trust Tyra. Tyra. Welcome back, Owl. Um, yeah, so um, that's what we're dealing with today. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll let you get into Chapter 22. I'm okay. sure we're all just waiting with me. <laughs> Someone needs to tell me how to say Quoka properly. I have dill, I have dill seasoning all over my hands. Dill. Mm. <laughs> D Dylan pops out of the book. Did someone say Dill? Oh my god. <laughs> oh. 
Um, oh, sorry. Oh, no. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. It must not have been important. Oh, no. Quokka, according to Google. Quokka. Quokka? I kind of wanted to just say Quokka instead of Quokka. Quokka? Quokka. Quokka. Sounds like the word squawk. Quokka. I still want to use quokka because that's what I've been using for years. Quokka sounds like <laughs> you're quokka. saying the word cracker in an Australian accent. <laughs> quokka. Oh, look at that quokka over there. <laughs> I now want to use this. Okay, fine. Fine, I'll I'll adapt and say quokka. How you said it originally sounds good. Thank you, Darth Sidious. Australian Canadian accents because the actresses who play Carol and Stevie are Canadian. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I've been following it up. Continue. <laughs> but now I have to read. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to buy you some time. It's all good. <clears throat> Chapter 22. Fused flashback females. Bravo's gaze remained fixed on Chucky. Chucky stood back, utterly confused as to why he was looking at her and only her. The girls around her, including Dylan and Kamalina, Kamalini, seemed just as perplexed. Zarpesa let out a horse-like snort. Come on, come on, everyone. Don't you get it? He's staring at her because he's never seen someone with such an enormous hob. I know she's supposed to be Valley Girl, but I like this accent better. It kind of, it kind of is reminding me of um, Tommy Wiseau in the best possible way. <laughs> Hop, hopla. Bravo reached up and made a wiping gesture across his nose. On instinct, Tookie touched her nose too. To her horror, a trail of creamy pea green slime appeared on her fingers. She'd been staring out the window with a giant whipped cream booger on her face. She didn't know whether to run to find a tissue or a bush to hide behind. Can someone explain why you are pressing your nasty hands against our windows? The girl turned to see Persimmon standing in the doorway. Get in a single file line, she demanded. Now, the bellows ran to obey. Where, where, where are we going? Chase called out as Persimmon spun around and marched into a dark, narrow hallway. In the distance was a bright, flickering light. I was just about... Uh, I was just about to show them my chest. Oh, that's not something I want a child to say. <sighs> You need to get that filthy mouth of yours cleaned up, Persimmon said in a disgusted voice. The fluttering light at the end of the hallway expanded into an immense glowing circle. A, a, man, a mannequin stood at a reception desk shaped like the letters H, O, and A. The letters moved around in a disorganized jumble, probably making it hard to set anything on the surface. There was a great round room behind the desk, its walls covered in furry-looking fabric and its ceiling gently pulsing up and down as if breathing. I know where we are, Sarah Pessa busted. The ooh -ah. A breathy voice from high above would stood, ooh, ah, with great satisfaction. The letters on the desk moved to spell ooh, ah. The smell of blood oranges wafted through the air. This is the place where seasoned Bellas go to have their aching joint soothed after an intense 7 7 tournament training. Oh, that was a. This is the place where Susan Bellas go to have their aching joint soothed after their intense 7 7 tournament training. Zarpesa told them self-importantly while staring at herself in a mirror behind the reception desk. It's also where the instructors in visiting and talks to Bellas go to be prim and prim. We have one of these attached to my bedroom at home. You know, but it'll be so much more fun to experience with all of you. All of you. Tookie and Dylan both rolled their eyes. Yeah, right, Tookie mouth. Six blank-eyed mannequins appeared from invisible doors, towels in their hands. Persimmon turned to the bellows. You will break up into groups of three girls. Each group will be led by its own mannequin. And the rules are, well, enjoy yourselves. That's it. She seemed very pained to issue such a command. A mannequin waved an ornate hand mirror over the group, instantly lit in one of six colors following the girl. Three bellows glowed burgundy, making them a group. Zarpesa, Chase, and Bibiana color-coded fire engine red. Tookie, Dylan, and Kamalina, the last girls in line, glowed canary yellow. The minicant's plastic bodies shimmered with the colors that matched their group. A yellow-glowing minicant approached Tookie, Dylan, and Kamalini. Follow, please follow, she said in a barely perceptible monotone. The yellow minicant walked them briskly down one of the many paths that slid off from the round room. The other groups of girls went down different hallways. 
Tookie let her hand drag along the soft white wall. Cashmere, she whispered. Creamy had had a suit made of the, uh, in this stuff a few years ago. Of course, only a month or so later, she discarded it, deeming it past its prime. Thinking of Creamy, T Tookie got a pang. What is she doing right now? Does she miss me at all? What kind of what kind of place has cashmere cashmere on its walls? Dylan whispered. Kamalini nodded. I know it's ridiculous, shameful even. The minicant led Tookie, Dylan, and Kamalini into an expansive rectangular room with a metal floor and walls. Rows and rows of polished stone slabs filled the room. Dozens of Bellas lying atop them. Tookie recognized some of the girls from Mastication, but there were others there she had never seen. All the girls were com completely unclothed except for Tookie, Kamalini, and Dylan. The Ua or the Ua will remove your soiled clothes, shoes, and everything. Yeah. The yellow minute can inform them. Dylan stopped short, looking warily at the other girls in the room. Is there a private area I can use to change? I don't want all these these young ladies looking at my body. I too feel quite uncomfortable with the idea of getting disrobed while so many look on, Camelini seconded. Tookie didn't want to get unclothed around all these people either. Lie down on the last three slabs here, there, the minicant instructed flatly, pointing. The girls hesitantly obeyed. Dozens of hands came up from under the slabs and did all that. Aww. The hands were just like those that had just took in the THVC bubble and CL at Runaway. Tookie covered herself with her hands. Kamalini did the same. Tookie felt cold, vulnerable, and certain everyone was staring at her. So she fixed her gaze on the ceiling instead. Someone had written something in the tiles in a black pen. Gina has two secrets. One, she hates CL. Two, it rhymes with destroy. Next, a strong cushion of air pushed the girls above the stone slabs so that they hovered above the tables. Warm water spewed down from from openings above them. Water rushed up at them as well, seemingly gushing from the surface of the stone. The water changed from soapy to dingy to soapy to clear, finally becoming a citrusy orangish spray. Tookie closed her eyes, trying to relax and not fret about her experience. Ooh, Dylan said beside her. Ah, Kamalini said, and they all giggled. The yellow mannequin gave the girls what looked like green strapless terry cloth mini dresses with asymmetrical hems. The little towel frocks read ooh on the front and ah oh, on the back. Put put these on. We will care for your belly uniforms and return them to you clean and pressed. The girls put on the towel dresses and then the mannequin led them on a tour of the ooh the place was a labyrinth to narrow hallways decorated with silk, fine chenilles, and more cashmere walls. Lanterns glowed from every alcove. Incandescent butterflies providing the light. The scent of blood oranges hung heavily in the air, and the girls felt soft sand underfoot. Down some hallways, they saw elaborate makeup stations and steaming baths. In one, an upper-class upper class Bella, all one word, sat in a pedicure chair and commanded, Environment, tropical island with pink sand and turquoise waves. Suddenly, the fabric of the wall melted away, revealing an idyllic island setting, complete with a shining sun, warm breezes, rose-colored sand, and an ocean is so blue it looks like a swimming pool. Tookie Dillon and Kamalini Kam gasped. That is a special feature of the U.A., the mannequin told them. One can change her surroundings to whatever she likes. Try it. Please, madam, environment home, Kamalini asked politely. The wall started to reflect an immense room. Oops, never mind, madam. Kamalini said hurriedly, the room Im immediately turned back into a spa atmosphere. Tookie bravely stepped forward next. Environment inside a whipped cream factory, with beach waves crashing outside the window. In an instant, the room transformed into an enormous space with walls and floors made of cream. Machines surrounding the area churned out endless types and flavors, light and heavy, caramel and cream. There was a five-story tall picture window with a perfect view of the sea's surf-worthy waves. Tookie smiled shakily. She wished Lizzie could see this. Exodus, she whispered, Exodus. All right now, the yellow mannequin said, grabbing Tookie's arm and moving down the hall. We must keep going. They walked down a long corridor full of treatment rooms. Bella's murmured with pleasure. But when Tookie looked in one, Abella was lying on her stomach with an enormous boulder crushing her spine. The latest in hot, the latest in hot stone treatment. Years before civilians will hear about it, the mannequin explained. In another treatment room, a mannequin was peeling a layer of skin off of Bella's face. 
The skin came off in a perfect mask, pigment pores and all, and when the Minicamp pressed it up against a plastic molded head, the mask uh, opened it the mask opened its eyes and smiled. Facial facial sloth, the yellow Minicamp guided the girls uh, the guiding the girls said. And in yet another room, a bell that stepped inside a giant clam shell. The clam's valves snapped shut rapidly, trapping the bell inside. Let me guess, Dylan said. Body wrap? Body snap, the man I can't said, but, but close enough. They walked into the next room, a giant space that had a large circle painted in the middle of the floor. Three women dressed in ornate patterning, pattern flowing moo-moos sat very close together in the corner. Their hair fused into one huge beehive. Dylan whispered, I wonder if their actual heads are connected. Their eyes were closed and their beehive hair juice turned in slow meditative circles. They seemed unaware of anything around them. Flashback females, the mannequin whispered re reverently, reverently. They have ability to take a person to a time in their life that has already happened. You cannot change the past. Only witnesses. Only witnesses. Most bellists find it therapeutic. You can take your friends with you into your flashback, and they will see and hear everything that happened also. But if one of you wants to do it, your whole group must follow. The doors seal once someone has stepped into the circle, trapping everyone inside. No exception. Dylan looked it sadly at the others. Should we do it? Tookie shifted from one foot to the other. She didn't think of a single thing she wanted to relive. I'm not letting you chicken out, girl, Dylan exclaimed, looking at Tookie. If you don't go, Camelini and I can't do it. You want to do it, right, Camelini? Camelini put her bottom lip up. Come on, Camelini, you in? Dylan pressed. Well, okay, she said hesitantly. But, but, if you can see the flashback I want to see, I have to prepare you. I am ashamed of my house. Please understand. Dylan chuckled. Who are we to judge if your family sent in a rough patch? I live in a store. Now, what do you think, Tookie? Okay, she said, instantly regretting it. Which, uh, which of you would like to go first? The mannequin asked. I guess I will, Camelini volunteered, so I can get it over with quickly. She walked farther into the room. One of the flashback females stood up, approached Camelini, and led her to the circle. As soon as Camelini crossed its yellow boundaries, the iron and concrete doors of the room banged shut, making Tookie flinch. Camelini stood very still. She nodded as if answering questions, though the flashback female said, has, hadn't said a word. It is so, the female said. It felt like Tookie's feet were melting into the ground. The sinking feeling creeping up to her knees, her hips, her waist, her torso, her shoulder, then her neck. For a moment, all her senses were muffled, but then they snapped into a precise clarity. She blinked slowly and opened her eyes. Tookie, Dylan, and Camelini now stood at a window overlooking an immense patchwork of dilapidated shacks. Smoke rose from many of the shanties. Beautiful cocoa, maple, and copper skin children dressed in bright fabrics ran about. A younger Camelini sand head, sans head bang or climbed out the very window at which the girls were standing and dropped to the ground. She ran towards the middle of the shanty town and stopped at a group of about two dozen people of varying ages. Their claws might have been tattered and drab, but as soon as they saw Camelini, their smiles were brighter than the most luxurious silks. Camelini, where are we? Tookie whispered. We are standing in my bedroom, but before you look, brace yourselves. Everyone turned in gas. A gigantic four-poster bed stood in the corner, surrounded by jeweled chandeliers and ornate crystal lamps. Plush, velvet, and bright leather furniture filled the rest of the space. The ceiling was adorned with intricately carved wood and white marble, cash cashmere covering the walls. You lived here? Dylan's eyes goggled. What in the heck is there to be ashamed of? Are you crazy? I enjoyed and appreciated living here, but I felt tormented too, Kamalini pointed out the window. Right outside are so many people with so much less, and a big group of people the young me is greeting now. They are the Ponde family. Dylan stared at all the the people young Kamalini was with. Whoa, I thought me having four sisters and bros was a big uh, was a big fam. The people in Chalker got bigger ones than mine. They are extended family as well, Kamalini explained. Aunts, cousins, great grandparents. But their living conditions were so unfortunate. I used to sneak them unused items, clothes, school books, healthy food, and vitamins. I secretly convinced one of the grips of my mother's films to run plumbing and electricity lines from our house to their tiny home, too. My family has so much, it felt like a sin not to share. The young Kamalini in the flashback approached the Ponde family and grabbed the hands of a sweet-faced child. This is Maya, my favorite, Kamalini said to Tookie. She is eight years old. Guess what, young Kamalini cried to the family. 
actually secured parts for all of you in my mother's next film. And I do not mean a few rupees worth of background work. I mean oh, bona fide no. speaking parts. Real paycheck. What? Uh, 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 the life of a background. Uh. The family looked gratefully at one another. Some began to sob, but it was happy sobbing, their eyes alight with joy. But the scene does not shoot here in Chakra, Kamalini went on. It is a scene that leads to the grand dance number, and it shoots in Capu Capucina, Capuchina, and Trejoli. Their surroundings abruptly shifted to a to the famous main canal of Capuchina or Capucina. Movie cameras focused on the Ponde family, who recited their lines with the greatest of ease and grace. Then the scene whooshed again, this time to a film location in Trejoli, in the shadow of. Metropolis's famous sculptural tower. Young Kamalini burst onto set. Bonjour, Mama. Bonjour, Ma, she called out. I will be your assistant director today. Where should the Pande family stand in this scene? Kamalini's mother, a tall, striking chakra woman with huge, soulful eyes, a curvy body, and vermilion in her hair, turned and smiled. Betty, uh, did I tell you how proud of you I am? Her mother said to young Kamalini, rubbing her daughter's head. We are shooting the big thunderstorm scene today. Make sure they have the appropriate props. Kamalini guided the Ponde family to the base of a backdrop depicting a brilliant blue sky. As everyone took their places, Kamalini's mother yelled, Action! The rain machine sprayed the set with water. The cameras began to roll. The thunder sound effect boomed. The Pondes performed well, even with faux rain drenching them. Young Kamalini grinned with pride. Betty, get ready to cue the dancers, Kamalini's mother shouted to her. Just as Maya, the youngest Pondi, was about to say the last line of the scene, another ear spinning sound thundered above. The hev heavy blue sky backdrop tipped and plummeted to the ground. Uh, yep. Everyone screamed and scattered, but for some it was too late. Thick white oh dust poured all around, the around like smoke. Chucky waved her hand in front of her face, trying to see. Suddenly, a keening cry rang out. Maya crawled out from under the rubble. <sighs> Strawberry jelly streaming down her forehead. Ma, Papa, Nani. Chucky's heart stopped. She had a sinking feeling about what had just happened. Next to her, present-day Kamalini let out a tortured whimper. No, she cried. No! She ran to the rubble and tried to move the bricks away to rescue the other family members, but her fingers just swished through the scene, useless. Suddenly, the flashback female's calm voice rang out through the room. It's time to go now. The film set receded, and the girls were in the ooh -ah again. Kamanili crumpled to the floor in tears. They all perished that day because of me. This, she pointed to her headbanger, helps me block it out, but I will never forget myself. Maya became an orphan. She moved in with us, but a week later, she ran away. We searched all of Chakra, but could not find her. I do not know if she's, she's unalive or alive. I should have never tried to help them. It, wa it wasn't your fault, Tookie said gently. You tried to give them a better life. Before Kamalini could respond, the flashback females approached a shell-shocked Dylan, took her to the center of the circle. Dylan also nodded as if answering questions that weren't spoken. In a flash, they were all in an immense park within the Boobig Teak Nation. Instead of endless posters and signs advertising sales, they were inspirational messages like smiles are the best currency and keep boobatig beautiful, save our park. A man and a sweet looking girl about six years old stood next to a jungle gym. A little blonde girl, the little blonde girl had Dylan's sweet feisty face. My God, there's my daddy, Dylan murmured, staring at him. She stepped up to her dad and tried to touch his hair. Her hand swirled through his head. Like it was paint being smeared in the air. But that didn't deter her. She leaned in close, her head partly glopping into his. Dylan's dad picked up six-year-old Dylan and placed her on a slide. He pushed her on a swing set and helped her onto the monkey bars. But it all seemed too much for him. When did he kneel down to his dollar? Dylan, my baby. Daddy's little girl. Daddy's gonna have to go somewhere far away very, very soon. On a trip, young Dylan said, can I come? Afraid not. There were tears in her father's eyes. And before I go, I just want to make sure I say something to you that I don't, that I want you to remember always. He cleared his throat. Dylan, baby, daddy wants you to know that you are beautiful. These other little skinny things in the nation, don't ever let him get you down. Don't change nothing about you, boo. 
not one thing, because everything about you's perfect. Suddenly, Dylan's father started to cough. He seemed unable to catch his breath. His face became bright red, and then he dropped to the ground. Daddy? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Uh, why? Da Daddy? Little Dylan cried, hovering around, hovering over him. Daddy, what's wrong? Her father looked at her with glassy eyes. His mouth opened and closed, but he couldn't speak. In seconds, a boo big teak ambulance roared up, and EMTs jumped down and loaded Dylan's father into a stretcher. Daddy! Young Dylan cried out again and again. A few moments later, the girls returned to the ooh-ah. Dylan lay on the floor, sobbing. The yellow minicant mm -hmm. turned to Tookie expectantly. Are you ready? Tookie shook her head and started toward Dylan. Without seeing her move her mouth or emit a sound, Tookie heard one of the flashback females say, Let her be, Tookie. The pain is part of the healing. Tookie licked her lips, suddenly feeling terrified. She wasn't ready to face the past if it was going to hurt her as much as it had her friends. Um, I want to skip my turn, the minicant friend. But it's a rewarding bonding experience, and it will help you grow, Isabella. And if you refuse, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll have to mark your time in ooh-ah as incomplete. Ooh-ah is a class as well, you see. Tookie let out a huge sigh. Feeling something as simple and supposedly relaxing as ooh-ah wasn't an option. Setting aside all her anxieties, she stepped into the circle. The flashback females walked toward her, mouth shut, but Tookie could hear them speaking loud and clear. Breathe deeply, they said. Stand very still in the circle to come face to face with your demons. It is from here that we can lead you back to a time that has already happened. Tookie glanced over her shoulder at Kamalini and Dylan. Their eyes seemed, seemed to silently speak to her. It's okay, Tookie. It's okay. She turned back to the females. She didn't even have to speak her request. Just thinking, please just show me something good from my life. Anything, even if it's something I can't remember. It is so. One of the females answered, shutting her eyes. There was a whoosh of light. Tookie left, felt like her brain was being turned upside down and inside out. But it wasn't painful at all. It, instead, it felt like her head was being relieved of pressure, like a tea kettle whistling out steam. When she opened her eyes, she was in her house in Peppertown, only it looked newer, not as ramshackle, and her bedroom was spotless. Sheer curtains embroidered with yellow ducks flanked the sparkling windows. A stuffed giraffe stood proudly in the corner. A small bed was in the middle of the room, covered with a thick yellow comforter and white tassels along the edge. Plush barriers ran down the sides of the bed, a protective measure to prevent a sleeper from rolling onto the floor. Miss Della Creme entered the be bedroom. A man who certainly must have been Doc Mr. Delacram was holding her hand. Though Tookie couldn't see his face, Tookie's jaw dropped. She couldn't recall ever seeing her parents display physical affection. This was before her father's accident, so his body was cut and toned. Creamy was still as wrinkled as she was today, but she looked softer, happier. She carried the an adorable toddler dressed in bright yellow onesie pajamas. The miracle? But then she heard her father murmuring, There, there, Tookie, there, there. Tookie was transfixed. She never seen baby photos of herself, but where's Bellissima? She wondered. Then she realized the doll didn't exist yet. Tookie stared at her two year old self. She was actually strangely cute. Not yet the hideous, disproportionate, frustratingly awkward teenager she grew to be. Oh, no mention of her eyes. Interesting. Mr. Delacreme touchly, gently touched his daughter's head, his baby daughter's head, her hair a mix of textures that seemed deliberate, not random and haphazard. Six teeth already, Dumpling. You're jumping the gun. You're, you're gonna need one of these soon. He handed her a toddler-sized toothbrush. Young Tookie grabbed the toothbrush and bit on it. Mr. Delacreme turned to his wife. Look at her. She's strong, just like her daddy. And she looks just like me, doesn't she? You wish, Miss Delacreme painfully smacked him on the, his muscular arm. My Tookie is a spinning image of her mommy. Tookie couldn't believe it. My Tookie? Mommy? When did Creamy allow herself to be called Mommy? And when did she stop? Miss Delacreme laid little Tookie down on her bed. Time to give you up now, doll, Dumplin. What? Time to... Oh. Oh, time to give that up now, Dumplin. Miss Delacreme said, taking away the toothbrush. There'll be plenty of days ahead when I'll have to force you to brush your teeth. Right now, just enjoy being the beautiful baby girl that you are. Her toothbrush in her father's hand again, but he was holding onto it with love, not as a weapon. Then both parents gave baby Tookie a gentle kiss on the forehead. Tears fell from Tookie's eyes onto her green terry cloth ooh-ah dress. Dylan and Camelini looked at her in curiosity. I never knew they loved me, she said, her heart banging fast. They were going to send me away. They didn't want me anymore. 
What changed between now and then? Was it Miracle, his eye accent, or something else? The, mem the memory rolled on. Sle sleepy, huh, Jumplin? I know, I can see you finding it, Mr. Delacreme said as he kissed little Tookie's toes. Just close those eyes and dream those dreams that will all come true one day. Go on now, go to sleep, Dumplin'. Just dream, just go, for all of us. Present day Tookie squeezed her eyes shut. It's time to leave now, the flashback female said. With a flash... With that, the flashback disappeared and young Tookie and young Tookie and her tender and loving parents were gone. Tookie uncapped her pink bed and be began to write in Godian. Dear Lizzie, I wonder if you know where I am right now. If you saw them choose me to come to this special place. I wonder if you think I'm a deserter, a two-faced liar, a selfish egomaniac who ditched our friendship at the very first opportunity. I hope not. If you do... If you do know where I am, I hope you're looking up at the mountain, wondering what I'm doing right now, not hating me with all your heart. Because I want to tell you everything, Lizzie. I miss our talks. I miss how we laugh. I miss knowing where you are and where you are. I've got new friends here. But wait a sec, Lizzie. Don't be jealous. You'd love them. They're like us. A little odd, a bit quirky, and definitely real. Their imperfections are what make them shine with the most sin effervescent inner glow you have ever seen. Things have changed in other ways too. I have transformed from a bangle bobble and bead forget a girl into a model and star stare at her girl. Everyone either thinks I'm a freak or that I'm here as an experiment. Remember those sacrifice rumors, Lizzie? Still not sure if they're true. Maybe they they are after me. Now I'm starting to sound like you. The last person to join in on the glare fest is Bravo, a male model attending our brother's girl best Bestosterone. Everyone else acts as if he's the incarnation of some long-forgotten god. Well, all I can do when I see him is turn away. He embarrassed me. Lizzie reaching toward his nose to indicate that I should wipe away some vile olive-tinted whipped cream snot in front of everyone. And instead of turning away in disgust, they all stared at me. I was a remember girl, but in all the wrong ways. But before Bravo so really pointed out the liquid blemish dripping from my nose, I'd gotten... The compliment of my life. A teacher, they're called gurus here, told me I ain't half bad, which to me sounded like a symphony, a warm blanket on a shiver a day. The same kind of affirmation you used to give me, something I miss like crazy. Lizzie, there are many things I lack here at Monoland. One is the exceptional beauty that the majority of my peers in the, the this paradise have. Another is the gift of Lumiere, a special glowing nightlight that enhances the recipient's natural beauty. I also like a family back at home that misses me and can, counts down the days until they can see me again. But tonight, you know what? I don't care. Because tonight, I ain't half bad. And I'm praying that wherever you are, you ain't half bad too. I miss you, hot queen. Good night, Lizzie. Tookie. FG? Question mark. Forget it, girl? Question mark. P.S. I hope you're staying far away from Sharp Rocks. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the this is the design that I want to put on a t-shirt. Ooh. <laughs> and yeah. trauma. <laughs> seems to approve of this color scheme and oh my goodness. and things. Um somebody said uh Salt Mountain said this chapter is so boring where is the insanity? We took a break to talk about trauma. Yeah. That's so oh that's so I, I'm sure. I'm so sad. I'm sure Kamalini and Dylan are like, "Oh, you get a happy memory, but she's, <laughs> but why did she get a happy memory?" Yeah, I guess Tookie's like, you know, I I want, but then it maybe she explains and she's like, "Yeah, that's the only happy memory I have." I guess and they're like, "Oh, Abigail out. Good shows up too." I genuinely forgot about that character. The, the hairy girl. I forgot that she existed. It yeah, took me a <laughs> you're just Their like yeah. Trauma is so boring. Okay, but. <laughs> Her trauma is boring. The other girl's trauma is terrifying. Yes. Her whole family died in like a collapse. Or her like other family, the poor family members. The like cousins and like, yeah, like they all died. Her and some then, extended family. And it, then Dylan dad just died. I'm picturing just like a cowboy, like with a with a ten gallon oh. head, just being like eh, and just dying. And I'm just like, oh, oh no. no. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make this sadder. I'm just imagining David Harbor in a cowboy hat. No. <laughs> oh no. Crashed under a house like the Wicked Witch. That's not boring. Oh. Oh, my oh God, no. Bianca's appearance is one of the most model land things ever. Oh no. <laughs> is she like climbing in and she's like, I'm here. Salt says, I don't care about your dead dad, Dylan. I've seen worse. 
Oh my god. Oh no. Poor oh, Dylan. Not... <laughs> Poor Dylan. Um I need to find another I need to find like um a stop or some somehow I need to create like an I so we can have the Tyra Y. <laughs> um Yes. Yeah. <laughs> On the back it's Tyra Y. Oh, and Lucky, or this chapter, the next chapter, it's 282 to 288, so you don't have a lot to read. Oh, good. We're using Monoland as an adverb now? I guess we are. Worse, weirder things have happened. Here, I'll put chat back up. <laughs> or I'm just like, uh, adverb? I thought, uh, those usually end in L-Y. Any other, <laughs> any other adverb doesn't exist to me, but but they can exist without L-Y. But I don't care. <laughs> Model Landly. Model Land has broken us. Uh, yeah. We don't care. <laughs> we just don't care. <laughs> we just read to or I feel like I feel like someone's like C background don't have it that bad. There, <laughs> and it's just like, well, you know, I'm not gonna say the story because NDAs, but our, one of our friends got a part of an OSHA violation because a chair fell on her. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's just like that mm. happened, and they threatened to make sure she got blacklisted if she ever talked about the fact that she almost had three ribs broken by a falling chair. Yep. <laughs> what color uh, shirts? I don't do good with white. It's not going to be white. I'm going to save this so that it's like a just um, I'll go back to full screen for a second. Um, I'm going to save it so that it's just like a see-through thing and then I can put it on literally any color. So if you've got a specific color, um, throw in suggestions because I'm I can I can go into it's gonna be basically Teespring or they just call themselves Spring now because they want you to know that you can make all kinds of stuff not just T-shirts. Oh. Um, that's where I'm setting up my my merch. Um, I think because it seems like a good one, and so I can just like put in like designs and then just be like put it on these colored shirts or these mugs, oh. and then they just do the rest. And if nobody buys them, they don't get printed. So no muss, no fuss. Oh, okay. Um, that works. And someone mentioned something about a flute and the trauma oh we haven't gotten there yet there's apparently creepy tr flutes oh flute creepers oh i wonder if there's a picture in the in the in the front cover i bet oh there's a there's a kangaroo in in the picture a lot of these pictures are starting to make sense and i don't like that yeah i don't i don't like that i feel like i'm getting into the brain of tyra banks writing this Oh gosh, there's why is there a baby with a cat face? Oh, oh, we we found the the future sisters or whatever. Oh, that's, that's what they look like. They're pretty. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty. Oh, and there's a cat with a mustache. Um. Okay, there's a girl with an umbrella over her head. I wonder what that means. Oh, Candel, Abra. Lots of cats. Zariona. At least it should be close to dinner time, so we'll at least get to uh, get off and eat food. Yay! Yay. Sorry, chat. <laughs> if, we, if you feel up to it, we can do what we did last time where we come back on and read a few more chapters, but we don't have to. That works. Or maybe we can have like, we're going to watch a relaxing show or something. Yeah. I, I, I really want to be like, OK, or I really want to flex my like Jurassic Park muscles. I'm like, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park. I, I know all the things wrong, mostly. I wish but, we could watch like most things on live. YouTube is so like weird about like, mm -hmm, that's copyrighted content. Uh -oh. You can't play that. Oh, uh, we get away it. with books though because they don't know how to. They don't know how to be like ah ah ah. This isn't fair use. <laughs> this is a book. Ah ah ah! You didn't say the magic word. Ah ah ah! Please, gosh darn it! I don't like this hacker stuff. My ADHD or dyslexia or whatever the fuck is wrong with me is really bad today. I feel that. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. The cats come into play later. Oh god. Oh gosh, the I might cats. as well just go. I might as well just just do this. Oh god, I didn't realize it was 5.37. The last time I looked at my phone, it was an hour ago. <laughs> uh, oh, this book. book. And we're like almost halfway there. How are we? We're like almost halfway there, and I feel like we've been reading this for like months. <laughs> and this is only our second time. Yeah, technically our third if you count yeah, if you count like the two streams as separately, but it's really just like we do a stream day on Saturdays and we take a break to eat food. Yes. Um 
Spencer Spencer was away last week and he comes back and he's like, Did I see you guys stream twice in one day? I'm like, <laughs> Well yeah, see the book is so big and weird that we were like, We have to get off for dinner, but we're gonna come back. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm just saying, uh, imagining Spencer at the wedding since you were talking about how he's he doesn't indirect he doesn't do well in large crowds, and I'm just imagining him looking at someone and being like, "What is Avery doing? What's happening? <laughs> She's streaming." I know he was joking with me. He's like, "Good luck streaming. If anything breaks, I'm not there to fix it." And I came back. I was like, "Nothing broke. <laughs> Take that." Ha ha ha. We could switch to another game show stream if we don't want to go back to this thing. thing. We could. We just have to figure out which game shows could be streamable. Because the last time we did a game show stream, it was like, nah, uh, 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 uh. Oh, uh no. And then uh, the weakest link all got cut out of the VOD because they were just like, that's copyrighted. Ugh. Um. How rude. Multiple people affected how fast we could get through it. But it's just so long. Oh, uh, wait, what's happening? Monoland took me half a year. It will not take us half a year. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But it is, it is. Uh, quite a thing. It is easily the longest book we've read so far on stream. Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but when it's model land, longer is not. Uh, yeah. uh, you don't want more model land. Where there's three paragraphs to describe one outfit someone wears. Jill's like a week is past. We've read, uh, this is chapter 23. I believe we started where? We started 16. 16. Or 15. 15. 15 or 16, one of those two. So we've read like eight chapters. Uh, and there are 47 chapters in this book. So we're 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 almost halfway. We're getting there. Almost halfway. So close. By page count, we're almost exactly halfway. Yes. And this <laughs> next chapter is six pages, so. Yeah. It's easy for you. We've read about half, and it feels like so little has happened. It feels like so little, but so much has happened at the same exactly. time. Exactly. It's like, what is time? What is time? It doesn't matter. It's color-coded. <laughs> it's model in. Oh my gosh. Why is it color- Tyra, why is it color-coded? Is it- it's, it, or it's part- or I, now the answer to everything. It's whimsy. Instead of SpongeBob going imagination, it's- it's whimsy. Oh, or Ellery says, or we could have Gabe witness a Goosebumps stream firsthand. We could, we could read a, we could read a Goosebumps book if we're just like, no, we can't do it. Oh, please, no. no. Um, well, <laughs> I don't want to read any. <laughs> I'm not reading anything anymore after <laughs> Model Land. All books, get rid of them. <laughs> no books ever. No. <laughs> Instead of no more white hairs, no more books i mean i have some ah. sailor moon books um i don't know if right. how how a uh, stream safe the manga is i have grade level books that they got rewritten into oh uh, goose wants a sign i'm just being dramatic okay um we could do that chat i like that i we could do that uh we could we could let what are we on be careful what you wish for is the goosebumps book that we're on oh gosh um they're also very weird, but not like this. You're at least like, oh, this is weird, but like in a nostalgic kind of way. Oh, nostalgia for the craziness. Oh. Okay, sorry. I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> Finally, a short chapter. Watch the world explode or something. Oh my goodness. While Tuki lay fast asleep in her Lumiere less bed in the D. A plan was in action at the base of Model Land Mountain. An enormous sign swayed crookedly in the breeze, warning, enter and you may perish painfully. Beyond it was a jungle of tangled barbed plants, boulders, and rotting steel. Every few moments, an eerie hoot, screech, or scream was admitted somewhere from the darkness. Ooh, ooh, ah! Is how I'm picturing that. <laughs> Moans, grumbles, the sound of nails scraping down a piece of glass, pops of metal underfoot, and an insane high-pitched laugh. Slowly, a ragtag crowd of crunch, a ragtag crowd crunched past the sign and lined up against a large rock. Jessamine, Jessam, Jessamine, Jessamine, a beautiful teenage girl from the most prestigious section of Ladorno. And her mother, Mina, uh, Mina, that's the end of the sentence, and her mother, Mina, Lynn, a woman in her 40s holding a limp advertisement cut from a newspaper in her trembling hand, and then 
none other than the Harry Abigail Good. Her <laughs> oh. T-dot head injury having healed. Her T-dot head injury and her even and her even hairier mother, who was Ugh. appropriately named Harry. <laughs> Uh, oh god tyra what, uh, what, what why tyra fan favorites return <laughs> the good women carried duffels that sported hairy sewn on patches promoting their pro hair causes jessamine covered her mouth in a failed attempt to stifle a laugh oh wow i love what they've done with their hair she said in a voice loud enough for the good women to hear a twitching hunchbacked man strode up, pulling a leather hood over his obscure, over his head to obscure his scaly skin, beady eyes, and uniformity pointed teeth. Uniformly pointed teeth. His kind was unfamiliar to the group, but a certain porcelain skinned girl named Piper would know them quite well. She lived with the daily terror of scores of them, threatening to penetrate their homeland's grand protective dome after all all the women nervously stepped back what's he doing here jessamine whispered to her mother everyone knows men don't usually go on these things unless they are die hard and desperate testosterone wannabes like those <laughs> dumb architects were <sighs> Shh, nina said nina whispered watches were checked canteens were uncapped to make sure an appropriate level of water remained uh, for the first part of the trip. Hiking booted toes tapped. Okay. Sweaty brows dripped. Temples pounded in agony. Veins throbbed and bulged. Everyone knew what the others were thinking. Would this be a mistake, as it had been for everyone before them who'd made the attempt? For they were victims of the Pilgrim Plague, about to embark on the treacherous trek up the diabolical divide these feel like rejected um series of unfortunate event names <laughs> don't you dare speak of those masterpieces when describing model a I'm just I, have, I have those we could read the first one of those if oh. like oh good books oh gosh i i didn't like the ending so i'm just like oh. let that fade to memory oh, fair enough. or that memory fade um and they'd chosen the clear black night to begin the most important journey of their lives. It would take several months. There would be no turning back. A final figure emerged from the darkness. Their guide, a professional trespasser or raider named Macy Kamada. He was a lar he was he wore a large pack crammed with survival gear, the straps cutting into his shoulders. Even though he was an overburdened as a pack mule, Kamada still looked strong and robust. He had weathered, sunburned skin, a thick crew cut, and hooded eyes that constantly darted back and forth. He opened one of the breast pockets on his jumpsuit and retrieved a plastic bag containing several dozen pills. He poured the entire bag into his mouth and swallowed the pills with no water. Ooh, that's how we know he's serious. He motioned for the group to line up in front of him. Time for antibiotics, venom blockers, and myosoma inhibitors, he said, placing a plastic bag of pills in each pilgrim's hand. Swallow them if you want to survive the bites and other deadly forces that lurk on the divide. If you refuse, you're asking for certain death. The moment we pass the first junction, the moment we pass the first junction, the entire group gulped down the pills. Kamada struck a needle into his rock-hard butt. Injecting <laughs> a thick, murky liquid. A booster, he explained. Again, the pilgrims lined up as they were told. Jessamine recoiled from the acidic burn of the needle plunging deep into her backside. You experienced, you're, you're experienced on the mountain, correct? Lynn asked. You were all, your ad said that you were, and I am the best damn raider money can motivate, Kamada answered gruffly. But you understand this is not so fine in the not, you understand the not so fine print, right? I make no guarantees for your safety, your comfort, your success, your lives. I point, you go, everyone understand? All the pilgrims nodded. Okay then, time to reward the raider. Kamada extended his palm. Everyone handed over thick wads of cash. 
when it was Lynn's turn, she stared tearfully at the money in her hand. This is my entire life savings. Please promise me that you'll deliver us to Model Land safely. Behind her, Jessamine snorted. What is her what is her ancient ass going for anyway? Shh, her mother said, pushing a hand over her daughter's mouth. All right, Kamada said, brushing his hands together. Are we ready? The group gave a resounding yes. Satisfied, Kamada pulled the flashlight out of his pocket and became and beamed it towards the diabolical divide. Wait, a voice screeched behind them. <gasps> Two figures dressed in camouflage, a, com a combat suit bounded up the ridge. Giant, transparent packs of full of flares, uh, eating utensils, sleeping bags, axes, a folded up tent, and a lantern swung from their backs. They both wore night vision goggles. Don't leave without us, the taller of the two cried. We're on your list. We signed up yesterday. She rifled around in the pocket of her camo pants and pulled out a stack of crisp bills. The guide instantly smiled and snatched it from her. So let's see here. He pulled out his registration list. You must be Miss it, Mrs. De La Creme. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't see that one coming. Uh, well, Darth Sidious kind of hinted at it. Ah. Uh, the tall figure interrupted, uh, patting her wrinkly, tan skin. But you can call me Creamy. And this is my daughter, Miracle. Honey, stop dancing, please. Miracle stopped her frantic movements and pulled in her bottom lip. Kamada nodded. And what's that? He motioned to something Mrs. De La Creme had pressed to her chest. Her name is Bellissima, Creamy said with annoyance. A doll going up the divide, Kamada blinked. Well, that's a first. He hitched his backpack higher on his shoulder um, and opened one of its many compartments. Take this, he said, handing them the packs of pills. He then gave Creamy and Miracle shots of the dairy shots in their derriers. Creamy turned to Bellissima over, oh, turned Bellissima over and exposed her hard plastic rear end. Give her a shot too. Kamada studied Creamy. Whatever you say, lady. He had to push hard to get the needle to penetrate Bellissima's fanny. I hope you're ready for what lies ahead. Ready? I just let you shoot my miracle and Bellissima with God knows what. We've never been more ready in our lives. Sorry if you have a needle thing. I'm so sorry. I sorry. Um. Someone up there has made a grave mistake and she's going to pay dearly for what she's done. There was such an interest Inter intense look in her eyes that everyone took a small step away from her. Okay, then the guide said as he turned the pil to the as he turned to the pilgrims. Off we go. So they're just straight up. Okay, okay, okay. D Tookie selected a purple pen and began a letter in Très Joli. Dear Creamy, you probably can't believe it, but I've been in Model Land for three whole months. I'd like to think you're proud of me. Time jump. Because, of course, we have a time jump. <laughs> but I know you're not. Your hopes and dreams have been pinned on the miracle, not me. I know you think she deserves to be here instead, and maybe she does, but I've got a secret. I like it here. In fact, I love it here. And I love my new friends. You might even say I'm doing okay. In each runaway, Kara 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 and mastication class, I get it together just a little bit more. I'm not running into walls anymore, Creamy. I sleep with my Centura on every night so that Zarpesa, someone who may actually be more evil than you, can't steal it from me. And in Gustgape, a class on how to keep our eyes open even in extreme winds, <laughs> I managed to hold out even in a hurricane. I guess I had some practice. From that time, you made me go to Shavara and stand in line for five hours for that brand new inhumane chinchilla jacket for Miracle. Creamy, I want you. To, I want to go for it here. Am I crazy? Am I crazy to think I should try to do my best? If I were still down in Peppertown, crammed in that tiny room with Miracle, retrieving baby gherkins out of a jar for you and gen generally being an all-around forget-a-girl... I would probably think I was insane, but now I want to go for it 100%. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that out loud, though, so instead I'll just keep whispering it to myself and writing it to you. 
I know a secret about you. I know you once loved me. I know you once held me in your arms and looked at me like I was a miracle, quote unquote. That hurts, Creamy. What happened? How did you go from love to wanting to send me away to be a factory dependent? Even if I became an intoxibella, which of course won't happen, would you feel different about me? I wish I could say I miss you, but I don't. I miss the old you, the one I don't even remember, but not the you I know now. Your daughter, Tookie, a Bella at Model Land. <sighs> I'm not over the name Creamy. It still hits me. <laughs> Creamy. I'm so sorry. This is a long chapter. Oh, it's all good. Oh, my God. How... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god! How long is that? 289 to 310. Mm, uh, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it down for a minute. Yeah, yeah. I love how ridiculous this is. Hi, Milo. Oh, and get a girl drink, everyone. We've been playing a water drinking game all day, and uh, I drank <laughs> almost my full bottle of water. I'm so hydrated. I drank the I drank the full thing of water and almost an entire um, clear American peach. Oh, and Darth Sidious had to go. Bye, Darth Sidious. Creamy Della Creme. Creamy Della Creme. Tookie and the Dancing Dinosaur. Oh, that sounds like a much more fun book. <laughs> Translation of letter. Fuck you, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Creamy Della Creme. Uh. Y'all are draining the ocean because of model land. Look. <laughs> she might be evil, more evil than you, Mom. Love, Tookie. <laughs> <laughs> dance, T-Rex. Oh, it's the T-Rex. Yeah, I... T-Rex dances. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I finished one of the T-Rexes, and I was like, la, 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 la. We should <laughs> organize <laughs> them in <laughs> rainbow <laughs> colors, so we'll have a whole rainbow of them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> As I'm trying to, like... <laughs> the, the, they're, they're taking over the shelf a little bit. Oh, oh. Oh no! When oh god, oh, Everything, no. everything's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Model Land. I blame Model Land for everything. Oh, Model, Model Land fi owes me and everyone here financial compensation. Agreed. Um, for some reason, I'm not searing the visuals. I'm very certain this is an issue on my end because I'm. In my mom's car in a Costco. Everybody else should be see everybody should be seeing visuals, at least from what's uh pin them to the curtain text. Oh says. gosh. Mm, we could though. We could do that now. <laughs> pin <laughs> all right, T Rexes, get pinned in formation. <laughs> um. <laughs> they look great over here. If only you guys can see it. Oh well, sorry. I'll take a picture. Oh, okay. Um, Danz dancing rainbow <laughs> rainbow T Rex sounds like a fun animated film. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, they just eat something, and it's just like, oh. Or cut to the moment in Lost World Jurassic Park when when the trailer's about to go over, and Eddie's trying to save them, and then the T Rexes are like, "Hello, dinner." And it's just like, ah, uh, trauma. Texas said, putting a week between each reading is nothing but good for us all. Agreed. <laughs> uh, it's crazy that we've read about half. It feels like so little has happened. So little and so much. Finally, a short chapter. Watch the uh, watch the world explode or something. I mean, the next chapter is like 30 pages. Or Model like Land and how you become illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I forgot. La last, last week, I forgot Oscar Isaac and Richard Madden's names. And I was just like, ugh. Uh, Darth, Darth Sidious is saying, be careful what you wish for is actually a very good Goosebumps book, so if we want, like, a good thing to read and we want to do a stream after dinner, that's always an option. Oh, uh, okay. Um, huh. uh, yeah, we might... I'm just thinking, it's 6 o'clock now. That is a very long chapter. We might want to put a pin in it for now. We did... What page are we on? 289? So we got another 129 yeah. pages done. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. It feels like we should have had more than that after these two days of streaming. Um, but alas, here we are. We've done very well, I think. Creamy is unhinged. Yes. Yes, she is. So unhinged. Um, I'm trying to catch up with the things that I missed. Um, laser. I bet Tyra has never actually been to Australia. Or has she, though? I actually don't 
don't know. I feel like she must have been. Yeah, I feel like she has, but she, I don't know. Model and like, become illiterate. Um, fan favorites return. That was bizarre. <laughs> uh, tuning in for Costco from Costco parking lot. When my mom buys milk groceries. Hello. Uh, now only 200 pages. And in, in she introduces lizard people. Yep. <laughs> um, hunched back man. I love the sound of ableism in the evening. Sarcasm. Oh. I know. Ellery, I thought the same thing. Oh, the lizard people got a brief mention during Piper's introductory chapter. Yeah, that is true. Um, can't wait for that one scene with Abigail and her mom. If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, God. I have been shopping all day, and I got a bunch of stuff I really like, but I'm so tired and overstimulated now. Autism doesn't like crowds, lol. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember this scene, Elmeo of Darth Sidious. Doesn't uh, Tyra mean... Bestosterone pocket. <laughs> LMAO, you know a character is tough when they swallow the pills dry. Why is it thick? Uh, they're getting butt shot. What is cre where is Creamy? There they are. <laughs> Here yeah. she is. I love Creamy, by which I mean I despise her. She commits murder later, right? Or at least witnesses it? I can only imagine. Genuinely feel bad for Miracle. Creamy should just let her dance. Yes. Dance, dance you to, to, dance, dance to you dead, uh, is what Derprex said. <laughs> Tyra is using all the words for butt. Yep. Yep. Every word for butt. Everything. Creamy is unhinged. I'm confused. Uh, this is accurate. Chet has the right reaction. What the heck have they been doing for three months? I guess just more of what we spent the whole day reading about, just over and over and over again. Doesn't that sound awful? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Why does she love it there? We've seen nothing that would make me want to stay there, right? <laughs> when will they be modeling in a hurricane? <laughs> Ira, when? <laughs> um, oh, God. It's just so much. My brain. <laughs> My brain. Uh -huh. uh, for some reason, I'm not seeing... Uh, I hope you're seeing the visuals now. Anyway, I love this book so much, lol. You're going to want to go back and watch the, the VOD from today, because today's been a day, <laughs> Milo. Mm. T-Rex sounds like a fun animated movie. It does. My brain is turned into paste. Mine, too. My son and 10-year-old... My son and 10-year-old take pills without aid or of liquid. Your kids are built different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they, your, your, your children are strong. They take their pills without the liquids. Oh, Rex, one, I don't think we have the mental capacity to do model land and anamorphs on the same day, but two, we can't do it without Daniel. He'd be he'd be sad. We read the first one. Like, <laughs> sorry, we skipped like five. Um you didn't you didn't need to be here for that one, right? <laughs> oh. Um I be crunching my <laughs> <laughs> I need all I need to like put the water in my mouth before I even put the pills in because I'm just like I don't want it to touch my tongue. Ew. Ah. Final, Tyra owes financial compensation to anyone who reads Model Land. Yes. You know what we need to make? I will keep wanting, keep saying I want to make more fake commercials for the channel. I want to make one that's like, if you or a loved one have been impacted with <laughs> Model Land, it's just like... Someone's like, you forget a girl. <gasps> I'm a what? <laughs> what did you just go home me? And the person's like, oh no, I said forget a girl. No. Uh... We can all just stop here and decompress for the weekend. Yeah. We definitely, I think we should definitely uh, wrap up this here since the next chapter is literally 30 pages. Yeah. And we're going <laughs> to have to get off to eat dinner soon. Um, What's more deadly, model land or asbestos? Oh, gosh. Well, one of them, you can, someone gets financial compensation of asbestos or, well, if asbestos affects you, you get paid for that. So, I mean, ugh. Like, it needs to be, like, me and Gabe, and, and, like, one of us is the, if you or a loved one have been impacted, and then it's, like, the impact statement from the other person that's, like, because of this, I got this much money. <laughs> and it's just, like, 
Yeah, I, I think asbestos is worse, but you know, we can make a fake commercial about getting money from this. <laughs> do you do you do you forget popular actors such as uh, Oscar Isaac and Richard Madden and it shows like two pictures of them and <laughs> and someone's like swoon. <laughs> you forgot about them? Yes, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. You can be entitled to financial compensation. Oh my god. Yeah, so we can get off here and then um feel so inclined we can come back and read something that's not horrible um or we could just not <laughs> <laughs> or not <laughs> we can do whatever whatever you feel like gabe i'm really not not a uh, particular to anything oh gosh i'm wondering if it's snowing and if there is ice i'm like is it safe <laughs> is it gonna be safe for gabe it'll be fine i drove to lawrenceville in the snow that one time so i should be okay oh, the light is so nonsense. oh god model and any other book is better than this oh if we do another stream it will not be model land we we will we will put perry has to be the lawyer <laughs> we just do a voiceover with perry oh my god uh, you you just the pot you are entitled to financial compensation <laughs> I think I'm just going to play Animal Crossing for the next hour to recoup. Yeah, I'm down for more stream, but I'm not necessarily down for more model land. Yeah, we should. Poor Gabe needs. To, <laughs> I think it's gonna be like a Pavlov thing, where Gabe's gonna be like, "No, don't ever take me back to Avery's house. We need no. to like show Gabe good things so that Gabe wants to come back after this book is done." Oh gosh, I mean, I or I'm I I associate Avery's house with the simple life, and that's a crazy. <laughs> Oh, crazy yeah. reality show that's fun to watch oh yeah some problematic parts but oh, you know yeah. <laughs> only you can film a fan film if you want to oh god don't give me ideas about writing a model land script oh gosh you just mix words together <laughs> australian <laughs> we're from didgeridoo and someone's like from you mean australia no we're from didgeridoo <laughs> <laughs> oh look there's a roo and it's like one of your cats just walks by a roo no not the cat <laughs> we need to show gabe the power of plant zaddy it, hopefully there will plant. be no plant zaddy and goosebumps uh be careful what you wish for what? in the second one stay out of the basement um the chat latched on to the dad of the book who is slowly turning himself into a plant monster um, that's and his interactions between him and the neighbor are weirdly um, suggestive for no reason at all. And oh. so we're just like, so we we come up with plant daddy. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining David David Harbor turning into like a handsome tree <laughs> or a handsome plant or something. I don't know. I don't think it's possible because there's no plot. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> um, the Simple Life is hilarious. I loved Paris and Nicole when I was a kid. I loved The Simple Life when I was a kid. We have some, I, I haven't posted any of them yet because they're not edited yet, but we've yeah. done a plethora of Simple Life videos for yeah. most of the series. I, I just, it just haven't been released yet. <laughs> we have three episodes up. We watched a lot of stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, everybody's like, everybody's like, don't forget it's fairy tale February. And I'm like, oh, it is. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me do other stuff. And then I guess we can do that soon. <laughs> so many videos. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I was trying to explain, or I said earlier, or I said this to you before, but I tried to explain Sexy Beast to my dad, and I'm like, the prosthetics are so good, but the, the, the whole thing is so weird. Yes, we did a Sexy Beast video impromptu because I brought it up, and and we were at the end of whatever one thing we were watching, and Gabe was like, yeah. the what? And I was like, <laughs> oh, hang on. I just, like, played it, we watched the whole episode. I just remember when we see Meerkat for the first time, we're both like, wow, she is pretty and the guy who was the who was the dragon was just like i made the right choice oh yeah and it was just like dang okay but she still looked good in the meerkat <laughs> prosthetic even though she looks nothing like she did um we needed an australian tv movie or book with avery natasha anton maddie and gabe we we're none of us none of us can do the australian accents though it would just oh. be Americans. well gabe can but <laughs> oh thank you can. um <laughs> Gabe, I, I was so sad that Gabe didn't have that chapter. I was like, no. <laughs> Not Gabe has been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I've been waiting for the Australian chapter for weeks. Model but... Land is a Transformers movie in book form. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Yeah, I know what you mean. 
a bunch of unrelated things happen, but there's no plot at all. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And some of the Transformers unalive, and that's very sad. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> but it's ones that you don't really know. So you're like, oh, which one was that? Oh, that was the one since the first one, but they're gone now. Oh, whoopsies. Yeah, just dub over all of us with actual Australian accents. Australian. <laughs> or, or during like a, a H2O, just add water. We're watching that and we're just like, oh, we're commentating on uh, H2O, just add water. And it's very interesting. If it makes you feel better. <laughs> I think the Australian food lady reappears. Yay. Yay. But hopefully in the chapter I hope that, that I read. I really hope it is. <laughs> Please. I just wish there was like an Australian or a Scottish or Irish person because I can do those accents too. The only other two accents I can do. If the Australian lady comes back or either of those accents shows up, I'm just handing it to you and being like, <laughs> you can just finish this one. It's fine. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm, and I'm going to watch these back and be like, God, my Australian accent is terrible. Avery's just being really nice. <laughs> I, <laughs> what was it? What was Natasha trying to do? A German accent? <laughs> when we were reading Star Trek Corona and it became a running joke because she was just very committed to it. <laughs> oh, now, I, now I need to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Are, the only German accent I can do is like Klaus from American Dad, where it's like, oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> we are here today to learn about Model Land. Isn't that so much fun? Or like the Flu Labor German accent. Where it's like, oh, we are here to sing in front of your little uh, Pitch Perfect people, and we're going to do so great. Look at my sheer shirt. <laughs> right. I look she, fantastic. She was trying to do Scotty, but it came out German, is what happened. Oh. She was just like, you know what? No, that character, German now. And just committed to it. Oh, God. It was great. <laughs> I'm giving her all she's... Or I'm giving her all she's got, Captain, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is that the same Scotty? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it was pretty funny. It was pretty great. <laughs> We oh, love Natasha. Oh gosh, now now I just now we just need Natasha in here trying to are trying to read and various accents too. Yeah, I've thought more than once about having her crash one of our model land days and just being like, I know you're coming in the middle. You're not gonna make it's not gonna make any more sense if you weren't. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here, read this. Read this. They're just, just cold. <laughs> and she's just like, what is happening? <laughs> like, I need different friends. <laughs> no. Um, okay. but yeah, we'll let you guys go for now, and then we can, you know, come back and read something better if we want to. <laughs> uh, but I think everybody has suffered enough with Model yeah. Land for the day. <laughs> Goodbye for now, Model Land. Goodbye for another week, Model Land. Oh. You will not be missed this week. <laughs> um, but I do look forward to the day where we can say, remember how we read that whole book, and it was <sighs> terrible. <laughs> but we did it. But we did it. We did the whole book, which is something that a lot of people can't say because I think a lot of people ditched out before anything even that offensive started happening. <laughs> so page three. <sighs> yeah, right. Or, yeah, the, the page where we learn about Lizzie. Yeah, mm. yeah, that was, that was that was not good. Oh, gosh. And then the end of her letter to Lizzie, it's just like, oh, oh, oh Tyra, God. why? Oh, Tyra, Tyra, why? why? Tyra, why? <laughs> also, the, narr the weird narrator that we couldn't tell who was talking, it was almost like there was supposed to be a narrator in the book in between chapters, but it only happened in the first few chapters. They're gone. I have no idea where they went. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I, I guess the narr or Tyra's like, I don't think they're going to understand, so I'm just going to ease them in, and then I'm just going to dip out. Just like Tyra Banks during America's Next Top Model. <laughs> It's just she just dip out at the end. Well, no, it's basically the only or it was or it was revealed from a lot of the contestants that the only time she ever interacts with the contestants is like on camera. So she would just like come in, they'd be like, Oh my gosh, Tyra, and then she'd leave. Oh and everyone's God. like, Tyra's so cool. And then now they're just like or some of them are like, Oh yeah, she helped me. She gave me like a, a business card to an agency she wanted me to talk to and others are like she's so mean oh, she no. had this we had this awkward like after elimination chat and she's like how are you and i'm like how do you think i'm feeling i just bawled my eyes out oh, no. crying great well we are 288 pages in yay that's good for us we are like halfway yay oh we, you need to add that to your book thing. yes let's do that and it's such a chunky book. Like, it's, a, it's thick, but it's also a big book. Like, there's so many words to the page itself. And I'm just like, this yeah. is a brick. <laughs> it is a big boy. She's a brick. 
I was not prepared for this stream, but I'm glad I stuck through it. Thank you, Peyton. We appreciate you for sticking through it. Thank you, Peyton. I don't think so. The Belladonna doesn't have that constant darling verbal tick. <laughs> oh, I darling. think Peyton, if it's supposed oh. to be the Belladonna. Um, yeah, that's, mm. yeah, I have no idea. The narration gets dropped pretty quickly. <laughs> the the one thing Tara listened to with her editor. Um, we don't need this narration. Okay. Okay, can you cut 500 more pages? No. Okay. What up, Tookie's Letters is my favorite part of all of Model Land, Salt Mountain says. We haven't seen it yet, but it kills me. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, gosh. There's so much anticipation. Bye, I will say bye. See you all later. Bye. Bye. Burn in hell, Model Land, <laughs> says. The 11 of us on stream all need a medal. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. I'm going to upload the I Survived Model Land shirts. Do I'm going to do it. We ain't survived model and all we got was the shirt and, and trauma. trauma. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we will sign off for now. We'll see you guys. Um, but thank you guys. Thank, thank you, Gabe, you for suffering. Thank we you, AB, for <laughs> inviting me over to, or for letting me come over to suffer. <laughs> oh, and, oh, for sure. I, I feel like I'm holding you hostage. I'm like, oh, no. poor Gabe. No, you can't. no, you're not holding me hostage. This is great. Okay. <laughs> you feed me. <laughs> so. We can do food and maybe read a book that isn't terrible. Yay! Yay. Okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll see you guys. Bye. Schuss. Peyton says. Schuss? Schuss. Like, it's uh, German. Like, bye. Oh, oh. Uh, Arrivederci. That's Italian, uh, but. <laughs> Adios. Shalom. <laughs> That's hello, goodbye, and peace in, in Hebrew. Gabe, blink twice if you need help, Salt Mountain says. Uh, no, I, can you tell I'm blink? <laughs> no, nah, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm keeping my eyes open. <laughs> I'm okay. Oh gosh, I can't see without my glasses. I can't see a thing without my glasses. <laughs> Velma? Velma? I can't see a thing. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Bye. Bye.